so sick. Hey, Kaya. Look at this. Yeah. It's hot some pipe coming in live. Left this with a heart on Twitch. He arrives. Speaking true, spitting facts. No disguise. But when he's off the stream, it's no surprise. There's a love pure and deep beyond his eyes. Cause Kaya, his dog, the ultimate prize. Together they're a team, no compromise. In a world full of chaos, she's his wise guide. And high side, the thick and thin. In the battle of life, together they win. From the Twitch streams to the doggy park spin, it's a love story. We're kindly begin. Strive more. Houses, politics, they never bore. But with Kaya by his side, he's got the lore. A love so deep, it's at the core. They stroll the streets side by side A man and his dog with nothing to hide Kaya's wagon tail, a constant guy For Hassan, she's the ultimate ride Together they're making the future bright Kaya and Hassan A two are so tied in a world full of wrongs and the light From sun up to sun down, they fight the good fight Bro, I'm not going to lie, this is weird, dude. I didn't know what the fuck. Wait, <laughs> I know you guys are enjoying it, but this is a little bit weird, okay? Dive into the dynamic world of a Piker and his faithful companion, Kaya. I mean, it's like kind of cute, but the song itself is just like, I had to stop it. I, did, I, what? Yeah, like, I love my dog, but goddamn, dude, it's like, what's up, everybody? Rare intro pause happened just now. Um... It's just like AI is so, it kills me a little bit. Anyway, um, what's going on, everybody? I'm Sam Piker, and this is Lost and I broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive, and I hope all the boys and girls at MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is, what day is it? It's Saturday. Today's Saturday, 316, March 16th, 2024. And I am a little late and I apologize, but I hope everyone's having a good one regardless of all the boys, girls, and MBs. Um, this is a part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in the world of Hassan, Hasanabi Piker. And uh, let me tell you, a lot has happened. Last night I ended the broadcast and I went to a birthday party. That's right. I went to Brooks' birthday party and it was great. Also, I'm very proud of myself. Remember this uh, Japanese uh, optics brand? is called Zoff. Always Frushu. Zofu. This is personal news. Um Zofu uh is the is the quick like one stop shop you go in like a mall in Japan and in like 45 minutes they give you a new pair of shades. So um it's been fine. It's like relatively cheap but one of these things like one of the little screwdrivers in this thing keeps falling out. And it's very annoying, right? It's very annoying that it keeps falling out. So uh, I went and I bought myself a little glass fixing kit and I fixed it up myself and I feel so proud. Like, I know this is not a big deal, right? By any means, I, I know this is not a big deal at all. Like, it's so basic, it's so normal, but I feel like a champion. I feel like i'm a car mechanic i feel like i've done diy now like i'm i'm like a new person if that makes sense wow you finally screwed something other than society oh good one dude fucking really nailed me with that one um it was just great it's a great feeling and i highly recommend it but um yeah we'll do some TikTok cringe in a little bit eyeglass repair is the hardest job thank you i agree it's not stupid. It's just really satisfying to fix shit, even if it's simple. Absolutely. Random ass thought, but have we ever done a poll to see how much of Chad is autistic? Uh, yes. I think we did a newer divergence poll. Anyway, um, now make a wash with their bare hands. Maybe one day. So, yeah, I went after a 10-hour stream. I woke up at 6 yesterday. I worked out. I did a 10-hour banger. There was, you know, a, a debate, an Israel-Palestine debate that we watched. In between that, um... You know, I had a guest over, Mike Malak, 
did all of this, right? And then after all that, I went to a birthday party. And at the birthday party, I was like, I'm dying, okay? My social battery is burnt. Um, but, I, but I hung out there for a little bit, you know, did my quick, did my rounds. God forbid, please don't clip me. Social battery was spent, okay? Harder job than an oil rig worker. Everybody knows this at this point. I'm glad that we've finally fucking figured it out. It's the hardest job on the planet. Anyway, arrest me. Arrest me for the truth. Can you do stupid news like Texas banning Pornhub? Sure. Yeah, harder than a crab fisherman. Was Cinna at the party? She's also the neatest. Uh, yes. Weird question. Okay, that's fine. Um, beating off the people, obviously. What is this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you in your mansion? He's really his friends. Product placement plug. How much are you getting paid for this? Influencer reviews. Your screws loose us on. Finally, you screwed something other than society. You didn't hire someone. No more Mr. Handyman fixer plugs. What's the stats on neurodivergent? What summaries on the debate? I missed you for 10 hours. 10 hour summary. Introvert. I know nothing about you because I can't stand you, but tell me now. Intro or extra. Feeding off the people, obviously. Extrovert. Hi. Oh my god, I get a shout out. Brother, uh, brother, brother, uh, brother, brother, seek help, find Allah. Inshallah, brother, you will find help in the light of Islam. My ex boyfriend loved you. Brother, you're being weird, brother. Anyway, watch a new Drew Binsky video where he takes a North Korean to South Korea. Hi. What the fuck? Bro. This man is out of control. Someone needs to put a stop to this man. He's just doing too much. He's doing too much. He took a North Korean dude to South Korea. What in the hell? What in tarnation? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Brother! So many over the night, too. It was weird getting random chatters talking at like talking like that at 4 a.m. Brother, explain yourself. Today on men reacting to my nails. Yeah, what? This comment on TikTok says they should de-radicalize their cousin with your content oh i love this tiktok i saw it earlier thank you show him some hassan content you know what's really funny about this this is obviously a fucking joke why would anybody say this seriously congrats on beating the world record twitch streamer hassan piker spent 12 hours reacting to a single lex fridman video it is by far the longest reaction to a single video in twitch history the previous record was held by him since last year and one of the four guests was a band streamer, yet Twitch won't care about enforcing that role because they like us on. That's so funny. They're like, bro, why won't you fucking... Why, oh, you're too scared of Destiny. You're too scared of Destiny. Oh, no, you're reacting to Destiny, but it's making Destiny mad. So I decided, actually, you should be banned for reacting to Destiny. <laughs> Dweeb GG. Anyway, big boys consistently on top. This is a funny meme, but it's also probably true. Let's be real. Was it longer than the TikTok psycho ex-husband saga? I think so. Um, anyway, anyway, Mr. Portobello. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We're moving. We're putting that in the, in the, we're forgetting about that. And we're moving on. Yes. Maya texted me a photo of her nails and I replied with her hands look like this. So your hands can look like that because I wanted her to remember the important people in her life. Winnie the Moo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick. Vito, excited for b-ball stream, by the way. Destroy your up. If someone asks where your green is for St. Patty's Day, you can just flip them off. Those are Maya's nails stealing. Every time I get a Maya nail text, I gotta lock the fuck in. Okay. God, Nick is so hot. It's crazy. By God, that's Jason Pollum. Uh sorry if you saw it before, but in honor of Fun Day, we can start a new React arc. This sure was called Is Mirror the Dog. Potentially. Um, we also have don't worry. Don't worry. We're locked in today. We're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to do a little bit of news too, because I haven't been able to cover the news for the past two days, basically. Um, what's the joke here? The Who's the guy in the photo? I forget. Uh, many people don't know this. This is this is Nick Pollum, Jason Pollum, Nick Jason Pollum, uh, probably one of the hottest dudes on the platform. I don't know if you know that. 15% uh, body fat, literally the tightest... Uh, taper tightest fucking fade you've ever seen hairline immaculate okay just a giga chad with a giga chad jawline one irl girlfriend one in-game girlfriend she's kind of a legend lover of the country of norway and also consumer of water burgers but not anymore 
Lolo's twin talked about it. Having started doing reaction and commentary style streams myself, I can genuinely say I don't know how he physically or mentally does this. I feel burnt out just doing a couple four-hour streams of breaks. This dude does this every day. He's the Lance Armstrong of this shit. Yeah, he takes PD zins. <laughs> He's zinning every hour. You know what's really funny? This dude used to fucking hate me so much. When everybody was hating on me, when everyone was hating on me, he was riding that fucking hate wave. Uh, and and shitting on me to get TikTok uh, or not TikTok but like fucking Twitter clout. And now that he actually has started doing live streams himself, he realized like, oh my god, this shit fucking sucks. Actually, <laughs> and Machino used to shit on streamers so much when he was on TikTok. Then he became a streamer. Exactly, exactly. I think a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people just don't recognize that on the entertainment side. On the entertainment side. There is like obviously differences in your output. He hated on every streamer when he was popping on TikTok. Yeah. Hey, look, I'll take it. You know, at, at least he recognizes it now. Like it's not fucking easy. Machino used to shit on you. That's surprising. Yeah. I mean, it's not that surprising. Uh, RDC One Piece skit. I already watched this. It's so good. Dude, notice how all the TikToks that you guys are sending me, I've already seen because I'm on TikTok now. I'm a TikToker. You might see me in the comments underneath a TikTok. You know what I mean? I've like full blown, um, you know, bite dance might be divesting. I'm full blown investing. Okay. A lot of the, I'm in my TikTok era. I'm in my TikTok era. I, I thought about making a TikTok. I actually made a TikTok stitch with a song that I've been listening to a lot that hasn't come out yet. And, and then, I don't know, the audio was broken on it. So I didn't actually upload it. But yeah, I, I mean, what's TikTok going to do, man? radicalize me more to be in favor of china like hello this argus taught me that jinx is a good lad and i'm glad he's blown up the way he has he's like what you always hoped aiden would be lol yeah um i think he is like i don't think he's like you know politically inclined by any means and if he is probably fucking center right in some regards and and maybe center left in others it's like dude let me tell you something yesterday i had michael on right and I think Mike is a great dude to have on to like reframe uh, or, or to like redevelop an understanding for many people who don't actually interact with normal people in the real world, whose perception of how others should be is unfortunately a little bit too massaged by the Discord servers that they frequent. Like Mike is a perfect example of a normie who like won't call himself a leftist, doesn't understand it at all, and, and is... but is like almost entirely on board with everything as long as you describe it to him because he leads with empathy given obviously the unimaginable uh life experiences that he has had uh it's a little bit different than the average person then every not every normie is going to be like a fucking heroin addict you know what i mean and go to jail and shit and then recover and then write a fucking new york times bestseller about his experience but um overall I think like he is the uh he's the he's a great example of just like a normal guy in the way that he views politics. He's not normal by any other means. He's not normal at all. Like obviously his life experiences are not normal at all. His current financial circumstances are not normal at all. We're talking about a person who's like very famous, massive influence, has a fucking podcast with Logan Paul, but politically speaking, he's no different than the average Joe. He is the fucking median voter or actually the plurality the non-voter right and that's the reason why i love having dudes like that on because you need to recognize that dudes like that are 100 percent very easy to to to bring on board to become advocates because they already have those opinions they just need someone to tell them like they just need someone to like lead them in the right direction and and communicate with them what their worldview actually like what their worldview sounds like they don't have to call themselves socialist or anything like that and i think that's really important and i have that same exact perspective on someone like jinxy i think like he's a very smart guy very smart kid right so when people when people like bring up jinxy in here <laughs> yeah of course you explaining this made me realize that i need to go outside more not everyone's as uh, as obsessed with politics as we are in here of course man of course the average person, especially like content creators too, literally when they see politics, they get freaked out. They don't even want to touch it. Like they, 
they worry about the toxicity of the audiences they worry about somehow saying something wrong and offending people i'll tell you this much there's a reason why many content creators usually just say that they're a centrist or don't touch politics at all and many many like famous people in general don't touch politics at all why because immediately you're dividing the audience into 50 percent you're dividing the audience in half by taking a position on an issue you have now divided your audience your potential audience into half okay leftists say you say basic level stuff every leftist knows but seeing well-meaning guys like mike makes me realize why a streamer like you is so important exactly that's where i'm the best at that's what i've been able to do for many people is like introduce them to these ideas without even like recognizing that these are, there's like a theoretical underpinning there because i do think that it's it's the truth right i think that this is the truth and i want people to to basically uh, i want people to basically see the truth anyway the other song that's been stuck in my head is chicago dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, that's how you know i've been on tiktok for too long uh, that's how you know i've been doing too much tiktok apparently it's like made by one of the dudes from stranger things and it was like popularized because of uh stranger things like playing it or something in one of the scenes dude i've never watched stranger things I, I, since season one and i don't think i'll ever find myself watching stranger things you know but but that chicago song bangs yeah joe aka ko kiri here this is the song this is this shit is oh fuck I is knocking shit over. This is the song. Oh, I gotta check in. This is the song I've been listening to nonstop. It's this song and another song. This is your sign that you need to come to Chicago. Um, maybe. About the cry, this song means so much to me. Wait, really? <sighs> the truth and definitely has influence on some people. Last week I voted for a leftist party in the first time because of you and streams and I appreciate it. Your America bad takes are seeping to the average joke. I'll be honest with everybody's talking. Bro, this is such a good fucking, this is such a banger. I love this. Guy, girly, good girly. I watched this already on stream. I love this fucking one. Talking about this TikTok band stuff, I, I think I'd rather the Chinese know my address and and everything about me rather than the U.S. government. What does the government even do? I love this. I'm be honest. because like this take is one like bar for bar verbatim a take that you would hear from someone like myself, a take that you would hear from Chapo. You know what I mean? A take that like every annoying Reddit nerd would basically consider like oh you're a tanky you're a tanky you're a fucking tanky you're a fucking tanky you're bloodthirsty you're a monster you're tanky you don't if you don't fucking uh if you don't agree with american imperialism every step of the way you're a fucking tanky everyone who's a foreign adversary to the united states of america must be genocided permanent genocide to the third world and developing nations right every dude that says that every dude that says that would fucking lose their minds about someone like myself but like there's like average americans who are like what does the government even do <laughs> Which is true. It's like, what are we doing? It's a treat, okay? It's a fucking treat. Don't take the treats away. We are, we, we treat, we're treat boys and treat girls and treat MBs. If you take our fucking treat away, I don't give a fuck. Dude, also, this shit is so funny. Dude, everyone is having a fuck fest right now on Twitter. I said, shocking that this dude got owned by one of the most well read academics on the issue of Palestine so hard his own debate partner started laughing at him, okay? And and this banger created even additional bangers from the likes of Matt Lieb. If Destiny got owned, then how come he's been posting Actually I Won for 48 hours straight? <sighs> it's so good. It's so fucking good. It's just so funny. Hasanabi x Jinxy win. Oh yeah. Um I don't know. Uh I I 
would be down to go on his podcast or have him on the podcast if he's ever in LA, but I don't think he's ever in LA. Dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun. I must admit, I was apprehensive of someone who's associated with Logan Paul and reading stuff like that in chat. Um, but I gave a chance after you said, and boy, I was so glad it was charitable to actually listen. That was a sick conversation. Dude, Mike and Jeff. Well, Jeff, I knew from before, before his like David Dobrik days. So it's a little bit different. I knew Jeff's, uh, uh, I think Jeff's like one of his ex-girlfriends was a fan of mine. She was like an Instagram influencer or something. So like Jeff and I had met each other uh, in, in like LA nightlife many, many years prior. However, Mike, I thought the exact same thing that you guys did. Okay, I thought he was a douchebag. He, I was like, he must be. He's fucking besties with Logan Paul. He has a fucking podcast with Logan Paul. He, um, he looks like he'd be a dick, right? Because he kind of he's wearing like four hundred dollar rude t shirts and stuff like that. It's like a very typical dude. I would see him at parties that I would go to. Like sometimes I go to like an influencer house party, and I would see him and I'd look at him from afar. And I'd be like, this fucking asshole. Just another one of these fucking influencer assholes, dude. You know, I can't, which is funny. It's like a very says you type situation, right? Because I'm sure people perceive me in a similar way too, and probably even worse. But that was the, that was the attitude that I had towards him. But because I knew Jeff and I thought Jeff was an awesome dude, okay? Their friendship, Jeff Woodex's friendship with Mike, convinced me to look at Mike in a different way. I was like, if Jeff likes him, there's no way this is a fucking asshole. If Jeff likes him, there's no way he's a bad guy because Jeff is a good dude. So then, so then I, I, uh, judging rude to wearing rude pipeline. Yeah. Uh, I don't wait. I have one fucking, I have one t-shirt and one shorts. That's rude. And you can't even fucking tell the fuck well the shorts you can tell but i never wear them like but you're right actually it, it's it's the douchey it's a douchebag thing to wear 100 percent. it's very douchey anyway my point is this my point is this i gave him a shot after listening to him uh after listening to him speak because of the jeff thing and i had him on the stream and i had him on the the podcast and i was like he's a wonderful dude right he's actually like a good dude he's actually a good guy and i think that's lost upon many people like not to go back to the same fucking bullshit about video games, specifically Yakuza, but there's a reason why, uh, Kazuma Kiryu and Ichiban are so like, they're so popular for those of you who play those games. If you didn't play those games, there's other archetypes as well. It's because they're just very charitable and very open-minded. You know what I mean? That's it. And you got to fucking maintain that being polite and maintain that being nice shit. And here's a great example of what I mean. So immediately, this is a clip of Jinxie putting me in A tier as a streamer, right? He says, like, I'm one of the top streamers. He puts me in A tier. And the first inclination you have is, look who's in first at his S tier. And it's like, yeah, I saw that too. But who cares? Fuck it. Like, who cares? We got, as leftists, I think we do look at, like, what's really fucked up immediately. We can't look at something and be like, you know what? This is great. This is fun. Wow, this is cool. Because, like, my expectation is that I wouldn't even be in fucking A tier. My expectation is that Jinxie is very young. And in that, like, audience, especially judging by who he considers to be, like, S tier streamers, a lot of the S tier streamers that he has up there don't fucking like me openly, intensely dislikes me. So, um... You know, instead of being like, wow, that's so cool. I never thought that that would be the case. You guys immediately go to, who did he put at S tier? Well, let's get mad at it anyway. Is that Hassan? Bro, Hassan gets a lot of hate, bro. But he is, I'm going to be honest, he is pretty fucking funny. Um, I'm going to say, dude, I'm going to say A tier. I'm going to be honest, chat. Hassan gets a lot of hate, but he, I've actually laughed at him. Like, I, I've laughed at some of the shit he said. Um, Don't know who that is. Is that Hassan? There you go. That's like a that's like a lethal take, brother. Normally, that's like a lethal take, uh, especially in that demographic. How much did you pay him? One million dollars. Have you reached out to him yet? He seems cool. I don't know the first thing about reaching out to him. I don't even know how I would reach out to him at all. I have no understanding of how to do that.
Yeah, I did see this clip. We watched it yesterday. This is Jinxie defending me for like two minutes straight about exactly what I said. Um, which, you know, this is, of course, like two weeks after the quote unquote controversy. So I'm, I suspect that like people, uh, you know, oh, we haven't blasted off yet. Hold on. Here, I'm going to fucking make a shameless. Could ask Big Mike for his info. Didn't he go on the pod? He is in many ways the anti Aiden Ross, even though he likes Aiden Ross. I'm not going to lie. I saw that Aiden Ross saw one of his fans and himself on Discord over gambling, and I feel sorry for him a little bit. Will said he's divorcing on you. On the 24th, I'll be in Australia. The 24th now? Australia. Is that your first one? Uh, I love that he's, like, texting the group chat while he's re reacting to this. But it is pretty funny that he's doing that because, like, <laughs> I have very publicly and also in private told him all of this. So before he turns around and acts like I did not uh, invite Will numerous times, like, there's public record of me doing this. No, no, no. I've, I've been to Japan. I've done no, first that. one to Australia, sorry. Wait, he's not going to Japan anymore? Amazing. He's just going to Australia. I like the people going, this is how you found out. It's like, no, I cut the Jap the, the I cut the Japanese part of the trip because I think like 14 days is too long. And I cut the Japanese part of the trip specifically because um, Will wasn't coming anyway. That's what it is. Okay, hold on. Kai versus the Drama Drinks defends me on full send. And Saturday, fun day, festivities. In it. Like, I, I don't want to... Will was never planning to go. He needs five months notice. I mean, I did. I, I have been talking about potentially going. Um, he's on a survivor arc. Best find an idol so you don't get voted off the island. What? I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I don't watch Survivor, so I have no idea. Um, you can't disappear for 14 days when you have a child that's on. Agreed. Potentially going and going are two different things, man. No, I've like talked about going and they just didn't believe me for some reason. And I kept saying, no, here's when I'm going over and over again. But like, um, oh, this is sick. That's a good meme. I'm going to use it as a blast off meme. Are you doing fear and with those hot Aussies? Yeah, I'm going to stay with the Aussies most likely, even though they don't have a fucking room for me, according to Mr. Oh, I did a thing. So boy, boy was like, oh, dude, I'll like, I'll bunk it up with Alex. Alexa was like, I'll bunk it up with Alex so that you can stay in my room, which I'm probably not going to do. But, you know. Oh my God, bro. Jesus Christ, please keep the mental illness low, man. Oh my God. Well, I think I'm like a lot of people who at the Jinxie age would probably not like their care for Hassan, but I grew up and have life experience. I started caring a lot about more of the shit that we discussed on the stream and now I'm a 27 month sub. Yeah. Yeah, I gave up. I gave up Japan. I gave up the Japan. I'm just going to call Japan Japan going forward. Like I'm in fucking Shogun, the TV show. The Japans. Yeah. The Japans. <laughs> I don't know why it sounds, bro. I don't know why it sounds so like weirdly racist. Mike is asking if there's a way where he can find the fucking full VOD. I think you and the Aussie boys should just share a bed for the trip. Is that show worth watching? I love it. I think it's great. Because you sound old like saying the Facebook. It is old. Anyway. What the fuck? He's texting. I get I know. I know he's sending me a text message right now in that clip. Cause I <laughs> I saw the text message. He's like, what the fuck? He seems hurt. That's crazy. First of all, stop being parasocial. Stop being parasocial, number one. Number two, instead of fucking getting your parasocial flows up, get your goddamn subscriptions up at the top of the hour because there's a three-minute ad break coming your way right now. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Here's a three-minute ad break right now. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we've blasted off, and I'm not seeing enough momentum and not enough movement from that blast off. Okay? So I'm going to post it now because I forgot. I forgot that the Kai versus Yeah Drama Jinx defense me on full set pot Saturday, Saturday Funday festivities. Get in now. Festivities. Get in now. Go ahead. You will never stop me from being a parasocialist Marxist. Okay. 47 minutes into the stream and you do a top of the hour. You've changed, big bro. I know. His plan was to go to Australia and Japan and then get you to go to the woods in Thailand and train Muay Thai for two weeks, then fight. Oh. Maybe you show. Here's the full combo. Mike Maylack finally visits. Anyway. Apologize to the 11. 
Only 13k viewers. You fell off, little bro. Shaking my head. There you go. Hibachi. Uh, suck my dick. Take a week off. Um, church. Church. Why like finally visit? Suck my dick from the back, Mister. What? I like Mike. He was respectful. Yeah, of course. He's also very like. Um, not only is he respectful, but he's he's empathetic. He leads by empathy. Okay. He leads by empathy. He also uh, is open-minded. Like, he doesn't shut off information that, like, contradicts uh, what he previously thought. Like, these are important aspects of, of, of learning. He's open to learning. He's charitable. He looks for nuance. Okay? And that is, that's key. That's huge, right? He passes the vibe check. I think Jinxie also is uh, on that on that wavelength as well here twitter 12 emails like it's way different when you're letting down that many people like what like, they so, say so you're saying hassan was right is that what you're saying wait what do you mean when hassan was like this is harder than you know oh when the nine to five shit yeah yeah, yeah. no I don't, I don't i don't agree with that i think but what he was what, saying what did he say he, he well i feel like sometimes hassan does stuff just to like get people to almost be mad at him in a way but he was saying how like being a streamer is like soul sucking more than a nine to five but Obviously, he said it, and you see it out of context when I see the clips, but I want your take on that. Dude, honestly. I like that, like, I mean, at least, like, Bradley and everyone else is, like, establishing that it's, like, completely fucking out of context. And he thinks that I'm, like, saying it in that way specifically to, saying it in that way specifically to get, like, uh, uh, to, to get people mad at me. I lost you. My Hassan 101 is over. You made your first unbiased debut impression to me. I'll give you another chance. This guy's still having a combo with me. That's awesome. Hassan, in the in terms of like soul sucking, if you work a nine hour shift and you do a nine hour stream, you're gonna be more drained mentally from the stream because like it depends on what type of streamer you are. If you're like turning your camera off, not talking, playing a game. He's calling it rage bait. I do I do, do rage bait. I do. I am very expressive and I do say stuff usually to piss people off to get people uh to get people to pay attention that wasn't one of those moments i do that the america deserve 9-11 moment was one of those moments because like the energy is in the right direction it basically arrives at like what i'm talking about with respect to our chickens coming home to roost right it blew the fuck up but that's still in line with what i believe right whereas or another rage bait is white people don't exist. That's another good rage bait because that is in line with the, the, the more complicated, more nuanced explanation that I'm trying to deliver. Okay. Whereas like streaming is soul sucking and much harder than a real job. That's not rage bait. I wasn't trying to say that to like, uh, to, to imply that I genuinely think that I'm like less fortunate than a fucking nine to five or of course not. And that's, precisely the reason why i get frustrated when something gets clipped out of context to imply that i actually uh you know am, am saying something that i don't believe that's what really frustrates me bradley wishes he lived in people's heads as rent free as you do quite a few of these podcaster dudes wish that fans would obsess over them the way that they do no I, that that is not wrong by the way i do talk to a lot of influencers including like bradley as well they do constantly bring up the fact that i'm trending on twitter as a positive thing and I cannot, for the life of me, explain to them it is not a fucking positive thing at all. It is so not a positive thing that I basically fucking left uh, Twitter. Turkey deserve earthquake, bitch. Damn, dude. That's <laughs> like like tens of thousands of people just dead. That's kind of fucked up, dude. Like, I mean, <laughs> really. I think Saturday really does bring out some of the biggest freaks. I don't know what it is. I think like my normal nine to fivers that watch during the week because they care about like the political commentary and they care about like, you know, learning about what's going on in the news. Like those guys are, <laughs> those guys are just like in the chat normally. Whereas like right now, the Saturday morning, uh, the Saturday morning children are just like coming in to just say the most unhinged shit kids out of school. Maybe. Yeah. Incoming earthquake, nine 11 comparison to the dumbest motherfuckers. Yeah, bro. An earthquake do, did, does not happen due to the fact that, like, you know, Turkey was, like, fracking or something. Like, what do you mean? One is, like, a direct act of terror that killed 3,000 people. 
that was a direct consequence of like our involvement in the Middle East done by guys that we armed and trained. The other is a natural disaster. And I also never believed that it 9-11 was a good thing or that, uh, you know, civilians deserve to die or anything like that. I mean, you also know it's because you reacted to that debate the last two days and further broiled D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like saying the U.S. deserve Hurricane Katrina and only evangelical Christians say that shit. Exactly. Reminds me of this clip. Hi. Brazilian number one. Brazilian number one. Oh, are you guys from Brazil? Yes. yes, yes. Oh, you guys suck at soccer. Brazil, Germany is better. Germany? Germany is way better than you guys at FIFA. FIFA? Um, 11 September. What? Wait, what? 11 September. <laughs> Brazilian number one. Hi. That's awesome. He hit him with the... He hit him with the fucking, hey, remember 9-11, 11 September. Can we cuz out Texas for banning Pornhub and my stocks and VPN going through the roof? Uh, good PR week is going strong. Your tweet roasting the transvestigators is on the top of clever comebacks. Classic self-report. Yeah, this is the funniest way to tell everyone you've never had sex with a woman. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Every episode of Fear and. What? So I met this guy. Let me guess. He's a twink. No, no, no, no. I mean, yes, but but this one's different. I promise. This one. Wait, is Austin doing TikTok sketches? Excuse me, what is going on, bro? I feel like no, no, no. You're not allowed to do that. No, no. Okay, okay, okay. I'm I'm shocked. I'm confused. This is like this is like seeing. This is like seeing a, a much older, much more reserved co-worker come out of a gay bar, okay? When you know that they're, like, married to a woman. That's what it feels like to me right now. I, I, I'm, like, I'm a little disturbed in some ways. Not to, like, I'm, I'm a little disturbed because it's, like, why, like, I, what? I don't know how to describe my feelings right now. I'm, this is, it's very, it's, this is shocking information because, like, I'm also part jealous that he's like, like when he does stuff on Twitch with other people, obviously I get jealous as you guys know, because he is mine, right? Like when I see him in the, in the tub with Miski, if I'm like, fuck you. Okay. But also, but also like what, how could you, how could you do this to me? Like, how could you do this to us? Like you, Austin feels like a different person in this TikTok. Yeah. Look at him. In a weird way, I'm also kind of proud because, like, this is the gayest he's ever been, right? There's another one? There's another TikTok from three days ago? How? What is going on? What? So this is like seeing your teacher outside of school? Yes, dude. It's, this is weird. I'm flabbergasted. Um, I'm, I'm disturbed a little bit. I'm, I'm confused. I'm a little jealous. But also, I'm a little proud. Does that make sense? Like this is, all of these feelings are coming in my direction at the same time. I, I don't know. I'm like a little proud of him, but also simultaneously a little jealous. So I met this guy. Let me guess. He's a twink. No, no, no, no. I mean, yes, but, but this one's different. I promise this one's different. This one's different. Like he's acting? Thought what you're doing in Call Austin show a slur. Well, I do that already off camera. That New York trip changed him. I'm proud of him, but I'm also like, like I said, I'm also a little jealous. What, okay, there's another one. Me pretending to not see my good friend taking off his shirt next to me so he doesn't think I want to be with him. Like he's, he's thirst trapping. He's thirst trapping on gay talk. Austin has said Will is the better actor and he's right. Yeah, I mean, obviously Will is a fucking born theater kid. You're hurt by being replaced, but this is the one way you find acceptable for it to actually happen. Yeah, this is like... This is like um this is like finding out that the the person that you love has moved on but you're like still kind of happy for them because they're spreading their wings and they're finally finding happiness that you could never give them. Okay? What? What? Nothing. Have you guys talked about how this open relationship might not be for you? Austin's getting his money up, not his funny up. New bear talk. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun, dun, 
You wouldn't do a gay talk thirst trap with Austin? No. Austin is getting into gay talk and soon to be no talk. Yeah, now I'm happy that TikTok is getting banned so we can, he has to come back to me selfishly. Selfishly, I'm excited for TikTok to be banned now because now he will, his only, he will have to be reliant on the fear and podcast. Seen this banger? Yes. Dude, let me tell you, despite the fact that I'm not on, t uh, I'm not on Twitter on my phone, I have seen that banger. I have seen all of the bangers, okay? <laughs> what the fuck? Barbara, what you want? Him, you ever read Wikipedia? Barbara, say no more. Listen, I see a fucking meme like this. I like it, okay? I give it a like. <sighs> did you see this? Yeah, Kanye, uh, Kanye did a couple things on Instagram. I feel like every week, here, I'll set up the Kanye versus Kai uh, story in a second, okay? Mr. Ball Spotelli. Okay, stop sending me these fucking, stop sending me these, these memes, okay, for now. Okay, listen, listen, listen, listen. Every week, if you are following, like, T accounts in the way that I do, you see another story that is, at this point, no longer even a story, but instead just a constant of Drake DMing another baddie on Instagram. Every week. This happens, and everyone is always shocked. Drake slid into the DMs of another baddie, okay? I don't know why this is news at this point, because, like, yeah, of course he's doing that. Have you seen the meat he's swinging around, okay? He's trying to slither that snake and, and fumbling baddies left and right, okay? And he's saying stuff like, your body is tea, and it's lame as hell, and it's like shocking, but in some ways it's also not shocking at all because it's Drake. Now, he, you know, he posted meat. So, of course, he does stuff like that. There's also another side to the story on the Kanye side. Every fucking week, at least this past week, Kanye West has been in a little bit of trouble on Instagram DMs as well. Okay? The story that I'm going to be talking about is Kanye sliding into Kai Sinan's DMs with unnecessarily aggressive statements okay with unnecessarily unnecessarily with an unnecessarily angry energy okay i feel like it's creepy to be fucking people that aren't famous this frequently like you can't clap with people in your level of fame or whatever something's off because he's already hot wait what are you talking about that's insane that that's your takeaway a baddie is a baddie regardless dude what the fuck do you mean when you're famous like uh, a, a baddie not being as famous as you, especially when you're as famous as Drake, doesn't change that reality. You know what I mean? Like, what? Um, I see what you're trying to say, but, like, it's crazy. Uh, I don't agree with it. Okay. Kanye West was unnecessarily aggro towards Kai Sinat. But also, Kanye West was, <laughs> before that came out, he also thought that he was actually DMing uh, uh, Lil Baby, right? Or no, who was he, who was he fucking DMing? Uh, Baby Keem. When it turns out he was actually leaking the new album to a Baby Keem fan account. So I thought that was pretty funny that he's just like, you know, twinkling his toes in bed up late at night, just fucking being a boomer and like DMing fan accounts thinking that he's talking to Baby Keem. Okay. And then he was like, what the fuck? I thought you were Keem. Does anyone have the link to that one? The, that story? Because I think that's pretty funny. DMing a meme page with an account name like Baby Keem Memes is pretty funny to think about. Kanye DM'd a Baby Keem fan page thinking it was Baby Keem. Bro, I thought you were Keem. I wasn't sure if you knew that or not. Once I started realizing you thought that I got in contact with Keem to get him in contact with you. Yo, thank you for everything we've done so far. It's all love. How have you been? Amazing. Free. How are you? Any chance this could have been fake viral marketing? No. I think a lot of people's brains have been broken into thinking that like every time a celebrity does something, it must it must be like they're moving in a they're moving quietly or loudly in a direction with an underlying with an underlying like very smart reason. When in fact you have to remember like no, these guys are just as dumb as all of us. Okay, sometimes even dumber. So no, I, I think it's just that he legitimately is a boomer. I think he's legitimately a fucking boomer, and so he thought. That he was DMing Baby Keem. <sighs> okay. But the Kai Sinat situation is pretty funny. So, here, let's get started. 
So Ye sends like a, a package, I think, to Kai. And this was Kai's reaction to it. Yay! Yeah! Nigga! Yay! Yeah! Fitting me, bro! How this shit fitting? Oh, yeah, you put some extra small. A small day, yo, nothing to do with this shit! It's crazy how quick he is with the production. Like, he just he just has that on tap. Like, he, this is this is like inside baseball, I guess. But as like looking at it from a streamer perspective, like as a streamer, he just has like, he immediately is like thinking two steps ahead. Like, how will I make this a clippable moment? Very good. Yeah. It's his stream deck. Yeah, I know. Um, hey. So he did that. And apparently this was very frustrating for Kanye, who literally fucking DM'd Kai Sinat and said, don't make no jokes about uh, don't make no jokes about my clothes when you ain't saying nothing about what Adidas is doing. When Vulture's song came out, you ain't play my verse. You controlled. Don't play with me. Immediately, oh fucking, immediately fucking hits him up and says he's like and, and accuses him of being controlled by the Illuminati <laughs> like immediately, which is awesome. OK, so here was Kai's reaction to that. I mean, this is great, dude. He's just beefing with like a 20 year old as a 50 year old man. Oh my God, don't make no jokes about where you ain't, what Adidas is all came out. You ain't play my, f you controlled with me. What the fuck do? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I hear you, bro. But ain't no jokes was being said when I first opened up that package. I showed love instantly. All I did was try on the sweats and it didn't fit. No jokes made. I immediately asked for a new pair. So you ain't do nothing wrong. So I felt this way for no reason. Yes. He says, fuck you. You was told to diss my shit. You a pawn. Bro, what is happening? You tried gaslighting him and it didn't work. Yeah, that is crazy. Dude, Twitch streaming is on the come up in very significant ways when you think about it. Because like you have one of the you have one of the most famous people on the fucking planet like beefing with a a 50 year old one of the most famous 50 year olds on the fucking planet beefing with a 20 year old twitch streamer that is insane and then he's posting it on his instagram stories what the fuck most famous 20 year old versus most famous 50 year old i <laughs> what the f yeah kanye posted it dude let me tell you something, okay? You know he's not doing all right when he had to, like, one, lower the fucking price point of his clothes down to, like, $20 or something. Two, lower the price point of his clothes down to $20. Two, is constantly doing ads on TikTok, constantly doing ads on Instagram, like, nonstop trying to sell what remains of the inventory, okay? Trying to, trying to fucking sell as much of it as he can on his goddamn uh in his inventory in his stocks and i guess they're not selling that much okay not doing all right has the number one album and song right now i don't think he has the number one album and song right now i'm gonna be honest with you i think he has carnival is the number one uh song but i don't think the i don't think the album itself did that well carnival is doing great i mean it's a great song i will admit that <sighs> but like have you guys listened to the rest of the album I think a lot of people no carnival's a good song carnival's a good song it, it's a good song come on uh I, I i'm i'm being super unbiased i think but if you listen to any of the other songs on that fucking album it is like i'm not even kidding when i say this obviously i don't listen to a lot of music but like it is genuinely unlistenable like you know when you know when there's like some good songs the album and then the other ones are like kind of misses but it's not like, please turn that off territory. There are like legitimately songs in the album that are, and I tried to listen to it. There are legitimately songs in the fucking album that are like, please turn it off territory. It's like CTE turned into music. Yeah, Carnival is decent. And Ye's verse is like the worst aspect of the song, by the way. That is another, that is another part of this. Um, but anyway, streamer Kai Sinat. Uh, shares DMs with Kanye West, who calls Kai for making fun of the sweatpants. Ye sent him, not speaking out about Adidas and more. Kai tells Ye that he wasn't making fun of the sweatpants. They just didn't fit. Why he say fuck me for? Keep it family friendly. No cursing. The pants don't fit, Ye. And you think someone told me something? I'll prove you wrong. Fuck Adidas. Wait a minute. He said keep it friendly, family friendly. And then he cursed at Adidas. Um, 
Another 50 Cent reference? Yeah, he keeps making 50 Cent references. Maybe that's what's making him mad. <laughs> he said, fuck it, let's stream. Oh my god. Oh Kai could have just said, bro is a Nazi, who gives a fuck? You think Kai Sinat is gonna say, bro is a Nazi, who gives a fuck about Kanye West? Are you out of your mind? Like, how do you think Kanye West has so many fucking features on his album? Like, people don't give a shit. I mean, I do. Ye's, later, Ye's manager called Kai. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. How you doing, sir? Yeah, I, I can speak. I can talk. By the way, as far as I understand, as far as I understand, Milo uh, Yiannopoulos is still, Milo Yiannopoulos is still working with Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm, I'm, I'm basically just, clap this one up. Stronger together. And so what? I think we respect one and take the time to communicate from a mature perspective. We can find that we bet that's when things can go left. And I want to keep things centered. And I appreciate you for taking the time and considering these words. All right, um, I understand that, right? But I like that. I like that he's John Mon Monopoly, Mr. Monopoly to you, is like trying to little bro him instead of like managing the situation a little bit better. What the fuck's going on? I feel like this is only going to negatively polarize Kai against Kanye West harder. But my, my, you said what? My understand what? that. My understand that. But you have to understand why the man I come so crazy to me from the first place. They say the pants don't fit. The pants don't fit. You said what? Hold on, my pants all just came out. Dude, this dude, first of all, he went, bro, why is he speaking pot? Well, he went to fucking Nigeria, dog. He didn't go to Jamaica. I'm confused. <laughs> no, I know he's, he's joking. I know he's joking. Shut the fuck up, chat. You guys don't have to. You guys don't have to immediately be serious about this. I'm joking. I, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys are so fucking annoying. I know what he's doing. Okay. I'm just saying like my, um, you feel me? I could, I could, whatever he want to do, we could, you feel me? And I just feel like, um, what we was going back and forth on was a little, was a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, um, how can I, how, how can we go about moving forward with this? Um, I think we just need to develop a relationship. You know what I'm saying? I know this is my first time meeting you. This is my first time speaking to you. What city are you from, sir? I'm from the Bronx. Oh, okay. I used to live in the Bronx on 241st well, well, and Carpenter. 241st? That's down the block from my block. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you, nice should, so you should so you should know we don't go for like, no shit. At first, he was like trying to little bro him a little bit, but now he's being nicer. You said what? So you should know that we shouldn't go for no bullshit, no disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah. I lived in New York for seven years. I get it. Okay, and I lived, I lived there all my life. I thought post Africa, I thought Kai Sanat would be on some pan African nationalism uh, shit, but it tur turns out he did not go in that direction. I thought he was going to come back like preaching the gospel of Sankara. Okay. I'm a You're a what? What that mean? Violators. What? Nah, gay. You've never heard of violator, Mitch? Mm, nah, I was, I was born in 2001. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, nah, but yeah, you so, you you seem very polite. I respect you first of all for even calling my phone. Um, yeah. um, and we it takes a lot. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm just whatever energy that's coming out to me, I'll, I'll I'll happily just you know display it back. I just don't. I just want us to be. You know, it's, it is better for us to be together. You know, than apart. Yeah, so, so um, yeah. Um, just let just let Ye know I said that. Um, yeah, just let him know what I said and. However you want to move forward, we can move forward with it, you know? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. We, where, where he at, though? We in L.A. But I be in New York. Kai's heritage from Trinidad. His mother also speaks like that on stream. It's not an act. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude, dude, dude. I'm I'm joking, okay? I was kidding. Like, calm down. Like, you're still fucking correcting me. We cannot. We can't fucking be normal on the stream ever, bro. I swear to God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god. All the time. I could actually be in New York tomorrow if we need to link up. You trying to backdoor me? What does that mean? This like, dude is trying to keep it very serious and not realizing that like Kai is, is like joking with him, like fucking around with him. You trying to like, why you want to link up so fast? Like, I thought we just building a clip. I don't want to move slow. Okay. I move mad slow, so we're going to have to get to know each other first. You heart? Yeah. Oh, nah, I. Right. Nah, nah.
Every time a black person is on stream, uh, stream, this, I, I, all, this all just aside, goes though. wild. Yeah, it's true. Oh, um, this is uh, Kai talking to Kanye West, like someone saying that he's Kanye West's uh, manager by the name of by the name of John Monopoly. Appreciate you. This is my number. You could lock me in. Um, but I don't think it's. You lock me in. My first name is. Just, John. just let, just let. Okay, just let, just let. Um, yeah, just let Gay know. I feel like it was a misunderstanding. Me personally. Yeah. Um, and we just, you know, we just move forward from there. Just let me, just update me, you heard? All right, you back, sir. All right, bro. John Monopoly is his real manager as of like four days ago, apparently. Yes. No, no, no. He actually is like, it is weird that like, I think it's odd because like, look, I've talked about this before. Um, at least on the, on the record label side, a lot of labels do care about, uh, getting in front of a much younger audience. And like obviously part of that is on TikTok, and another part of that is by directly sending artists on the Kai's stream because they think that those collaborations are mutually beneficial. I don't think John Monopoly kind of understands that, which is why he's probably fucking <laughs> like trying to little bro this dude by being like, Who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? This, this is manager. Yep. And and honestly, it goes even further because apparently, apparently. Kanye West literally talked about Aiden Ross too. Here it is. Was that <laughs> where the, the social media, I don't know if it was, it a tweet that you had put up? What's that? With, what, just with the, the fuck yous. Was that like, is that what you're speaking on when you say, man, I was pulled this way, I was pulled this way, I was shut down, I was denied, and it feels good to inhale to just say, Fuck you. Yes, fuck the, you. Yes. Fuck y'all. That's what, that's what people don't know. That's the exhale. Right, right. <laughs> the exhale ain't like, like, I would like to thank, I ain't thankful. It's fuck everyone right. about this bitch. Like, can't nobody tell me shit. La, la. <laughs> Wait till I, and you got the money, right? You know Yo. what's so cool about that? Because <laughs> niggas like Aiden Ross had to apologize. I was like two months from bankruptcy from like hundreds of millions of dollars. Just Is that <laughs> where... Like, the fact that he has Aiden Ross in his mind is crazy. I, I, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm old, but, like, I never in a million years would have ever thought that, like, a fucking kick streamer would be on, or any streamer, really, would be on Kanye West's mind. Like, ever. Occupy his mind at all. Also, yes. Um, so, they also fired Yes Jules, which I don't even know why Yes Jules was hired to begin with and there's a little bit of drama on the Yeezy campaign side as well but it turns out Milo Yiannopoulos is still working as the chief of staff for Yeezy and like sending emails to people dear Miss Goddard enclosed please find a letter and statement of account from your time with Yeezy fines incurred to date as a result of your NDA violations come up to 7.7 .7 million dollars while you were a contractor I suspend enforcement of this debt it now falls due Hassan from compliance team will reach out with information about payment. Please note that any further violations will accrue more fines. Yeah, I work for, by the way, this is for the record, just so you guys know. Yes, I am working on the easy campaign. I am the uh, compliance team exposed. I know I didn't want it to come out this way, but it is the truth. I, I do have a regular nine to five in secret. Every time I look down at my phone, I'm actually doing compliance yes anyway uh because you're being terminated for cause but also because you forgot to sign your contract your termination is effective immediately yours milo which is crazy yeah every time i look down at my phone i'm increasing yes jules's fines yes jules exposes milo Annapolis for saying kanye west fans have down syndrome <laughs> the fuck yes jules was thrust into the spotlight on wednesday thanks to a letter that was sent to her by milo Annapolis. for those who may not know milo's the chief of staff over at easy overall he's mostly known for being a political provocateur Maybe a little bit more than just that. Like being a fucking pedophile and a Nazi at the same time. Um, so that's like, you know, it's, it's not, he's not just a political provocateur. Hot new hip hop. I expected more from you. Uh, this is the beacon of journalistic integrity here. Uh, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, dual disciplines is right. He's dual wielding the worst thing you can be. Okay. Um, no, not Kanye, man. I'm talking about fucking Milo Yiannopoulos. Ay, ay, ay. People are so, people are so quick to immediately be like, 
oh, you must be slandering Kanye. No, Kanye has <laughs> slandered himself enough uh, with his, uh, his Adolf Hitler takes, okay? I think people don't know who Milo Yiannopoulos is. Yes, because Milo Yiannopoulos popped off in the early Trump era. He was a Breitbart contributor. He was outed as, like, a person who was deliberately trying to create and, and, and mainstream Nazi opinions, like actual white nationalists, actual white supremacist opinions. Um, I mean, but is that really shocking that he's working with Kanye West, who did say he loves Adolf Hitler uh, alongside the likes of Nicholas Fuentes? These guys are like massive fucking dweebs, too. I had to explain Milo to my coworkers, and they thought I was lying when I told them about him. Yeah, Milo Yiannopoulos also famously claimed that he went to conversion therapy to no longer be gay. And that it worked for him, and that uh, he his husband, uh, I think, uh, is is now just his roommate or something, and that he is now uh, he is now Christian. Uh, but of course, the reason why he was canceled, quote unquote, by the um, by the right, as a matter of fact, was because he was like defending pedophilia on a uh, on a podcast on a right wing podcast. He was defending pedophilia so um yeah he would go on bill maher he'd go on joe rogan joe rogan actually did a lot for the nazi movement in america like the contemporary neo-nazi movement by like platforming every single one of those fucking freaks like <clears throat> yeah he said sexual assault as a child can make you into a better person or something like that yeah exactly it was pretty fucking insane um so anyway there's a lot more on that fucking milo Yiannopoulos front obviously just another one of the many enemies that I've accrued over the course of the many, many years that I've been a political commentator. Also, uh, the, the one consistent through line that you guys uh, always see, you know, is, is that uh, they always end up becoming open out and about Nazis and also openly defend pedophilia. So I feel like you're doing all right if that guy's your enemy. Yeah. Anyway. However, Ye now has him working for a music and streetwear empire. His involvement with Ye is truly bizarre, although considering Kanye West's political affiliations, it makes sense at least a little bit. Regardless, Milo was taking aim at Yes Jules, claiming that she violated her NDA, all while having unauthorized conversations with Kanye fans. Since this termination, fans have been waiting to hear from Yes Jules. After all, it was revealed that she would have to owe $7.7 in fines. You can see that she exposed some DMs from Milo. In these messages, Milo showed contempt for Kanye fans, saying that they have Down syndrome... Here's what, first of all, I, I want to make, uh, I want to, I want to mention something here. Okay. People with down syndrome are a million times nicer, like not even on the same fucking wavelength of Kanye West fans. Okay. Like not only is this ableist, obviously from like the woke perspective, but the fuck are we talking about? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Why are you shitting on people with down syndrome by comparing them to fucking Kanye West fans? And I mean that in all sincerity. I'm not even, like, making a joke about this. Okay? They're much nicer. They're much smarter. They're much better at life. Okay? It's your... It is a really, really weird thing to just, like... It's a weird thing to, to make this comparison. Anyway, in these messages, he said that. Here's what Milo, the chief of staff who controls who gets hired and fired when they get paid, thinks about the very fan base that fought so hard to get his get Ye his first number one in over a decade, yes, Jules wrote on X. What? Used team not thrilled to be associated with this? I'm not sure what that's even about. Apparently, there was a pretty strong negative response to some Twitter space or something. Let me know if you need anything. Surely, the last thing we need is bright ideas from Down Syndrome mega fans on social media. Half of these obsessive mega fans online have developmental disorders. I'm very much not a fan. Anyway, the fake sounding tell us what you think outreach feels atrociously off-brand for Ye and needs a rethink. Here's what I know to be true about the most incredible fan base in the world, regardless of their misconceptions of me. There's a new product that we have there that anyone else who is not subscribed um, cannot have access to. But uh, in addition to that, I'd love to have a social aspect where we can gather like this and Ye and other team members could just pop in and pop out at their own leisure and kind of hear what... No, use is like Kanye West's news site. It's use.news. Is it bad? I know literally nothing about Yes Jules. No, it's good. It's very good, actually. And also, I don't know anything about Yes Jules either, other than the fact that, like, wasn't the drama that she was, like, saying the N-word or something? And, it, like, it's like, is she a culture vulture or is she actually tapped in with the culture type shit? I mean, she is. I know that she has a lot of cake. 
That's what I know. Anyway, she subsequently said, fuck an NDA. Fuck an NDA. Sue me. Overall, this probably isn't the best strategy to deploy against Yay. However, there is no doubt that Milo's comments about Kanye fans are disturbing. When you consider Milo's political views, it shouldn't be surprising that he sees hip-hop fans this way. Quite frankly, he shouldn't be anywhere near the genre. That said, Kanye likes to do whatever he wants, regardless of how irrational it may be. Let us know what you think about all of this. Um, on behalf of black women, it's always fuck her. She is a white lady who used to do corny uh, black shit in 2013, used the N-word, got box braids, etc. She's just an annoying culture vulture. Yeah, but I think uh, I think she's like I- I'm not saying this, but I think she's perceived as like hot. You know, I I'm not making an assumption, uh, an assertion, but it's more so like like the reason why she's been able to stick around in spite of all of that is because people find her very attractive. I think. Anyway, okay, dude. Yeah, she said black women are mad at her because black men like her weirdo shit. Dude, I'm trying to be as politically correct as possible when covering this. Okay. Like, come on, stop getting mad at me, okay? Jesus Christ. Uh, we were talking about Yes Jules. Anyway, oh, this was pretty funny. I, I love this I love this TikTok, but apparently the top comment was like, make him watch the Hasanabi show or something. But this is, this is just a meme. When your cousin Philly, 5'9", balding with 2008 swag, starts telling you about conspiracies he heard on Joe Rogan so you can take him out to nature, here he can make peace with his struggles and not become right-wing. Dünne cevap verdin, vermedin üzülüyorum Sela. Amına koyacağım abi senin ha. Devamlı her gün geliyor herif. Her gün gelip so- Sela diyor. Ase amına koyayım. Ase siktir git ya. Banı yedin. Bir günlük ban yedin. Hala anlamıyorsun amına koyayım. İkinci gün yine yiyorsun bir tane daha. 24 saat bir tane daha ban yedin şimdi. Amını götten sikerim ha. What's he saying? He's saying uh, the shortened version of selamun aleyküm. Okay. And then demanding that I respond to him. Two days in a fucking row. Yesterday, I didn't respond to him. And instead, I gave him a day off. Thinking that he was going to learn his lesson. He did not learn his lesson at all. And came back with the same exact energy. So then I told him that I am banning him again. Okay? And that uh, for a day. And that I would fuck his pussy from his ass. Which is a... Another very cool way that uh, the Turkish language uh, is on top, remains on top. Oh, here's Benny Boy, by the way, doing a fucking Chinese for Donald Trump. As most of you know, I'm voting for Donald Trump in November. I've said so many, many times at this point, but I'm not just voting for Donald Trump. Next week, I will be co-hosting a fundraiser for him. Now, absolute cuck. Just another fan. I have a fan channel that was terminated for impersonation of you. Already helped me Twitter on the 22nd Feb by tweeting Team YouTube directly, but the channel hasn't been reinstalled still. I keep asking for clarification, but I get no answer without putting my conspiracy hat on. The only reason I see is that uh, since 11-7, I started videos with your Tiltify. I appreciate letting people do this hustle. Um, no, I don't think that's the reason. But you should keep trying and, and maybe uh, hit up uh, Little Bear and we can uh, figure it out. I always regret putting you on the family TV. Why? This way at the top of the hour, because you're subscribed, your family won't see the ad breaks either. If they were to watch it separately, they would probably have to see an ad. Because I assume, because I assume that you guys have one shared account, you know? And at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break that comes for all that are unsubscribed. For $5 or for free with... A Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon uh, Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Here's the three minute ad break now. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, Brianna Poo comes in hot. Agiprop, same energy. These women will die for Rhodesia. Hot. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is this one of those moments where she knows what this is and is like saying, oh, I love that. That's hot. Or is she so stupid that she has no idea what she's responding to? Because see, many people don't get it. So the Agiprop account is saying that the IDF cutie pies on TikTok are doing the same exact type of propaganda for an apartheid supremacist state as in the same exact ways that uh, this old ad from a magazine was doing for Rhodesia. For those of you who do not know, Rhodesia is a, a another white supremacist ethno-state project that, of course, inevitably fell apart due to the fact that the fucking uh, white boy swag just didn't work. This was in, uh, I think, the, like the Mercenary magazine, Soldier of Fortune. Um, you might not know what 
uh, Rhodesia is, you might know it as Zimbabwe. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think that Brianna knows the history. Yeah, Rhodesia has been so relegated to the dustbin of history that most people don't even remember it and usually have to Google it to remember what it was called. Yes, I think it's literally, yeah, colonized by Cecil Rhodes Company. That's why it's called Rhodesia. And I don't think that she knows that. I don't think she knows that at all. I think she just, like, is responding because she's that fucking stupid. Speaking of stupidity, hey, it's Vadim says... I really wish that Brianna Wu would just go ahead and reach her final form is why I left the left Tim Pool centrist already. We all know where this is going, Bree. Just rip off the damn mask and let your right wing freak flag fly for fuck's sake. Lies and the lying liars who tell them a fair and balanced look at watermelon Twitter by Brianna Wu. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm trying to save the left, not join the right. Our lunatic fringe is becoming a mirror of MAGA. Decent people that care about our future should join me in saying so. I love that she's saying our lunatic fringe is becoming like MAGA while simultaneously literally channeling the MAGA energy on directly on Israel and also for like Israeli domestic politics as well. Like she is straight up MAGA in the same sense that like her politics when it comes to American foreign policy are damn near identical with like maybe the exception of Russia to a fucking evangelical Christian diehard Trump supporter in a televangelist church. This person is not is just making up an outright lie. It's a deficiency in your character that you're more angry at me for calling out the lie than the lie itself. What future do you think we have if a huge segment of, our, of us choose our convenient reality? I'm sorry, Bree. I take it back. Arguing with a Jimmy Dore stan, a Steven Crowder mug club guy, and two gender critical fans of yours in the replies made me see the error of my ways. You're totally saving the left. Every single one of these guys inevitably talks about why they left the left because the left left them. Okay? It's because... They take a position either for genuine money or because they like being in a hug box and people make them feel good. You know, I think Destiny's community does this pretty well for all the fucking orbiters that he has. Like, they, they fucking love bomb all the orbiters until Destiny decides to burn that bridge and then they're, like, psychopathically and obsessively stalking them for the rest of their lives. But, like, um, before that moment comes, like, it's very welcoming. It's like a warm hug, right? So it could be because she's not very smart. It could be because there is a financial imperative at play there. Uh, or it could just simply be because she likes being liked. And who amongst us does not like being liked? You know, it's, it's an understandable notion. It's just that it's weird that your interest in being, uh, your interest in being liked uh, shouldn't lead you to uh, vociferously defend a genocidal apartheid regime and then also end up defending other genocidal apartheid regimes? Like, what the fuck is happening here? Especially the failed ones, too. Oh, no. Yeah. Very, very weird. I like being like, which is why I'm a part of a community that believes my people deserve reparations for slavery and Jim Crow. Thought you would appreciate this. I'm going to take a nap. Hardest piece of... What? I... Why am I fucking blocked by so many goddamn people on Twitter? Yeah, it is sick fan art. It's dope. His community has been doing insane levels of oppo research on Norm after the debate to pull up every bad take he's had over all of his years. Yes, because he got fucking owned. Actually, fun de fact, Mr. Bonarelli is at issue with his community for them going too hard on her and other women that orbit him. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard about that. I've heard that they've had some issues with like the women that uh, that that attend the uh, the the get-togethers and the gatherings. Slash uh, the, the, the door knocking operations. His community just discovered today that Norm was denied tenure. It's akin to them finding out that Epstein wasn't just some billionaire philanthropist. I would not never put Jeffrey Epstein and Norm Finkelstein in the same fucking uh, uh, conversation. All of, Jeffrey, uh, all of Jeffrey Epstein's allies hated Norm and still hate Norm to this day. Uh, they are on the exact opposing side of that conquest. Uh, the conquest being uh, international sex trafficking of minors. Um, the person, ironically, that uh, also ensured that, except Chomsky, yes, except Chomsky, fair, fair. Um, the Dersh, Alan Dershowitz, the Dersh, is the reason why uh, Norm Finkelstein was denied tenure, uh, because uh, he had the audacity to uh, call him out for plagiarism. The Dersh! Anyway.
Does anyone outside of academia even understand what de be being denied tenure even entails? Tenure decisions are idiotic when you actually understand the process. How did Dirsch get tenure if he plagiarized? What do you mean? He was fucking, he's a, a, a very famous, he's a very famous uh, def trial lawyer and also uh, a, a, a professor. It's like, that's, you defend Jeffrey Epstein, you're getting tenure. <laughs> Fuck you mean? His most, his, his most famous trial other than the OJ one is literally fucking defending a CIA sex trafficker, a CIA aligned sex trafficker, a CIA Mossad aligned sex trafficker of children. Considering that Harvard is basically a, uh, a, a scouting, a, a talent farm for our State Department, this based MD analyzed the part of the debate very well. Yeah, there was also someone on my subreddit, which I can't believe I'm saying, um, but uh, someone on my subreddit did a pretty good breakdown as well. Everybody posting this and laughing at Destiny's EDC A morality is missing the biggest point that he and Morris inadvertently concede. They try to argue that it's highly implausible that the IAF, Israeli Air Force, would have deliberately targeted children because of its tight command structure. Input from lawyers on targeting decisions, multiple levels of approval, requirements, etc. Here, I'll just run it back again. Every time they target a kid, I'm sure they believe it's Hamas. It's when they kid, yeah, when they, yeah, when they kill the four kids in the, on the, uh, they believe, yeah, they I know they believe it. Me. Even though they were you know diminutive that, side, you know, even though they were yeah, diminutive side, you yeah, don't yeah, see yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah, no, they saw the side. Let's see the side. Oh, I know what he's quoting from. You've lied about this particular instance in the past. Those kids weren't just on the beaches, as often stated in articles. Those kids were literally coming out of a previously identified Hamas compound that they had operated from. They literally said, Mr. Morelli, Mr. Morelli, with all due respect, with all due respect, you're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. That that wharf was filled with journalists. There were tens scores of journalists. That was an old fisherman's shack. What are you talking about? It's so painful. Hamas naval. It's so painful to listen to this idiocy. And if the Hamas sure is they're hiding they're behind sure civilians, they civilians every die. Time they target, every that. time they target a kid, I'm sure they believe it's Hamas. They when they kid, yeah, when they, yeah, when they kill the four kids in the, on the, uh, they believe, yeah, they I know they believe it. Even though they were you know diminutive that, they, side, you know, even though they were yeah, diminutive side. That angle, you yeah, don't yeah, see the side. Yeah, yeah, no, they saw you the side. Let's, let's see the side. Oh, I know what he's quoting from. You've lied about this particular instance in the past. Those kids weren't just on the beaches as often stated in articles. By the way, I, I brought up this point myself as well. I do believe that Israel is a tight command structure, and it's not a simple accident. That's what makes it worse, as a matter of fact. It's not just like a dumb argument to make. It's a dumb argument to make, and it's amoral, but it's also a dumb argument to make because it defeats the purpose that you're trying to signal. If you're trying to signal that, um, if you're trying to signal personally that like Israel is morally infallible or, or uh, Israel is good overall, if that's the vibe that you're trying to put out there, you fail to put that vibe out there, specifically when you say, no, they actually have a tight command structure, which is legally and deliberately targeting children. It's not an oopsie. That's why I always say, yes, the bombings look indiscriminate because they're bombing everything and anything that moves, but it's actually very discriminate. It is very deliberate. I'm fascinated by how people respond after losing a public debate, rap battle, etc. The more they declare they didn't lose or that they don't care, the more pressed they appear. Yes. You lost the debate over whether River to the Sea is genocidal, but you haven't stopped yapping about it since. What the fuck? I'm not owned. Yeah. I think one of the funniest parts about all of this is that all this internet shit slinging is all uh, these communities have. Mr. Uh, Bernardo Cello has like a, a, a very rabid fandom online, but it's almost like a superpower for Norm because he's not online at all. My man doesn't even have a fucking phone. So you can cry about how not owned you are all day, every day, as everybody makes fun of you and your community for dick riding you online, where you are occupying a, a space. Um, but like your your post mortem analyses that is going to just simply be shit stirring and shit slinging about Norm Finkelstein and like how bad he is. You can do all the oppo research you can on him, which is I'm actually kind of shocked that they didn't do it beforehand. Like there's plenty of takes that they could have fucking. Uh, made about norms like uh, assessment of of identity politics and shit like that. If they were actually genuinely interested or even remotely intellectually curious, they would have been able to arrive at uh, certain conclusions that could disparage him that uh, Mr. Botticello could have probably used in that debate to just like uh, to, to just like sneak in as like a jab. It's wild that they didn't even do their due diligence on that front. Anyway. Benny Morris is tolerable because he's a fascist that doesn't like lying. He meticulously 
records evidence of Israel's atrocities, but says they were a good thing, which is unhinged, but at least he isn't a lying worm, just a genocidal monster. Yeah, like, I guess that proves that these fan base is as delusionally confident as him. No, it actually is shocking that, like, I literally thought, okay, when I first heard that Norm and Destiny were going to debate Mr. Bo uh, Mr. Bonarcello and, and, uh, and Norm Finkelstein were going to debate, I thought it was going to be a shit-slinging operation that they would just, like, bring up takes about his takes about Russia, his takes about trans people, things of that nature, all of his, like, contemporary uh, analyses that is, like, completely beyond uh, his, like, actual wheelhouse. I didn't realize that they didn't even do the fucking research at all. I did not realize that they didn't know anything about this dude. And they just basically thought like, you know, they, they basically thought they could just get away with like hitting him on the, on the actual avenues of, of hit, like hitting him in a way, uh, in an area that he's like incredibly knowledgeable. I guess they'll do it now to try and like separate him from the left. But the reality is a lot of people on the left know him. A lot of people on the left who are pro-Palestine especially know him um, and, and recognize that his, like, body of work when it comes to Gaza is, is held up to high esteem. And anything beyond that, you just kind of don't pay attention to, myself included. I've talked about this before. I talked about this way before October 7 as well when he was doing the rounds for his new book. Um, so you're not a debate bro, but a debate cog watcher? I mean, just because I'm not a debate bro personally because I don't think that, like, any of the values that debate bros espouse doesn't mean that I don't watch debates from time to time. Um, I have mentioned time and time again, I will debate. I have debated uh, very well, as a matter of fact, according to uh, others that watch it. Um, it's just that I, I understand the limitations of the, I understand the limitations of the format. And I also understand the, the toxic environment that it fosters in a community. And it's not something that I like seeing reflected in my chat. Anyway, Input from lawyers on targeting decisions, multiple levels of approval requirements, etc. But what we see from the daily release of videos and acts of sadism by IDF soldiers congratulating themselves is best to utter disregard for Palestinian life, widespread among ground forces. If Morris and Denny are, uh, if Morris, now I can't even say the fucking, if, if Morris and Denny are remotely correct about the involvement of the command structure in targeting decisions, what it demonstrates is not that the IDF cannot be deliberately targeting civilians, but rather the command structure and its legal armor deeply implicated in the deliberate killing of civilians at best by doing nothing to prevent frontline force from doing so in their own initiative and at worst establishing top-down directives to deliberately targeting civilians, probably a mix of both. Um, he says, Mr. Bonercelli is a fraud and a grifter contributing nothing of value, but Morris is a legitimate scholar and IDF veteran with extensive knowledge of Israeli military operational policies. His testimony here is unintentional expert testimony supporting the intent to commit genocide component of South Africa's uh, prosecution. Yeah. Um, when, when there is like a very glaring, obvious reality, okay. When there's a very glaring, obvious reality right in front of everyone's eyes and you try to make sense of that by, or, or you try to like cast that aside by being like, no, you don't understand 25,000 dead women and children is actually good. Here's why you've already lost the plot. You are now unintentionally without even recognizing that you're doing this, you're now unintentionally telling people, oh, they are the bad guys, actually. That's the problem. It's almost, uh, it, it is what I've talked about with respect to, like, Hamas uh, and how post-October 7, post-October 7, I think all of the defenders of Israel went too hard and constantly positioned, like, Palestinians across the board is like pro Hamas and how there is nothing but Hamas in areas where Palestinians live. And they constantly hammered on that narrative. And when you are the obvious bad guy in the situation as the state actor, sure, there's going to be a lot of people who are still motivated in the going, yeah, they are Islamist fundamentalists. Yes, they are scary. Yes, they're Arab. But like, there's going to be a lot more people who are coming into the situation with fresh eyes, actually seeing the brutality of Israel that are going to go, okay, well, then I'm with those guys. You know what I mean? Either reluctantly or enthusiastically, I am now with those guys. So I do think that Israel's actions in the West have unironically negatively polarized people into legitimately defending Hamas. Anyway, I saw people saying that Red Ceasefire Pin has something to do with a massacre of Red Hand. They were criticizing those Oscars. You speak on this? No, it's bullshit. I've talked about this before. It's like actually pretty hilariously 
Uh, it is pretty hilarious bullshit. If you think that, like, the you have blood on your hands narrative came from, like, a specific uh, Israeli thing, you're out of your mind. It's, like, a very old concept. <laughs> very, very Israel to just, like, take that and be like, no, no, no, we invented that, too. I co-hosted the first ever Little Bear Geography Invitational today and wanted to congratulate Arun Anna, a.k.a. Indian Hassan on his win. He had a message after that I enjoyed. I, this what I learned throughout this entire venture is take it slow, take it easy. Accuracy is more important than speed. That is the lesson that I learned. I fucked up the first couple of rounds. I fucked up the first second round. I want to say, I want to say a big shout out. This is re I'm repping India, boys, boys, girls, and MBs. I'm repping India. All right, I'm repping India. Right? This is not just about my. Why wouldn't why wasn't I there? Because I'm not trying to get fucking cooked, dog. I suck at geography. Everybody knows that. Win. All right. This is not just about my win. This is about India. All right. This is about South Asia. This is about all my Desi homies. All right. Bringing one exactly bringing home the gold for my Desi homies. That's what's going on. All right. That's what's going on. Woo! He said India is a lion, sir. Is that really not you? This is this is Indian me. Arun had 98% accuracy. It was insane. Hell yeah. Anyway, um, congratulations. Trump is live. Okay, so what? Ugh. All right, I'm trying desperately to move away from the Israel-Palestine stuff because, like, it's the one fucking day of the goddamn week where we are supposed to do more fun shit, you know? GeoGuessr isn't even about geography. It's just car meta now because each area is known to have been pictured by a different Google car. Okay. This is what people think your streams are doing to us. I know exactly what With TikTok this is. Dude, I dude, I knew before I even saw the TikTok. I already pre-watched it. I already pre-liked it. Dude, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. I fucking I'm on TikTok. I'm officially on TikTok. You can't hit me with anything. With every second that passes, you are becoming more and more loyal to the People's Republic of China. All hail the People's Republic of China. We love our strong leader. The Red Book was spitting facts. America, bad. Democratic values, ew. Yucky, ew. It worked. It worked. I need to learn, like, I need to pull a fucking Xiaoma and, like, learn a couple, like, Chinese words, like a couple words in Mandarin so I could just, like, pop off out of nowhere in moments like this. You know what I mean? I need to train myself to, like, like get like an accent get the accent right and everything for like one phrase not a phrase but like a like an entire sentence maybe two sentences you know what i mean that way i can pop off um like this ni rinchi mao zidong ma rizd up livy dun dude ni ji dao yesu si jong wu ren ma mego zheng fu bu zheng rang ni ji dao yin wei bai dong shi tong xing mu yin eta I mean, he's just like reading it from Google Translate, right? Kaya wants something as of a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, no, she's bored on that. She's bored on the on the. Kaya down. Good girl. The establishment fears this. Was that good? Did I pop off? No, I didn't. I need to get better at this. He's the real life version of the Chinese beaver. Yeah. Oh yeah, I need to learn this. Actually. Okay, I have no way of this is too fast. It's too fast. What is this? I made a funny. Hassan, I've been preparing to watch a 15 minute video. It's gonna take one hour and 43 minutes. It's true. The tonal component is so difficult. I think because I had to train myself to not have a, a Turkish accent. I, I feel like I can pick up on, like, the accent and the tonal differences. It's that time of the year again. It's Eric Adams time on NBC New York. Eric Adams just called New York City the Dublin of America. What? Can I send a TikTok for fear and? No. You're on your phone. It's a typical Tuesday night. You're scrolling. Oh, my God. You guys are... Dude, I get embarrassed sometimes when you guys send me memes like that because, like, it reminds me that we're all old. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, like the community is a reflection of the streamer. And when you guys send me, like, lame ass fucking lame ass TikToks, I'm like, oh, God. It's like so cringy and so millennial. Okay. 
it's just I'm sorry. I love you all. TikTok mogging meme for youngsters. Bye bye. I'm a self hating millennial for sure. I, I am. You are the one who turns into a bunch of lame leftists. No, I was never. I was never trying to fucking turn you into a lame. I was trying to turn you into a leftist who is not lame. You say a lot of millennial shit. Reminds me of my older cousins. Like what? What am I saying? There's millennial. Okay. Also, I'm 32. There's like obvious parts. There are obvious parts of my commentary and the, my vibes that I put out that are going to be millennial. Like one thing that I don't understand, for example, is the millennial zoom thing. Like people will be like millennial zoom like this zoomers zoom like this. And it's like, how do you zoom that way? How do you zoom in the other way? I don't know how to like fucking do a fast cut zoom. You're, you're editing it in post, right? And then there's the millennial pause. Does anyone, does anyone have that TikTok specifically? Hold on. Let me, let me just, let me just TikTok it. Dude, bro, what are you doing? Just filling up the tank. What tank? That is a bike. Like a bicycle. This engine rips, bro. You want to tell the truth? You want a knuckle sandwich? I eat knuckle sandwiches for dinner. Gross. Hold on. You figured out hands-free Instagram stories two days ago. I was proud. No, I, I've known how to do hands-free Instagram stories. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, what is it? What was it? What was I going to look for? Millennial Zoom. Here, look. This is how a millennial zooms in. And this is how Gen Z zooms in. 537 people messaged me about this. I get it. I understand. I do the millennial Zoom come here. The thing is, right, and this is the fun part, I know I look like a millennial. I'm Gen Z. Yeah, yeah. This guy's whole shtick is that he's, like, old looking. And, um... But I don't understand how people do the Gen Z Zoom. Like, how do you do a Gen Z Zoom? So I think that one thing I have realized in life is that everything moves so fast. And with everything moving fast, you got to learn. Yeah, they just cut all that dead space in. Uh, like, I think Zoomers just edit more. That's it. Gen Z content is the worst content on the planet. No, I think here's a couple things I will say. Okay. I don't know how the fucking Gen Z Written Zoom you guys works. drive on the left side of the street? Okay, what is happening? Stop sending me random fucking TikToks that you guys think are funny, okay? I am asking for a very specific thing. There's a very specific concept, you fucking boomers in the chat, okay? You fucking boomers in the chat. There's a very specific thing that millennials do online. There's a couple different things. One is the millennial pause, as is the, is the Zoomers call it. I get it. I think it's because, like, Zoomers just edit their TikToks before they post it, whereas millennials don't do that, and they don't start immediately as soon as the video starts rolling, okay? So that's one thing. I know that. I understand that. The other thing is, uh, it's, it's not just the millennial pause, it's the millennial Zoom. So the millennial Zoom is, like, uh, is just, like, slowly zooming in, whereas uh, the, the Gen Z Zoom is just, like, boom, they immediately zoom in post, I think. All right. Like this is how a millennial zooms in. And this is how Gen Z zooms. In. Since all you guys don't know this zoom. How? How do you do it? Explain it to me. Explain it to me, Zoomer. Explain it to me now. How do you do it? See, that's what I'm saying. Look. Millennial zooms in. And this is how Gen Z zooms. In. What did you do? What did you do? Explain it to me now. Magic. I think they scale the video in post. That is what I think it is. I think they're just fucking editing, which is annoying. Oh, she was thirsty. That's why she wanted to get out of bed. Yeah, it's a cut in the video. That's how... Since all of you guys don't know this Zoom, the Gen Z Zoom, I'm going to be teaching you because it's a pretty basic trick that everybody should know. All you have to do is go into your edit tool, then split the segment that you want to zoom into during. Then it is you in go post. to that segment, you zoom in. It is in. in fucking post. It's in post. It's literally in fucking post. I thought there was like a way to tap it or something. It's just a post edit. That's it. That's it. You try hard broccoli haired motherfuckers. That's all you've been doing because you've been fucking doing it in post. That's it. That shit is so dumb, dude. You think fucking millennials don't know how to edit? I mean, at least I do. I've been doing content for fucking years. Yeah, Zoomers edit their TikToks. That's it. It's just a fucking jump cut. Well, not really a jump cut. They just fucking zoom in and post. That's it. Why are you getting press, big bro? I'm getting press because I'm angry. I thought there was a secret to it. I literally, this entire time, I thought that there was an actual fucking way that you can just like 
zoom in complaining about this is very millennial of you okay now that i have also recognized that i'm a boomer and i'm cringe and i'm a millennial which you know i do i do uh recognize all of those things okay and i do like that zoomers uh, care about their fucking little tic tacs okay tic tac toe as nancy pelosi who uh is in my same age range uh said i do i do like that they do the cap cut stuff it looks cool it's visually pleasing I'm a fan of all of that. More power to you. You know, let your freak flag fly. Be as creative as you want. Okay? That's fine. However, there is one aspect where the Zoomers are not all right. I think, because TikTok shows me what I want to fucking see, I've seen this whole, like, millennials look their age, but Zoomers look much older. Shit that's been popping off. And, like, every single time I see, like, a Zoomer TikToker being, like, Oh, really? Like, oh, really? You actually think you look your age? You look 30, and then the dude is like 35 or 36 or 37, almost 40 years old, and the girl making fun of the fucking older, uh, the millennial, looks like they're literally 35. How is this happening? What has happened? What? Why? The biggest millennial cope is thinking they look 20. No, people are misunderstanding. Millennials don't think they look 20. They're saying they look their age, like as in, if you're 35, you look like you're 35 years old. And the video I saw was insane. And I think, I don't know if it's the microplastics. I don't know if it's the makeup changing. I don't know if it's the damn phone always on their phone. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't think millennials like look, I don't think, especially younger millennials like look younger than they actually are. I don't think so at all. I'm 32 years old. I think I look 32 maybe 35 okay when i shave the beard 32 when i have the beard 35 okay but it's in the fucking age range but then sometimes i see people on tiktok and they're like like the dude that we watched earlier with the with the zoom right not this guy where is he this guy like he's the first guy that i watched that was like what the fuck like that's his whole shtick now uh, about how he looks like a millennial but he's actually gen z but there are a lot of people out there who are just like in their early 20s that just kind of look like they're 30 and i don't know what the fuck's going on no shaving makes you look older dermal fillers make 22 year olds look 35 and a 35 year old look 55 after a while i think maybe it, it might be covid and i don't know what it is this whole shtick, it's his whole shtick, and has gotten already already gotten old. I mean, don't make fun of him. I, I think he's like a nice person aside from that. But like, like Jay Schlatt and Ted Nivisen are great examples of this, right? When I found out that Jay Schlatt was like 22, when the first time I found out his age, he was 22. I don't know, he's like 23, 24, maybe now. I don't know how old he is now, but I was genuinely shocked. Like I was, I I, I could not believe it. I thought this dude was like my age. He did a TikTok about the aging. So it has been quite an interesting couple of days for Jordan. So a few days ago, I was. This isn't the TikTok I'm looking for. I saw one. I saw like a dude who was like 38 or something. And, and yeah, this oh, is this the is the one here. Years in the back that didn't hear me the last time. Millennials look fantastic. For <laughs> kind of denial filled middle age crisis ass bullshit is this? What 12 year old called you ugly? <laughs> Show me the Disney ears. Show them to him. What twink on Grinder asked you for your ARRP card? <laughs> Come on, let me know. <laughs> Pour one out, y'all. Pour one out for every millennial going through a crisis. <laughs> I'm just going to let you sit with this one, bro. You look 30. You look 30. <laughs> I mean, it's cringe. This guy is, like, also cringe. He's, you know, he's cringe because you're 38 years old and you're on TikTok. It's always going to happen that way. You're always going to be a little cringe, right? And, like, when I first watched this video, I was like, why is this 30-year-old woman making fun of another dude who's also 30 about, like, who's a millennial and who's a Zoomer, okay? And then I found out that, like, she's, like, 22 or something. <laughs> Peace and love. I'm tripping out right now. And yeah, I'm not until she did that. When she did that, I was like, oh, maybe she's a Zoomer. I'm trying to be shady. I swear to God, I'm not trying to be shady. But when that video first started, I thought it was a fellow millennial sympathizing with what I was talking about. But when I looked on this person's profile, homegirl is 20 years old. 
And this is like one of the first times I actually felt what other millennials were talking about, about Gen Z looking a little bit older for her age. And homegirl was like loud about her opinions. It was trying to like laugh at my expense. Don't want to be mean to her. Baby, baby girl, <laughs> baby girl. Oh, Jesus. Like you're pretty, you're beautiful. I'm not trying to like tear you down or anything because looking older than your age isn't a bad thing and shouldn't be stigmatized by society. But when you're like laughing at my expense about the way I look. <laughs> oh God, baby girl. Oh my God. And uh, like, oh my God. It's so funny that you're trying to read me for looking 30 and saying you look 30. Yes, wonderful. Both of these people suck. I agree. I, I do agree with that. TikTok's my favorite stream activity. When are you gonna watch what what are you gonna watch when it's gone? Instagram reels? Never. Um I don't I don't like this discourse that much. Uh especially because it, it's like very self-serving, seemingly, because I am 32, right? And as a 32 year old, like everyone is gonna understandably uh, feel like this is self serving, okay? Uh, and be like, oh, look, millennials are like dunking on the Zoomers. I genuinely don't understand it, but I think it it probably is because of the, uh, I think it's probably because of the, the Vsauce video, if you guys remember, like the video Vsauce did where he talked about how like the things that we wear and like the way we do our hair and all this stuff basically changes the way that we perceive one another's ages and that's why you have like you know you have this phenomena where you look at people in the in the 60s 70s and the way that they fucking dress and they're like 20 years old but they look much older like i think that's probably what it is and we're making you know we're, we're making a lot of hay out of it i guess you know Stop sending me Instagram reels, you fucking 45-year-old demons in the chat. The Instagram demons in the chat. You have to stop it, okay? I am not interested in watching your fucking reel. What's next, bro? Are you going to send me a Facebook link? Stop linking me Instagram reels, okay? I don't want to see something that banged on TikTok three and a half months ago that you watched through like eight different fucking filters, okay? Every Instagram reel is like a meme that made its way from TikTok to Twitter. It got recycled by all of the fucking bot farm accounts with blue check marks. Finally made its way to Instagram reels because your grandma saw it. You're sending me Instagram reels. You know who sends me Instagram reels? My mom. You are sending me Instagram reels like you are my mom. You know who sent me an Instagram reel the other day? My dad. My dad sent me an Instagram reel. I was like, this is so, this is Jover. AB from the H3 pod say, uh, did say that reels gave him more engagement. Yes, Instagram reels are seen by a lot of people. I'm just talking about like what is filtered. Like how Instagram reels are developed, okay? I'm 32, I have a sister who's 27, and youngest is 22. We went to grab beer together. The only middle, only my middle sister got carded. I'm the exact opposite. I hate getting TikToks sent to me. Who hurt you? Hassan's view count bot. Uh, nobody. I, I don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, this is genuinely, this is genuinely a, a, something that I'm like trying to figure out, okay? This is something that I'm trying to figure out. As a 400-year-old demon myself, I genuinely don't understand it. Because, like, I'm 32. I think I look in the age range of what I am. Maximum, I'm, like, 36 looking. You know what I mean? Whereas sometimes when I see, like, a 20-year-old and I look back at how I looked when I was 20 years old and I look at how this 20-year-old now looks, I'm like, what the fuck? I thought we were the same age. And I don't know why it looks, why it, it feels like that. I wouldn't say that about Sean, for example, uh, who I had on the broadcast, maybe because I know his age, but, like, I, I don't think Sean looks older than he actually is. So obviously there are like plenty of people who look their age, right? Um, who are Gen Z. But having said that, there are definitely there are definitely enough people that are Gen Z that just like look much older than they actually are. And I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Much like height, this whole conversation is a terminally online combo. Go to a mall and you can totally tell who's in their twenties, thirties, and forties. Probably. Nah, you look fifty three. <laughs> Dude, I hope I look like this when I'm 53. Are you kidding me? That'd be so sick.
I thought Kazo was your age. I thought, wait, how old is Kazo? He is my age. Kazo is my age, for sure. Don't you think people start taking more care with themselves in their, their 30s? When you're in your 20s, you don't stress much about it? Yeah, I never thought about it at all until I got these fucking lines on the top of my dome. I got these brow lines, right? Once you start seeing those in photos, you're like, what the fuck is that? You're like, what is that? What the fuck is that? And then you're like, God damn, how did that happen? Okay. I think that's why people get Botox. Obviously, I'm not fucking with that at all. But um, I now moisturize this part of my fucking brow and around my eyes, too. I do that. I do that because, and that's not a thing that I ever even thought about before. I noticed it when I was, um, I noticed it when I was, uh, uh, like, when I passed 30. By the way, Kazo is 25. Come on. Oh, dude. If I had access to DoorDash where I live... Wait, you don't have DoorDash? No. I, I, I wouldn't be That's here. That's probably the... <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, on, on everything I love, if I had access to DoorDash, I'd have died two years ago. Dude, if I had food... I, the abyss... <laughs> I can't. Dude, if I had the ability to have food delivered to my house... As the elder Gen Z is because advertising and consumer goods are all either child or full adult now. Like, the teen and tween fashion isn't a thing anymore. I remember being 12... And going to the petite section in clothing stores and buying clothes designed for adult women. So we've been presenting ourselves like full adults for ages so we feel older. Also, I think unlimited access to the internet exposes us to things way too old for us. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Zoomers got that Zoomers got that 500 yard stare going because they fucking they've been living on a planet where they have unfiltered, unrestricted access to everything that the internet has. They're always they always got that. But anyway, I guess the the thing to to mention here. I think you're skewed in your perception of Gen Z's age, especially if they have a beard. Maybe. The thing is, it doesn't matter how old somebody looks, okay? It don't matter. It does not fucking matter, okay? People are... Aging is natural. It is beautiful. It is fine. And honestly, not only is it natural and beautiful, but, uh, you know, people should, uh, should welcome it. And I say this because I am aging, okay? Yeah, it's self-interested of me to say this. But you will too. Nothing worse than what we saw on the internet growing up. They act like millennials didn't grow up during the wild west of the age of the internet. I'm 30. I remember sites like Best Score and Live League. Yeah, but you had to go to those sites to see that shit, okay? And I think you're, and I think you're forgetting uh, how many people didn't actually end up seeing that shit or maybe saw it sometimes. I feel like the level of like unhinged shit that is unrestricted that you will watch and see even if you don't want to watch or see it, even if you don't seek it out, has been elevated. Sure, the absolute worst of the worst content is like probably even harder to find now than back then. But there was like um there was a level of restriction. There was a level of restriction that filtered out like a lot of people. Is Kyle okay? She's passed the fuck out on the ground. I'm just letting her lay on the ground. The difference is Gen Z grew up with the internet. Millennials grew up with the internet. How old someone looks does matter a little when you're trying to date and trying to avoid problematic age gaps. Wait, what? This is, okay, tell me how phenomenally online you are with one sentence. You don't have to say, I'm the most extremely online person on the planet, like, in those words, but I will immediately arrive at that conclusion. Let me tell you something, okay? Absolutely zero people in the real world are making these assessments. This is entirely about how people perceive you online. Problematic age gaps. Or like how old or young your partner looks and how that will be perceived is an entirely online phenomenon. Okay. <laughs> also like an odd thing. You said, eh, again, worst community to say this, worst community to say this in because let's be real. We are all extremely fucking online. We spend a lot of our time on here on Twitch. We spend a lot. We spent every fucking waking moment online. It's going to be real hard for this community to, to, to rip themselves off of that, to rip themselves off of that, uh, that, that assertion. That's also a universal Zoom review that age gaps are problematic, even if the person is over 18 and consents to being with someone older. Yes, that's a totally understandable proposition from Zoomers who online have been online since they were like 14, 15, and were most likely predated on by a bunch of older people that either A, were being fucking gross and creepy and, and pedophilic, or B, didn't know what they looked like or how old they were because everyone, you assume everyone is your age online. Like, you just, 
You never, even now when I go on Twitter, I never personally think this person responding to me is probably some fucking unhinged psychopath or a 12 year old. I think this person is just like me, has the same shared collective experiences and is making this opinion known in the most like uh, with, with all the reason and all the logic. Even if you don't understand, even if you end up coming to the conclusion that they're probably not all there, your first assertion always, your first assumption always is like, yeah, this person's probably like me, okay? That's normal. So you just never know how old someone is online. And I think when you're like 14, 15, and you're, you know, when you're brought into the fray and talking to like whole ass adults, that I think creates like a natural resistance against like, older people in that regard this kind of shit would be avoided like the top of the hour ad break can be avoided okay if most of our social interactions occurred in the meat space but it does not the overwhelming majority of social interactions that people have now are online i don't let my 27 year old girlfriend moisturize because i'm 30 and i want her to catch up so the allegations stop Remember when teenagers used to hide their age and were afraid to look like a stupid kid online? Now they, they're they all nearly bragging that they're minors and confidently saying the dumbest shit about serious topics is that they're enlightened. I'll never forget the one time someone came up to debate about the ethics of sexuality and fiction on one of my posts. I brought up Game of Thrones and they responded, my mom won't let me watch it yet, but... And I just sat with my face in my hands for a good five minutes. That's it. That is a perfect demonstration of exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, you're 15, little bro. Do 15-year-old shit. Why are you fucking doing this? That's not 15-year-old shit. Go watch, like, Fortnite memes or something. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know? What is this? Why does Gen Z look older? Lamau, these kids wilded, not the Benjamin pen. <laughs> is this an anti-young people stream? I mean, as an old, obviously, I'm going to have a slant here. There's also this, this genuinely terrifying phenomenon as well, for the record which is the 10-year-olds are also now, like, dominating Sephora. I've seen so many goddamn videos of this, and I've been meaning to watch one of them. Here's Funky Frogbait talking about 10-year-olds are taking over Sephora. Posting in a panic because apparently the preteens have extended their territory into Sephora. Beauty gurus beware. The 10-year-olds are done with dolls, and now they're after your luxury makeup. I think this person is anti-react. I think they had a video on it. Okay, we are not watching this video then. I will just simply show you some of the selects about uh, the 10-year-old the Sephora kids. Personal. I did warn you of the ad. This was, this was the TikTok that, was, uh, that first like popped off on the situation, on this predicament. This was the time when they were so incredibly viral that they weren't in stock literally anywhere. So I told her that no, we didn't have them, but I have Source reaction content is theft. Okay, I'm not reacting to her fucking content. Like, I'm just, you know what? Actually, I don't even want the smoke. Honestly, I don't want to fucking restart the React Gate shit. I'm just going to not watch. Funky Frog Bait also made videos on age of Gen Z versus Millennial and Rage Bait. Okay, well, their anti reaction, apparently, first of all, um, their pronouns are they them is what someone informed me in the chat. So let's get it right. Um, secondly, uh, they're anti-reaction, anti but reacting to TikToks. Yeah, of course, but there's a difference there. I get it. I understand it. <sighs> One funky is MB, two, they are pro-react as long as it's ethical and actually commentary, please. I love funky so much. I just don't want to, I don't want the smoke. If you're going to go watch it, you can watch it on your own. Ten-year-olds are taking over Sephora. Channel is Funky Frog Bait. They have a way more nuanced taste. All right, chat. So today we're going to be uh, reacting to this YouTuber called Funky Frog Bait. It's a stupid name. Um, okay, let's get started. Reaction content. Because why? Go to the end. As it says, Sniper Wolf, XQC. Stop, you're just reigniting the combo. Yeah, what am I doing? I, dude, I, I have PTSD and so does chat, honestly, from this kind of stuff. Like a moth drawn to the flame, yeah. Reacting to React Gate is is is like so meta. You love getting yourself in the drama. I don't think this person is is. But don't you make reaction content? Watch the whole video. Open your eyes and look at the thumbnail. Your stupidity is agonizing. What if they talk about me? I want to know. No, I I don't. 
I don't think they even I don't think they even bring me up. I just like scrolled through it and I think it's mostly just like XQC related cuz like XQC uh it, like does the uploads and whatnot, you know what I mean? So I think it's mostly just XQC and then Sniper Wolf, which was like a big part of the React Gate drama originally, which uh was about like how Sniper Wolf just like collects some of the best TikToks and and doesn't do enough to like react to it, you know, that kind of thing. And then their commentary on it, on the react spectrum, it seems. That's my assessment of it. What if I made a video reacting to this video and gave you permission to react to that? Yeah, I don't, I just don't. React it is why because I've started watching more YouTube channels that you react to. I know, I know. Let's not even talk about it again. Control F the transcript and see if you're mentioned. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, no, I don't care. I don't care about if, if they mention me or not. Okay, I don't care. Moist is getting better at basketball. I'm watching this. I got, I got, I'm putting my channel points on, on Moist Critical here. Huh. <laughs> Off topic, I'm disappointed Mark didn't join the watch party. I watched all four and a half hours of the debate between Norm Finkelstein, Destiny, Benny Morris, and Moe and Rabani. It was worth every minute. I highly recommend. Use this to clap drama people, to be honest. Everyone has, everyone has the worst takes on this stuff. Okay, except for me. I have the best takes. Well, some of the YouTubers have good takes on it, too. Just the ones that agree with me. That's it. That's all I want to say on it. Um, not only have I been put on the channels of a boy. Okay, okay, stop, stop. I don't care. I don't care about the good parts of... I don't care about, like, how, how good react uh, reacting to YouTubers' videos are, either. I, I just don't care. New yesterday video from Greece. Yeah, what is happening to this community? What has become of us? We used to be a community... We used to be a community of people who were having fun, who were interested, who were interested in having fun. Okay. And now we've become a community that's only interested in one thing. And that is debate. Please let's stop. Let's come to our senses together and let's watch cringe TikToks like this one. Dude, he's so woke. I'm attracted to all ethnicities. Genuinely, genuinely. I'm attracted to introspection and an openness to learn. To me, that is smart. The want to learn, you know? Did I miss any? Because I'm attracted to them too. Fucking let's go. But mostly, I'm attracted to women with big hearts. Just genuine people with love to give everyone. Nigeria. I love hips. Oh, he's still going. Eyes. Smile. All depends on curves. Hell yeah. I love rhythm. I love Burma Boy. Yo! This is the only Instagram reels that are allowed to, to be watched because this is like perfectly compiled, okay? The cringest of the cringe. Oh, this guy's my favorite nowadays. This is like this guy's awesome. There's this like there's this other there's this other type of fucking content creator on TikTok that like has like the zoomer the fuckboy zoomer haircut and shit, but then they have like white hair and they literally look like they're 40. So I can never know. I can never know if this dude is like 40 or 50 or or fucking 25 but just real hurt, okay? Hassan, pay attention. Did you end your Amazon Prime partnership? No, I did not. I think they moved Primes to a different place. I don't know where it is. But you can still subscribe with Prime to avoid the top of the hour breaks, which I ran already. So don't worry. If you didn't see it, then you didn't see it, okay? Your legs can reach upon somebody's son's shoulders, but when it's time for exercise, you complaining? Don't scroll by. I'm Little crazy in it. Sharp eyes with the mind of a sinner. What does that even mean? What does that even mean, bro? What does that Charlie's video about There's kick? There's no shortage of degenerates that stream on kick. It's like if Arkham Asylum had their own streaming platform. <laughs> it's this 20... <laughs> I mean, okay, that was a good one. Because it's so... That is a good... That is a good bar. It's funny because it's so unimaginably accurate. 
24-7 Big Brother broadcast of just unhinged lunacy at this point. And somehow that always ruffles people's feathers. Like, no, it's not everyone. You can't say that about Kick. And of course, it's not everyone on Kick is a weirdo, obviously. But you've got to hop off. Resubscribe button under the stream. Elevate your subscription tab. Use your Prime sub checkbox. The idiot potion here. Snap back to reality. Get out of the delusion. If you think that Kick's public perception is anything other than entirely negative. There is so much crime that just gets broadcast on there. It's incredible how the FBI hasn't used it as a resource to bust some complete awful, awful people. That is, of course, if, you know, <laughs> if the FBI was actually interested in doing that sort of thing, then they would be doing that. Except the FBI is probably more interested in streaming on cake rather than fucking doing the bust. People like just recently something about chickens made that video exposing the kick predator and it's not like that's an isolated incident there's quite a bit of that going on on kick because the platform is attracting some putrid worms to it like this festering dumpster that's surrounded by mosquitoes I'll can i just say that's another area where i've been so goddamn vindicated like remember proven right again vindicated once again it sucks because like I can't even do a fucking victory lap on this shit because at what cost my vindication always comes with the outing of pedophiles. Okay. It's just like, so I can't even do a, like a up oh, told you, I told you. Cause then I'm just like, what, what am I doing? Every single time it's like when there is a, there, there's just like a, like a metric ton of hate coming from one vicinity Almost every single fucking time, there's something sinister there. I'll always take every opportunity I can to mention this absolute ghoul. His name is Suspendus. Now, I know his hairstyle may be confusing you because it looks like a 2006 emo boy haircut, but make no mistake, this is a grown 40-year-old man who has become notorious for having sex with prostitutes on stream and at one point even had sex with someone while there was a child in the room. That's a felony. He streamed himself fucking someone with a kid present. That should be a go straight to jail moment. He should be thrown in the fucking slammer. But not only is he not in jail. It's crazy to me that when Aiden Ross like first, you know, unveiled as like uh, Kick's largest new streamer, uh, he very openly just showed porn to his audience. <laughs> and we didn't immediately go, brother, uh, brother, uh. Brother, uh, don't do that, brother. Haram. Haram. Brother. Jail. He's not even banned on- Well, we did. We did. Next time, bring up the big allegedly bar, then accuse them of being pedophiles off the bat the moment you get that hunch. No, I'm not going to do that. You, you think they're going to drop a pedophile category on kick, Lamar? See, this is what I mean. It's like we're, we're joking, but it's like such a fucking real problem at the same time. You know what I mean? Kick. He is still a kick partner and one of their bigger streamers, mind you. Now, him and his unpaid pathetic janitors have done all they can to keep that clip off the internet. They've scrubbed it from most of the original uploads, but I'm sure you can probably still find it somewhere archived. But it's not like an allegation. He streamed it himself. And if you were on the internet during the kick rise, you probably saw that floating around because this is one of their first big streamers that was native to their platform before making all of their massive multi-million dollar signings. This is one of their, like, founding fathers, basically. So you can't make a good argument that kick isn't a platform. Kick bands aren't real is the title of this video. From that attracts tons of degenerates. And kick doesn't give a shit. They just seem to sit back and be like, eh, fuck it, that's alright, who cares? Like, I understand they want to be more hands-off and allow more freedom. There's nothing wilder than the fact that when Trainwrecks, like, you know, went over to start this platform after crypto casino gambling, specifically from Stake, got banned off Twitch, that, like, the, the guy that, that was, like, you know, leading the cause of creating Kick was, like, a guy who very openly showed disdain for any kind of, like, sexual content that women were were presenting on twitch like there was a whole meta like the hot tub meta but even before the hot tub meta there was always like why are there women on this platform like showing skin which is wild when you think about like hating titty streamers like people that hate titty streamers then went on to make their platform where dudes are basically fucking you know sex workers on camera in front of children Dudes copping dome on camera. There was another guy that was like, did that 
like one week in, um, yeah, the to catch a kick predator, um, the to catch a kick predator guy, uh, this uh, sorry, something about chicken. Uh, Something about chickens did a phenomenal video. It's forty-seven minutes long. I didn't watch it because, like, it's too gruesome. Like, it is literally one of those things where it's like, I feel like I'm better off not. I'm, I'm better off not knowing about it. I only go on Kick to illegally watch pay-per-view UFC fights. But last time I was there, there was some girl farting for donos. I respect the hustle, but I felt bad for her dog. I know it smells crazy in there. What is this? Didn't Aiden Ross literally react to one of his fans video gaming themselves because of gambling debt? Dude, that sounds insane. What? Are you talking about, like, the fan that drove his car into the river? I don't think that guy was, like, trying to kill himself. It's new shit? No, new story today? Someone straight up fucking video game themselves on his Discord? Fake news made up by Aiden Twitter viewers after he nuked their Twitter community? It's on LSF. I never see. This is how you know I never go on fucking LSF on my off time. His editor confirmed that. No, it's true. Not he killed himself on Discord or Aiden watched. It's bad. Aiden's editor confirms Aiden reacted to a fan take his own life over Discord due to gambling addiction. What the fuck? Wait, what? No, I, I don't think this is real. I can't believe this is real. Here's context. Hello, guys. Here's a clip of one of Aiden Rock. Aiden Rouse's editors who confirmed that he was in a Discord watching someone kill himself while he was begging for money because Aiden put him on gambling. His mom joined the day after he died and joined VC with the moderator Prismo and they spoke about what happened and she was devastated and got off her money. She has now zero son left because of an egotistical maniac. Aiden is paying people to delete as much info as possible. Do not fold. What? No, this sounds fucking... I'm not... I'm not feeding into these rumors before there's like actual verifiable proof and com uh, confirmation. No, no, no. I, I just, here's a clip from Aiden's editor confirming it. I don't care. That's like, that's ridiculous. I need more. I need more proof than that. No, no, no, no. That's like, this hits like a new level of depravity that, that I, dude, I don't, that's, it's too insane. That's ridiculous. Like I, that's, yeah, this is like a like a insane accusation. Usually delete his Twitter community with over 90,000 people, and, and I think this is why. Dude, this is an MSN article. It's a sports key to MSN article. This is not a real article, chat. Please, it's sports key to, okay? You need to understand something. It, this is called sports key to, okay? This website is not like doing real journalism. It's basically like Dexterdo. Okay, it's like a fucking, it's even worse than Dexterdo because I think it's like literally AI. Media literacy, folks. Media literacy, let's do it. Let's, let's uh, exercise it. Uh, I am not going to use an article from a website that just basically browses t uh, TikToks and, and subreddits for news stories. All right, let's get back to what we do know. Beat him on kick, but not to be the point Dexter putting my glasses up and telling on the teacher here, but perhaps... It would be sensible to start drawing the line in the sand at broadcasting crimes on your platform. Like, maybe that's when you should step in and put the kibosh on it and actually start issuing bans. And that brings me to what I want to discuss and why I'm even talking about this in the first place. When Kick does ban someone, it's extraordinarily rare. And when it happens, it shocks the internet, you know, more so than if aliens had invaded the planet. And every single time, people are under this impression that it's some kind of permaban. Like, look, Kick finally did something about this dumb asshole. Let me tell you something. This is called motivated reasoning. People want to believe that their favorite website that features their favorite content creators. And I know that sounds insane to many of you in here that like, what? There are people whose favorite content creators are like these fucking freaks. Yes. Okay. Yes. There are people out there who love these streamers and there are people out there who love this content and those people want to maintain the facade both in their fucking minds and also outwardly maintain the facade to onlookers that Kick actually is responsible and is like taking initiative and taking action against some of their uh, regular violators of some potential terms of service. Oh. And every single time I have to explain that it's just going to be a temporary ban, like 24 hours, 72 hours, something like that. 
Like, Kick does not permanently ban anyone. There's only, like, two streamers I can think of that were permanently banned, and one of them was the Kick Predator, but that was only after he himself took himself off of social media. He vanished. That man ordered a Hoover Max from the Breaking Bad universe and has never been seen again. So Kick got an easy PR win there by just saying, like, no, no, he's gone for good. He's not welcome back type of thing. And then the other one was someone who exposed, like, how viewbotting is so easy on Kick. I think they're still permanently banned. Outside of that, I don't know anyone else. Everyone else, like Jack Doherty and whoever else is broadcasting, like, miscellaneous fights or having, like, titties and pussy and ass thrown in the face of Kick streams, they usually only get banned for a day. Maybe three days tops. And somehow, every single time they get banned, like Jack Doherty, everyone just assumes it's like a permaban. Like, look, Jack Doherty's gone. The end of Jack Doherty. Jack Doherty's been destroyed. The evil has been vanquished. You know, all that kind of shit. When that is never the case and likely never will be with this platform. <laughs> There's something very funny about being banned for exposing how easy it is to view bot. The fuck? <laughs> yeah. Aren't you preemptively banned from Kick? Yeah, Charlie being fraudulent in his journalism here, refuses to acknowledge that there is also another person who was preemptively banned by Aiden Ross. That is me. I think it was me and Miskiff, but then Miskiff was like no longer preemptively banned, but I'm still preemptively banned, I think. Form. They only believe in these like really temporary suspensions where no one really learns a lesson. They just get like a tiny vacation for like a day or two. That's it. And it most recently happened with Neon. Neon was one of Kick's biggest streamers for like a month thanks to viewbotting out the wazoo. And three days ago he got banned for shit-talking a child on a video call where he like threatened to dox and rape them. He went a little wacky with the Xbox what? Live bravado. Dude, every word that comes out of Charlie's mouth that somehow makes the previous offenses look like... Like, what is happening? I don't understand how it gets worse. You're like, okay, he just talked about a dude having sex with a, a, a prostitute in front of a child and streamed it. That's insane. And then it's like, and then the next up, it's like, no, this person was a wide distributor of child sexual abuse material on kick. And it's like, how? How is this happening? This is like every layer you peel it gets fucking worse and worse. Bro, the people on Kick are evil maxing? No, literally. What? Like, I don't get it. I don't fucking understand it. What is this? Keemstar's response to it? That's that. Bro, I love that there's a fucking actual added context to this tweet. Yes, Neon did threaten the dogs and rape a 12 year old on stream, but to remove the context that the kid was taking a massive shit too is not fair. They were doing gamer trash talks was not real threats, bro. This is, I'm not even kidding. This is literally, this is an untenable situation. Okay. You cannot community note your way out of this. And the fact that there are so many people, the fact that Keemstar has not gone away in 2024 is, is incredible. Okay. And no, I, I, I think he unblocked me. It seems for the first time. So I can see the beautiful tweets like this one. This is, I can't even believe I can see a Keemstar tweet right now. Very strange. I guess I have been unblocked by him. I truly believe there's a contractual obligation to kick streamers to collab with Neon because he's Aiden's best friend. Bruce was the first one to platform him when Bruce signed the kick and then Rage collab with him when he first signed. Like I think it's actually a contractual obligation. I don't understand it, but I do believe that there is a, like in my head canon, I think that there is one, a contractual obligation for kick streamers to be like, yo, I fucking hate Hassan. Fuck that guy and Pokimane. Okay. I also think there's a separate contractual obligation in my head canon. This is all made up, by the way, that Keemstar and every single one of these like Twitter rage bait farmers with blue check marks is like on the doll, getting paid to specifically promote kick streamers because I don't understand it. Like, all of those, like, 100K plus like tweets that you see uh, about, like, this is the stupidest, worst streamer you've ever seen, right? Half the time, they're promoting this fucking dipshit. Like, really? That's your favorite streamer, and I'm the worst streamer you've ever seen? Are you okay? The fuck's going on? What has happened on the planet? Like, every single one of those blue checkmark uh, uh, uh, 
Impression Farmers literally has a tweet that went fucking bananas mode. Went super viral being like, this is Song Guy, literally the dumbest guy on the planet, literally the, West, uh, the, the worst streamer on the fucking planet. And then they spend every other moment either stealing tweets from other people to repost them and then bought the shit out of those likes <laughs> or promoting these guys. Hassan, people are trash. You know this? I mean, it, it, but like there's a level to the trash that I thought it would be. There's a level to the trash that I think would be like, you know, like there, there, there'd be a point of no return. I feel like we're at that point of no return. Or tweeting about unorthodox ways of feeding babies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th that fucking tweet. Akira. Hate watcher. Guy, I know. Linked evidence. You were a grifter to me recently in order. Keemstar tweet. Hutch video. Loner box video. I was flabbergasted. Dude has an issue with me giving you money to skip ads, but is happy to promo them. Yeah. People are trash maxing. People are evil maxing. They're really saying that complaining about your job is worse than being a pedophile. Lamont. I know. There's a difference between being a bad person and just unpleasant versus literally committing crimes on stream. Once again, I, I am so motherfucking vindicated, but at what cost? Ryan and others' uh, Twitter accounts have kick contracts. It's not a conspiracy. Otto here and flew too close to the sun and caught a ban for it. Now, he's always been obnoxious, and now that he's not as popular as he once was, he is desperate to once again suckle from that bosom of success, so he's been doubling down on this shtick and being even more obnoxious than... Everything I've learned about these, like, cake streamers, I've learned against my will, okay? Everything. I've learned it from my Twitter feed. I've learned it from the fucking impression farmers constantly posting about them. I've learned it from the worst accounts on Twitter, straight up. Like, those guys are absolutely the worst accounts on Twitter. All they do is just fucking steal other people's viral tweets, repost them, bot them into oblivion, have that be, like, a 100K liked tweet. And then immediately follow that up with like videos of these kick streamers that that Charlie is talking about with like um with like a oh this guy's really dumb he did it again haha <laughs> am I right yeah Kira Juju that Ryan Scuba Ryan like I should not know these fucking names why do I know these names this is literally why I fucking deleted Twitter off my phone I was like this is so bad. Just close the laptop. No, literally, that is what I did. It's all over Reddit. It's all over Reddit. It's all over fucking Twitter. And it creates this, like, in my opinion, a false sense of popularity, which then gets real people to watch. Remember the old days when Rice Gun was the worst streamer? I know. What the fuck happened? The weirdest thing, too, is I've seen Kira tweets that are political and they align with your views is insane. Yes, he. that's a 100% a fallen fan. Like, 100 P. I've already called it out before. I think he used to follow me on his alt. I clearly remember you warning them about gambling off D rates to either X or train. You were right about all this. Yeah. <clears throat> it's really crazy, man. Than ever. So I'm going to go ahead and play the clip that got him banned. I'm going to censor the child for obvious reasons, though. The fuck? I tried to be nice to you, bro. Oh, fuck the fuck up. I'll beat the shit out of you and your fat girlfriend, bro. What the fuck? That fat slut. I'll smack her in her face too, bitch. And I'll got him out of dots your entire family. What's your name? You're not doing shit. Shut What's the fuck up. Suck my dick, bro. You a bitch. What's your name? What is going on, bro? First of all, there's two questions I have. There's two questions I have. There's so many questions. I have more than two. Who's watching this? Why are 12 year olds watching this? Why is he beefing with a 12 year old? Why does the 12 year old say such things? And 70,000 people? Yeah, dude. If you believe that actual real 70,000 people are watching this content, you might be the dumbest person. <laughs> you might be as dumb as the people who unironically do click on the stream and watch it, okay? This is why that kind of view botting works, though, by the way. And this is precisely why... This is precisely why uh, that kind of, like, false... Presenting a false reality of, like, acting like cake is actually way more popping than it is by... Uh, blasting all of those fucking Twitter accounts with kick streamers unironically works because there are real people who fall for that shit. They're like, wow, 70,000 people are watching this? Well, I got to check in to see what it's about. Wow, these guys are all over. These guys are all over my Reddit, you know? These guys are all over my Twitter. Maybe there's something going on. Name? What's your name? You fucking pussy. 
All I need is your first name and you're done. I don't care. You know, I'm out of there. I think I'm brain broken. People think actually Norman got destroyed by Mr. Brunei. No, they don't believe it. They're coping. If they believe that they wouldn't be so desperately trying to fucking uh, do opposition research post debate to be like, he see, he's a bad guy and constantly telling everybody how, how much he he won the debate or something. What's your name? What's your, what's your first name, bitch? What's your first name, bitch? Tell me your first name, pussy. I'll give you a Miami. I don't give a fuck if you're 10 years old. I will fuck you in the ass until you fucking bleed, bitch. I swear to God, shut the fuck up, bitch. Okay, that is fucking insane. Censored the kid's name because they said it. At least I think that. We spent the whole stream talking about Gen Z versus millennials when the real scourge is Gen Alpha. No, absolutely. Like, Gen Alpha is also completely out of control. Andrew Tate broke an entire fucking generation straight up by creating clones of himself, basically. Like, all the Tate clones that are still popping. And every single 12 year old, every single iPad kid is like directly tapped into that. Oof. Is so bad. If that was their name, I'm not sure, but regardless, I'll just play it safe. Anyway, you can see Neon blow a gasket there and have a conniption, so he goes into this, like, shit-talking mode against someone who's clearly trolling him. It's also clear that it is legitimately a toddler. That kid is probably not older than 10. I think Neon hit the nail on the head. That is probably an actual 10-year-old he is saying those things to. And he caught a ban, and everyone's like, it's the end of Neon! Neon's been wiped off the platform, thank goodness, the Scourge, it's, it's gone. And even other kick streamers who don't like him, which is like every streamer in the world, because no one really likes Neon, they were like, oh, thank goodness, he was such a bad look for the platform. And there yeah. were a handful- Yeah, there's- What is the good look for the platform? The good look for the platform are the streamers that, like, don't necessarily advertise as much that they're on that platform in general, and are just trying to get the bag, I think. The ones you don't know are actually streaming there, but are actually streaming there are probably the good look for the platform. Like, there are people that I like that stream on that platform, right? I think, like, uh, you know, Your Rage is another uh, another person that streams on Kick. He got the bag. He got the deal. And I, you know, the only unproblematic Kick streamer I can name is Jojo the Movo. See, like, yeah, Jojo's great. Uh, I didn't even know he streamed on Kick. There you go. Full of disgruntled neon enthusiasts because believe it or not, he does have some legitimate fans and supporters. And they asked for their parents' permission to use the crayons so they could write a letter to Kick to unban their favorite goober. But for some reason, I'm people still haven't recognized that just like diamonds, Kick streamers are forever on that platform. He wasn't permanently banned, and I don't know why people thought he was. So he just got unbanned. 15 minutes ago, as of making this video. As I said he would on stream, when people were just spamming me about like, wow, did you see Neon got banned? And as I said then, I said it's either gonna be a 24 hour or 72 hour ban, and guess what? It was a 72 hour ban, just like everything else on that platform. So he's already back. It wasn't even 72 hours really, this amounts to less than a slap on the wrist. This was like the lightest little pat on the keister here. I like to provide one little comical bonus nugget here, a little tidbit of lore. Neon is so incredibly annoying that even the CEO of Kick couldn't hide his dislike for this annoying douchebag. Holy fuck, can someone ban the word Neon? I, we don't give a fuck about Neon right now. Listen, big shout out to all people who give, like, talk or, you know, do streaming on Kick, but, like, come on. You can find the full clip floating around there where he gives more context about the Neon situation and how he's, like, not part of the ban team or anything like that, but... It doesn't matter, because very clearly he gets so annoyed by the pestering buzzing from Neon and his fans that he just snaps from it and he's like, holy fuck, can we just ban this word from the chat at this point? And that just gave me a hearty belly laugh. Not even the CEO of the platform vibes with this guy or his community. He is so unbelievably unlikable that everyone in all corners, even on kick, celebrated when he was gone for those two or three days. So yeah, he's back though. Uh, again, no one stays banned on Kick. Very, very, very fucking rarely does that happen. So I just wanted to talk about this because Kick bans aren't real. They're just very slight suspensions. And I really wish we'd do away with the word ban when it comes to this. Just call it what it is. A little suspension. That's it. Nothing more. So yeah, that's really about it. See ya. I think people will yell at him now and like debate Lord over the debate Lord over the fucking statement. That he used, like, oh, well, Twitch doesn't ban people either, but they call it a ban. Yeah. And I think, like, they'll make it seem like uh, he was just defending Twitch and, like, shitting on cake. When, like, I think he's saying across the board, it should not be 
uh, called a band when it's not a real band. Oh, your recommended vids are insane. I mean, this is my, this is, I don't watch YouTube off stream. So it's not that crazy that these are my recommended vids. Uh, my shirt says, get in. It says, get in. We're doing a coup. America's favorite hobby. And then this is the back. Good girl. New merch, baby. New merch. No release date yet. All right, let's watch the To Catch a Kick Predator. I, I uh, didn't want to watch it for the longest time because I feel like it's, like, too gruesome. But let's X do it. user, whatever you want to call it. And here's him about to get a girl that's clearly, let's say, not of age to expose herself live on his stream. But before we get there, let me tell you about a website called Kick. Kick is a live streaming competitor to Twitch, started by these three dudes, one of them being a live streamer named Trainrex, who left Twitch to start Kick because of their inconsistent policies. Now, Kick is fairly new. Damn. This dude, this dude came at it with, like, deep lore. I'm actually kind of shocked that he's even talking about the inconsistencies of Twitch that Trainrex was talking about. The fact that he knows that is wild. I really, really am shocked because most people don't know that. I know that because I lived through it. You know what I mean? I, I experienced it. This guy is definitely, yes, he is tapped in. He is locked in. And more lenient on what you can and can't do on Maybe it. a content warning in the header. I already gave a content warning in the fucking title. Suck my dick. Immediately. You didn't say do a content warning because you genuinely think that we should do a content warning. You said it because you want to fucking come across like a guy who's really fucking woke. Don't do it. Don't try to woke scold me. Okay, you can't out woke me. I'm the woke king. I've done that once. You're so right. Everyone has done that. There is like this very real. There is this very real interest to be like, you know, I bet you didn't see this angle, but you probably should cover your bases. Sometimes it's like genuine or at least parts motivated by genuine interest to like save me, quote unquote. Okay, but in, in a lot of instances, it's just like you trying to be like, I caught something that you probably didn't realize. It's also like the same energy as immediately uh, knowing what the person's like preferred pronouns are and coming in here and being like, uh, it's actually they, them, by the way, when like, then we look into the person's preferred pronouns and they literally have like they, she, her, you know what I mean? All. And it's like, oh, okay. So you just wanted to say it. You wanted to, you wanted to be woke. You just wanted to fucking, you know, talk about it. Well, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's just like a subtle thing that I do get triggered by because I'm a fucking content creator in this space, in the leftist space, and it's just like very frustrating. But anyway, it's all good. Let's do it. Let's continue. Man. That's why some of the most controversial figures have made Kick their new home. Giving Kick this persona of being the place for the troublemakers, the rebels, the place for free speech where anyone can say anything and anything can happen. Hey, even people in my field, some Omi TV and Omegle creators have also moved over to Kick. Also, Omi TV is an Omegle alternative that everyone's been using since the original Omegle shutdown. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna call it Omegle because it's basically Omegle 2.0. But let me paint you a picture. Creators on YouTube that live stream Omegle content have to cover the screen because it's always unpredictable what you're going to see on there. Not going to lie, some of the things you see on Omegle could get your channel terminated just like that. It gives you a little bit of a perspective on how Kick operates. All right, now let's talk about Riot LOL. When you first enter Riot in a bunch of- Nobody gives a fuck what some Nepo baby like you thinks about shit, you fucking commie. <laughs> That's a good one. I know, man. I'm sorry that your favorite content creators are out there like trying to diddle kids on fucking live streams and shit. <laughs> My bad, bro. These kick creators live streams. You get a warning saying you must be. I also don't really understand why the fuck you're here if nobody gives a shit about what I have to say about shit. Okay. I don't watch kick. I just think you're a douche. Okay. Re-examine why you think I'm a douche. Maybe re-examine your own worldview. Look at what I believe in. Look at what I advocate for. And then, I don't know, get better, seek help. Because, you know, in a lot of instances, it's just like about your own delusions, okay? But I love you, and I want you to be good. You're literally wearing an anti-American hoodie with Chinese writing on it? That's your, that's your anger? Well, I made this hoodie, by the way. You know who made this hoodie? Here, here's a good way. First of all, it's not Chinese, but that's really funny that you said that. It's Japanese, but it's okay, okay? I'm going to tell you something. This hoodie 
was made by American unionized factory workers. This hoodie was printed with union hands. Do you understand? As a content creator who cares about American workers a lot, workers all around the world, but certainly a lot about American workers, I put my money where my mouth is. You only use your mouth to do this. Chirp, chirp, chirp, chirp, chirp. And you feed into your fucking delusions. So go back to your favorite content creators that are fucking serving you $45 t-shirts made for one singular dollar from some Indonesian factory, okay, with that markup that doesn't have the Chinese writing on it, okay? I love that he did personally hit the... (laughs) What kind of Chinese is that? (laughs) Be 18 or older to view this content. Keep that in the back of your mind going forward for the rest of this video. Fair warning, this is going to get very serious very quickly. And I definitely understand if you want to sit this one out. But here we go. Riot live streams for three to seven hours every single night sometimes even longer. His content consists of just trying to find girls on Omegle. Like it's literally the main focus of his content for hours on end. And after going through dozens of his VODs, you start to notice a pattern. Hey. Now, hello, t- my name's Omar, uh, nice to meet you. Um, Hi, Omar. Nice to meet you, t- where are you from? T- t- hello, t- t- oh my, t- t- hello, t- t- my name's Omar, nice to meet you, t- t- where are you from? T- all right, let me tell you uh, where I'll take you on a date. Let me know if it hits. All right, uh, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. So I'll pick you up, and then we'll get some, we'll get some sushi. Uh, we get some sushi. We get sushi. We'll get sushi. All right, and then I don't, I don't really fuck with like boring dates. You know what I'm saying? They gotta be like fun, right? Not awkward, not corny. I don't like the boring dates. I don't get it. Is he rizzing up children in this? Like, is that what's going on? I can't believe I said rizzing up and then followed that up with children. But I feel like that is what's going on. That is insane. That is also not just insane, but illegal. Why is it that so many things, so many things that are posted on Kick and also on Twitter that are objectively illegal to do or to even consume or to even have possession of like child sexual abuse material specifically when we're talking about fucking Twitter, okay? Why is it that this shit is permissible? You are not even like supposed to be quote unquote canceled. You are supposed to be canceled by the federal government, okay? For doing what is known as a crime. We are not talking terms of service. We are talking rules and restrictions and regulations in the criminal code. Okay? What the fuck is happening? That is crazy. PUA is just as toxic and disgusting and criminal when Gen Alpha does it. You know, where it just feels like unorganic and it's just like cringy and awkward. So I like to do something to break the ice. Oh, probably like a carnival. Carnival. Carnival? A carnival. Okay, so like play some games, ride some rides, you ride me, and then um, and then like I'll win you a cute bear. He tries to quote unquote riz up these girls by saying the same lines over and over again, just so that he can eventually get their Snapchats, so that he can build up his Snapchat roster. Dude, my roster is actually nice. No, no, no, no, no. And that's it. That's his content. Is what I thought until I saw this interaction. He started the conversation off by doing the same old shtick. The more they talked, the more the girl was opening up to him, telling him about a toxic and abusive ex she had. I'm gonna spare you the details. And let me remind you, she has no idea that she's saying this in front of a live stream full of hundreds of people. And the worst part is that she seemed very out of it. She was slurring her words, jumping from one conversation to the next, pausing in the middle of talking just to examine the room while blinking. So that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, anyway. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, nothing. And after that, she told Riot that she was dr- by someone at a concert that night. Can I tell you something? I was uh, at a festival, but no, I, not at a festival, but at a at a concert, you know, Foo Fighters? They, they came in my, and where I live right now. This guy, he came to me and he gave me this kind of cake. He, he said like, hey, take these, you're gonna feel so good. So I ate them with my friends, but I ate one completely. There was wood in this f***ing sh- uh. I still feel f***ed up. And really, yeah, 
Whatever. But the entire time she was saying all that, Riot was constantly looking at the kick chat. And all they were saying was, Z, Z, Z, Z, Z. She's yapping like crazy. She's hot, but talks too much. Omar doesn't even seem amused. And after seeing all of those comments, it sparks Riot to say this. All right, dude, listen. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I can't do this anymore, bro. The curiosity is just f***ing like, it's like spinning in the back of my head. It's killing me. Like, dude, listen. Let's let's go. Fit check. Come on. Spit check. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. That's like enough talking, bro. I'm like, uh, I'm like about to fall asleep. Yeah, let's go. I don't want to get too Wait, it's like getting so hot in my room, you know? So, uh, you know, I'm shirtless. Your shirt is on. This is a really tough situation, you know? He proceeds to cover the screen. We should get on the same page here, you know? Can mm -hmm. I see your t <laughs> Like, <laughs> What am I doing now? Because I'm f***ing high that I'm doing that, but it's so f***ing embarrassing. Like, uh, set it up. I'm what? Let me see. Damn. Holy <laughs> I mean, you should do it a fat ass, right? I mean, like, at this point, can I, like, you know, can I see it? And then the audio goes silent for a few minutes. And then he comes back and does this. Bang! I'm the GOAT. Join the Discord, boys. I wish there was a way I could, like, cut out my version, because, like, I'm not going to lie, chat. Oh, God, I was about to risk it all. I, I get done around here, boys. Is that fire? I'm not going to lie. That was the baddest girl I've ever bagged. What you just witnessed is the main reason why I'm making this video. He goes on Omegle just to get girls to expose themselves so that he can secretly screen record it and post it onto a Discord server under an NSFW channel. That is his content. And it's all done live on Kick. And the worst part is, that was an example of a girl that's of age. We are six minutes and 39 seconds into this fucking video, and I'm already of the mindset that despite everything I've said about rehabilitation, I'm like going back on my stance on capital punishment, just taking a lot out of me not to say these words, you know what I mean? Like, I still believe that capital punishment is unethical, but it is hard for me to, to keep that energy throughout this entire process. This is one of the most insane things I've ever fucking watched. Here's one. That's not overall team, and I didn't spend a single. Pa oh my! Oh my God! My so like out. What the hell? Yeah, like I mean, like why are they not more out? Is the real question. I mean, like what time is it? You know, it's already demon hours. Kid, wait, listen. How old are you? I'm 19. Oh, I'm 16. <laughs> you said 18? Yeah, yeah. He has this little trick that he likes to do. It's kind of a manipulation tactic where he goes like, "You're 18, right?" As if he's gonna magically turn this kid into an adult, but uh. Last time I checked, that's just not how that works. You said 18? Bro, this is so, like, everything he's doing is criminal. You guys understand this, right? Like, every single thing that we have seen is prosecutable, okay? Taking advantage of a, a clearly inebriated person, recognizing that the person that he's talking to is underage, and then, uh, and then you know, trying to get around that by faking that they are 18 like this is this is a serialized revenge porn child sexual abuse material discord server that he's operating and the operation is happening in real time okay in front of a live audience he is procuring child sexual abuse material in real time and then distributing it I don't think you guys understand maybe, or maybe many of you already do understand it. He doesn't understand that. This is so unimaginably immoral, which everyone kind of gets, I hope, but also unimaginably illegal. Like, like the most illegal. This is the one thing that like, no matter what your ideology is, like you agree that this is like the most fucked up thing. How? This is the second time I've seen this now. The first time was with that Dom Lucre guy, if you remember, the QAnon dude on Twitter who Elon literally personally restored his account after Dom Lucre posted child sexual abuse material with his own watermark on it, which is, again, just criminal. It's, it's completely, unimaginably gross and inhumane, and yet the possession of such material is what landed many people in prison, this notorious CSAM uh, uh, 
video of like torturing a baby or a child or something, if I recall correctly, is is what landed Josh Duggar, I think, in prison for even simply having the possession of it. Okay? That infamous video was posted on Twitter by Dom Lucre and was up for a little bit and then immediately taken down and he was banned. Elon literally restored his account. Elon restored Dom Lucre's account personally. Now, obviously, obviously, the fact that Elon restored that account is insane, right? Totally, understandably. But what's also crazy, and remember, this is the same Elon that also took down a Twitter thread detailing Stone, the Stone Toss, a cartoonist who's a Nazi. They took that shit down real quick. That wasn't allowed to be posted on the on the uh, on on on the website anyway however however it's not even just it's not even just Elon restored that person's account the fact that Dom Lucre is not in prison is insane okay the fact that he's not in prison is insane because every single other person that has had possession of this CSAM has gone to prison for the possession of child sexual abuse material it is the law. This motherfucker is still posting on Twitter. How is that allowed? How is that a possibility that, like, no one knocked on his fucking door? They'll be like, hold up. You watermarked that shit? Which implies that it was in your possession, and you watched it, and then you literally put your fucking logo on it? How did you procure this uh, uh, unholy demon-like uh, piece of content, sir? How did you how did you find this? Why did you distribute it to millions of people in the unrestricted platform of, of Twitter? These are questions that I do not understand. Are the only people that are actually going after like child porn the, the fucking YouTubers who themselves are weird as fuck? Like how what's happening here? Is that the only people like has law enforcement just dropped it completely? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. You're 18, yeah? Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. So, um, I don't see an issue here. And just like before, he proceeds to cover the screen. It's like, uh, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. It looks really hot in your room. Like, you need to, like, oh. like take anything off or, like, uh, damn. Holy. Yeah. Wait, can you, like, can you, like, shake him a little bit? Damn. Dude, out of my Snapchat. I'm not going to lie. Holy f You're bad. All right. Okay. You out of my Snapchat. Please tell me you out of me, my Snapchat. I'm going to right after all right, you. All right, all right, all right. All right, bro, peace. Good night. And when he comes back... Oh, my God. <laughs> chat, you said she was 18. Here y'all on for? Nah, chat, I'm not going to lie. That was a fucking dub. I got, like, two clips of them. Bro, like, she just, like, took off her shirt. We were just vibing. Like, ha, uh, well, like, I didn't even know. Nah, that was crazy, chat. Holy f that's like i'm not even trolling the best dub i've gotten yet all right chat it's in there it's in there join the discord let me know if they're w fire or mid or bro there are there are motherfuckers in jail still to this day for like marijuana possession how is this dude breathing the free man's air he just he he he he made cp live in front of a live audience and he's selling it to his like to the people that that join his is discord server what the fuck he's not even hiding it is that what it is is that why we're like oh well no one would fucking no one would do this publicly i'm sure it's not real or something what yeah they were nice right go look at the discord we just got a huge dub i could have brought that I, honestly dude chat if i wasn't streaming i could have got that to do everything chat like dude everything bro there's no care no remorse to him it's just content when in reality what he just did is, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, possession and distribution of CP. All done live on kick. And to all the weirdos out there that are like, well, the age of consent is actually 16. Um, I got two answers for you. Riot, who is based in Miami, as he publicly states on his profile. By the way, I want to mention something here. But what he's doing, right, even if the victims weren't minors, is still deeply unethical and also definitely still illegal. It constitutes revenge porn, distribution of revenge porn, just so you guys understand. Like, the victims being underage actually is making it infinitely worse, but everything that he is doing, every single thing that he's fucking doing, 
even if every single woman that he's talking to were, were, were women and not like little girls would still very much be a crime. Like all of this is a crime. Every part of this is a crime. And also on his streams, the age of consent there is 18. And regardless of the Romeo and Juliet laws, where in some states 16 is the age of consent, 18 is the age for pornographic material in all states. So any age under 18 is CP. And it doesn't matter if the girl takes them and sends them. It is still CP. And two, if you really want to be on that age of consent is 16 thing, uh, well, just roll the clip. I like your glasses. I mean, they're fake as f but they look good on you. Are you nearsighted or farsighted? Far. Okay. Um, That's good then. So like when we're up close, like you went in for a kiss, like you want like headbutt me or some dumb you know? Alright, you're actually really pretty though. You're like wifey material. I'll take you on a date, you know? I'm not gonna lie. Alright, rate that date. One through ten. It's ten? Wait, how old are you? Oh my god. You're gonna skip if I tell you my I mean like you're eighteen, right? <clears throat> Wait, say your age. You're gonna skip though. Would you say your age? Okay, so I'm gonna. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um. Hey, cops. I promise. Like, I swear, age is just a number. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you again. Okay. I'm 19. How old are you? 18. You're 18. Nod your head if you're 18. All right. Uh. You know. What the fuck? I mean, he's just like very. Uh, wait. He continued. There's no even. There's no interest in self-preservation. There's no interest in self-preservation here at fucking all, by the way. Like, he, he's just, I'm, I've moved beyond the inhumanity of the, of the operation in and of itself because I've seen it for the past 10 minutes. And now I'm also shocked about how, like, unaware he is and how fucking stupid he is. Like, no interest in self-preservation whatsoever, dog. All right, can I get, like, a fit check? All right. Like, yeah, he didn't even skip. He kept it going. Like, the fuck? Bro, I'm... Dude, every single day, I am more reaffirmed in my original position that if Jeffrey Epstein was, like, anti-woke and had a fucking kick stream, motherfuckers will be talking about Free My Boy all day, every day. Okay? If Jeffrey Epstein was an anti-woke warrior with a fucking kick stream... And a Twitter account talking about Illuminati pedophiles and whatnot. Everyone literally will be like, dude, he is the goat, okay? I don't think you understand. He rizzes up these 15-year-olds, bro. You just don't have that riz like that. You just don't get it. Like, that's crazy. He's changed my life, dude. You don't understand. He changed my life in meaningful ways. He caught me to he got me to go to the gym and shit. He told me that at the top of the hour there isn't a three-minute ad break, but there was one. But then he told me, don't worry. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. I'll save you from the top of the hour ad break. That fit check shit he's doing, by the way, is just a uh, way for him to get uh, get a look at her body and see her ass. Yeah, I mean, I, I got that, yes. There's 34 minutes of this, Les. Who, he knows what he's doing. He even mentioned the cops. I'm a Trump supporter, anti-woke, and I think this is disgusting. Me and you can agree on this. I'm with the son on this one. The, the guy who was like talking about them Chinese letters on my hoodie. Even he's on board. Okay, thank God. Anyway, here's the three-minute ad break now. Right. I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, I'm a really transparent guy. I just kind of, like, skip all the bullshit, you know, because it's like, nah, it's just like a waste of time. To be honest, can you just, like, okay, when you stood up, I was really only looking at one thing, to be honest. Uh, can you just, like, show me awesome show shit? I know it sounds crazy, but if you think about it, this could lead into something great, you know? I'm not on here. I do that. Word. Damn. All right, then. Well, I mean, like, wait, why not? Not, like, right away. All right, well, let's, let's just wait a second. All right, so, you know, it's been, like, not right away, and the curiosity is just... I told you once that I believe that the only thing keeping a lot of men away from underage girls is the law, and you called me a fem cell for it. If you think this person resembles the average male, then, yeah, that is some fem cell shit. Like, that's crazy. This is, like a uniquely evil person please do not think that all men are like this what the fuck or most men even like if you think this is a normal guy i don't know what to tell you that like this is the type of shit this is literally the type of shit that like even bad people would be like this is fucked up as a matter of fact many bad people literally directly position themselves as like anti-pedophiles in an effort to make themselves look good okay like th this is fucking 
completely out of control evil shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. This is what it like. Oh, can I, I just shoot, this, bro? Like real. Shit. Yeah, that game was cool. What All right. Chad, that's that's that's the shit I do for you guys, bro. This man pressured a 15-year-old to flash for them. His viewers that for some reason want to see that. Also, we have no idea how old Riot's viewers are behind the screen. So they could be a bunch of toddlers or a bunch. Bro, by the way, that's the other part of this that I forgot to mention. Like those guys would also go to prison. Like the, the viewers are also doing engaging in illegal activities. Like every single person on that discord server whether they're like, like, unless they're, I guess, you know, law enforcement, they're literally operating in a, and, and there's no other way to put this, a child pornography ring. They are literally engaging in a, a CP ring. That's what they're doing. I wonder how that would work. Can the viewers also be charged? Yes. If you are, especially if you're like, especially, first of all, nah, nah, he deleted the, he deleted the channel. No evidence, baby. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. First of all, everything is logged online. That's crazy. And secondly, law enforcement would go to Discord and should go to Discord. Here's how you would investigate this. Law enforcement goes to Kick. Kick doesn't cooperate because it's like operated out of the fucking Cayman Islands and his Kick as a as an institution operates out of Australia. So there's that. Um so I, I mean like there is a there's an end point to like how much cooperation they can enforce here. But beyond that, beyond that, Discord, on the other hand, is an American company. So what should happen in this situation is law enforcement goes after the Discord because it is an out and about active uh, uh, like a like a CP ring and then individually prosecute every single person involved in the Discord server. Yeah, that is a financial transaction for CP. It is Omega illegal. This is like such a layup case too. I mean, this is like this. This is the coffeezilla of of exposing uh, CP distributors. Basically, this video is like when coffeezilla goes after like a like a financial criminal and basically gift wraps that fucking investigation for uh, the the proper agencies. This basically is the same shit. This is easy buckets for any fucking, any DA, any, any law enforcement agency, easy buckets. Bunch of grown adult men, which is concerning in so many ways, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Riot streams for hundreds of people every single night who, let's be honest, are only there for one thing and one thing only, the girls, not the creator. The girls. If you remove the aspect of girls from more than half of these kick creators, they would have no content. They would not know what to do. Therefore, their views would go down. Besides being an absolute annoyance in society and doing or saying the most controversial things just to get their five seconds of fame on Twitter for the day, if they're not doing any of that, well, there better be a girl on the screen because then these talentless creators would have nothing. Now, it's one thing to work with these creators, which I don't know why you would do that to each their own. But it's one thing to work with these creators by collabing or doing these e-date streams that a lot of them love to do. But it's another thing to not even know that the explicit stuff that you did for someone was being live streamed secretly screen recorded and posted elsewhere on the internet. And I would add an additional level of fear if you are a child having all this happen to you. What I've shown you are three examples from Riot Stream, each interaction only lasting around five to 15 minutes. He streams for three to seven hours a night and he's been doing this for five plus months now. So it's safe to say that there's multiple girls. Actually, no, I'm gonna say it, multiple victims that right now don't know they don't know that they were on his streams riot has yo someone just said something really interesting here in the chat too to think that like the american congress is like we gotta ban tiktok that's wild to me that's wild it's a free political win for some da in florida i mean not even fucking florida this is like federal this is a federal sex trafficking investigation i mean uh, uh not a sex trafficking investigation, or a CP investigation, CP ring investigation. It has 
most likely international victims as well. It's not just victims in the United States. There are, I saw, the correct term is CSAM, not CPFYI. I know, I've been going in and out of both, okay? I know. I know what the fucking correct term is. I've been using it. Jesus Christ, dude. Come on. Do I strike you as the type of person who is like anti-sex work and conflates sex trafficking with real sex work between consenting adults? I'm colloquially utilizing something that people understand because it's like the most popular terminology for it. That is precisely the reason why I'm swapping between CSAM, child sexual abuse material, and CP. Oof. Anyway. Lots of connections and knows a lot of kick streamers. Slowly trying to grow his audience bigger and bigger on kick's platform. He's even started to get recognized on Omegle. Wait, wait, wait, wait. You know me? You watch my streams? And what strikes me about kick streamers is their sense of humor. When I meet girls in person, I get nervous and sh How do I get better? You gotta just push yourself. You gotta like, be like, oh sh now it's time. To if it gets really bad, just get the release. No, you, what the f I thought that's where you're going with that. Do we get married? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Don't I make me you use the please. Like, I, I ran out of them. Like, let's just make this easy, okay? Since I'm like famous on fans, would you like I'm to hop on? Roofie. You know, we make a... Uh, Cool little movie. Yeah, absolutely not. I yeah. just ran out of rupees, okay? Like, let's just make this nice and easy. Where the f*** is my sleepover invite? She burned it. It's okay, I was gonna slip in while you're sleeping either way. Hold on. <laughs> I accidentally rupeed you. Nah, I'm tweaking, bro. You think I actually beat one? <laughs> That's f***ing weird. Like, to make a joke about, like, someone beating women? Like, you know, like, that's weird. Stop being soft, bro. It's a f joke. I'm not soft. All I'm saying is it's a little weird. I mean... Yeah, no... All dark humor is weird, but that's the funny in it. So what was I supposed to say if beating a woman doesn't really, like- No, I'm saying we were f with you. We played some class f***ery on you. It was funny, because we were sitting on a call, he saw me talking to you because I was screen sharing. So I was like, dude, just f*** with her. Like, and then, yeah. And but then, I don't know. He labels this as dark humor. Where's the joke? It's especially concerning when you are actively trying to Build a community as an influencer. And this is how you influence your audience. If you guys want, honestly, the script that will work a thousand times out of ten, it will never fail. No matter on the girl, the situation, no anything. This textbook Riz, it works every time. You grab a little, um, I'm not going to say it. You curry that into a cup and you just give it to her, you know? And then from there, it's cake. I'm kidding. Holy that was crazy. He's so comfortable saying this every single night on his streams that it legitimately gets me concerned about any girl that gets remotely near him. He also has a private Discord server for any person that makes clips from portions of his kick streams and posts them to TikTok. Hey, by the way, Chad, if you do not know, I have this Discord where we chill off stream. It's called Out the Hood, okay? We put, um, so it's just like my mods and a whole bunch of clippers. It's where I literally, I end stream, I go in there and we just kick it. We just do like, I'll do like Omi Discord stream. Dreams are crazy. You gamble a little bit. So if you want in the Discord, you... This is literally everything I've warned and everything I've talked about with respect to Kick and so much more. He's literally doing the Andrew Tate scheme. He's trying to get people to clip and ship this shit to TikTok and create more relevance for himself to build out his Discord CP ring. He gambles to final straw. No, man. This is where anti-woke motherfuckers go. This is like, this is the the top tier of griftonomics. Be anti-woke, like try to fucking uh, manipulate women into, uh, uh, you know, offering you uh, sexual material and girls in the, his case, right? Like little girls. Teach people how to riz up women, make anti-woke jokes. All of this shit. You were so fucking right about Kick. Holy shit. You said all of this a year ago. You said this would happen. You predicted that Kick would degenerate into this shit. You told Train to be careful to not let Kick go down this path. You were so fucking right. Yeah. Go back and watch the debates I had with XQC and with Train. Go back and listen to the conversations that I had when he was building out Kick and promoting it and presenting. It. And I said, look, I do personally love the idea of more competition in the live streaming space. I, however, will tell you that no terms of service or a loose terms of service will lead you down a platform 
that is filled to the brim with fucking pedophiles and Nazis. I said it. And everybody fucking yelled at me for saying that. Just like I said back then that Kick was utilizing AWS and IVS and could not exist without Amazon making money off of it. And everyone yelled at me about that shit too. And we're like, Hassan, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, no, like Kick is going to take over. I was like, no, it won't. Because it needs, it needs Amazon to exist. It does not have its own web hosting platform. It doesn't even have its own tools to do a live streaming, uh, to, to create a live streaming platform. Everyone yelled at me about that shit too. It's crazy. What do you mean? Isn't Kick funded by Gamma Money? Yes, it is. It's funded by Stake, which is an online crypto casino. You know, just make a little TikTok page, post some of my I clips. Each video they get 75k views, I cash up be like 30 bucks. He hypes it up as a place where he can be more relaxed, where he doesn't have to worry about saying or doing the wrong thing on stream. If this is how he acts on Omegle on stream, it scares me to think how he acts on Omegle off stream. He even has a running gag that he and his chat do every single night and these are from one-off occasions where riot tells these girls that he's a streamer wait chat one in the chat if you're smashing two if you're passing someone said three. Oh, three. Oh my yeah. god really bad. Three is that so they like you a lot apparently there's a lot of threes in here what is three i need to know what three is don't worry about it oh my god chat it's just an inside joke don't worry about it three means um think of a word that rhymes with grape oh so I think they like you. Like, they like you a lot. Stop saying three, chat. You want to know what three means? It's f crazy. I don't know how this inside joke started, bro, but what's, like, a word that rhymes with grape? Uh, so everyone uh, spamming three, I think, really likes you, you know? Like, really likes you. Oh, my God, dude. We got to do that three. Damn, that's crazy. He, he cultivated this community. How did this start, I wonder? He trend is crazy, bro. We literally started some. Bruh. I bet most streamers are so confused now because I'm I swear to god I've been opening chats and I've been seeing threes when baddies come up and it the, the streamer doesn't even know what the f it means They spam three for any girl that they think is How is that in any way? Funny, so where is kick in all of this? There is actual criminal activity happening on their platform and they're not doing anything about it. Riot is a verified account on their website, by the way. So I feel like Kick should be quick to notice this. Where is Kick staff members to moderate their site and ban him instantly? Well, luckily there are Kick staff members, but Riot is friends with them. Bro, has Kick on his side? Oh God, I got Andre on my side. Hey, Andre, are you still in the chat? I have a question. All right, Andre, if I had Kick on stream, would I get banned? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Our goal is to keep everyone safe. I agree, man. Chat. Now read the first letter of every word. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Riot is so good with them that he's comfortable doing his brand of humor directly to their face in chat. I'm always on my best Ooh. behavior, Andre, don't worry. Go ahead. Oh, I remember you. Hey, Andre's in my chat, can you shake What? Andre said no. he's no. me. Shake some ass. Quote, word for word. He's me 15, dude. See, like I Yo, Andre, this. really? She's 15. Andre, she's 15. No. What the f Andre, stop asking these girls to get kid. So these are Riot's true colors, and it's all done live every single night on Kick. Now, why would Kick give their stamp of approval to people that think this is funny? Chad, these those are not loyal. Don't ever cuff a girl, okay? Oh my, what's your name? Hey, listen, you're really pretty, but can I talk to the one in the middle? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. Now, I had to blur out who Riot was actually talking about. Because it was a baby, an actual infant. This type of content, this creator, kick as a platform in general. Bro, every fucking moment of this video, I've been like, there's no way he's hit the maximum evil, right? Like he's hit the maximum evil. There's no way, how can this video get worse? How is there like 20 more minutes of this shit? And it's like, what else has he done? Has he killed a child on stream? Is that what happened? Like, what else could he have done? I don't understand it. And then he ups the ante every fucking time. It gets even worse. I don't understand it. Has, in my opinion, gone on for long enough. It has shown itself time and time again to be a platform full of dangerous and harmful people. There are more creators like Riot out there, but that's a story for another day. But in the meantime, 
Let's catch Riot. Cause I have a few questions I would love to ask him. I tried to connect with him on the original Meagle, and this happened. Really, dude. No f***ing way, bro. Now that I got your attention, can I ask you a few questions, man? Yeah, sure. I know that girl, by the way. I saw her before, but yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, man. How, how are you doing? How's the kickstreams doing? Oh, what the f***? Yeah, how's the kickstreams doing? So before I could even get to my main question, he skipped me. So I guess that's it. But do you remember that girl from earlier? The girl who said that she was drugged at a party and Riot still got her to expose herself? Well, I managed to find her on Omegle minutes after her interaction with Riot. And I told her everything about him in his stream. She still seemed clearly out of it. And uh, I couldn't help but feel so terrible for her. She was so easily manipulated. But she told me that if she were to connect with Riot again, that she would give him a piece of her mind. And I'm proud to say that she did that. Dude, why are you still on here? <laughs> okay, first of all, like, I'm not f***ing dumb. What do you mean? I'm not dumb. You know, I was watching your f***ing live, bitch. What? How'd you find my live? <laughs> I found your live. Wait, you how know? though? Oh, you, do you, you like know. it? Are the shoes fire or no? I just want to acknowledge how dumb of a question this is. You just got a girl to unknowingly expose herself in front of a live stream and then have her body put onto a Discord server. How do you think she's going to react? Are the shoes fire or no? Mid, good, shit. You f***ing are a psychopath. Oh, that for real? Yeah, and you shouldn't be doing that. Wait, I don't get it. Hmm, interesting. Now, this is the moment. This is the exact moment that I feel like should be studied by so many human psychologists. Because right now, Riot's brain cannot compute why this girl possibly wouldn't like his streams. He's also trying to figure out who could have possibly have told her that he's a streamer. And in the craziest display of luck and perfect timing, as he's still in this state of confusion, guess who connects with him again? Yo, man. Suavemente. That was the guy? That was the same girl I just saw, bro. Skipped her. And now, everything makes sense to him. He finally connected the dots. And because of that, he proceeds to close Omegle, listen to his Spotify playlist, and plays Fortnite. But during that entire time he's playing Fortnite, he's texting his people. Hey chat, what's that YouTuber's app? The guy that you guys kept saying, you know, I kept skipping him? What's his app? Something about chickens. No, it's not even that. It's just like, I'm not even being entertaining either right now. I'm just, that, that idea I'm just bugging me out, you know? And he ends the stream like this. I'm gonna go clear my head, bro. Like, this is actually bad. Um, and like, it's really, really bad, bro. I'm like, low-key scared. Oh, God. Hello, you guys, okay? Um, I don't think he was confused about why she didn't like his streams. I think he didn't want to let the idea that he's a sociopath, psychopath be a topic on his stream in front of all of his chatters. They're all willfully blind to what they're doing and directly forced him to confront us so we play confused. <sighs> no, I think, yeah, I think he knows he's a bad dude. And I think he knows what he's doing is bad. Otherwise, this would not be repercussions coming for him. He would have never come to the recognition that, like, there will be repercussions coming for him if he never thought what he was doing was wrong. Of course he knows what, he, uh, what he's doing is wrong. Yeah. When the girl was like, you're a sociopath, he, he hit, like, a defensive posture to be like, like, oh, did you like the stream? Like, is it mid? He was just, like, trying to play it off because he, he full well knew that she was going to, quote, unquote, fuck up the vibes. I am in awe, genuinely, of one, how evil a human being can be, but also the fact that how there is no like law enforcement action so far that I have seen on this matter. There are a lot of people like this, especially because it's a it's a monkey see monkey do type situation as well. People people watch dudes like this. People watch dudes like this. They see that this shit is like popping. And then they turn around and make their own version of it. He's literally doing the exact same thing that Andrew Tate did in, in many respects, like the whole Discord farm to, to, you know, pump out your content, all this shit. Yeah. Orbiters become creators in every community. Exactly. And the vibes that he's putting out there, Omega is banned, thank God. Bro, Omega is banned. He's on Omi TV, which is the same shit. This is now a popular genre on Kick. You can see people making this type of content right now. I love you guys. That's all I can say. I'm not gonna rate anyone. I'm just gonna go to bed. Peace out, chat. He proceeds to remove the NSFW channel from his Discord, delete all of his previous stream VODs, and stayed radio silent.
for a few days. All of this happened a while ago, because I was waiting to see if he would change his content in any way. And, uh... No. No, come on. Oh, not dude. at all. He's still... Okay, we're back at it. He is literally, again, not only uniquely evil, but also genuinely stupid. Like, no interest in self-preservation whatsoever. Bro, bro, an animal understands when they are at the precipice of a trap or when they've actually been caught. He's, like, dumber than a fucking... He's dumber than a feral animal. It's actually crazy. Yeah, bro literally does not have object uh, permanence. He actually might be a sociopath, lack of self-preservation. No, sociopaths care about self-preservation. What are you talking about? No, this dude has no, like, this goes beyond that. Like, this is literally just, like, a dude who I think is very stupid. Either masochistic and, like, trying to destroy himself. You're right, but he somehow hasn't been arrested. Yeah, that is, a, that is because of how fucking bad our law enforcement is on this shit tries to seek out girls on Omegle and tries to get their snaps. He still asks these girls to pop one, but now he just doesn't have an NSFW channel to put it in. It's just for his eyes only. As if that makes it any better. Alright, can I see your I'm gonna hide screen, hold on. On God, on God I hit it, on my life, look. See? I swear to God. His chat needs to frequently remind him to ask the girls their age before getting into inappropriate questions. It's bad when you never- <laughs> Hey, maybe like remind me like you guys never remind me to check the age you have one job I always look at trap. All you have to do is just remind me, but you never do it, bro But alas, here's him talking to a 17 year old connecting with this girl on Omegle. Oh, sorry was... You look like the dude from Victoria sec. Oh, you could be my Jade. So how old are you? I'm 17 Gulp. Yeah, FBI, I swear I'm innocent. I didn't do for real, hold on. I'm looking something up. Um, but pronunciation from like Netflix. Having a long and in. Wait. Looking something up. Um, but pronounce. Bro, I need to see if when he typed age of consent. Wait. These are former. For Bro! These are former Google search histories! Age of consent in Missouri, age of consent in Oregon, age of consent in Canada. Bro's Google history, bro. His Google search. History, bro. The best streaming bot. What the fuck is that, bro? He typed in A and Jove Consent Oregon came up immediately. Bro typed A into the search bar and Jove Consent in Oregon came up first. That is insane. That that is his autofill from A. Like, it's not Amazon. He typed in A, and it's not Amazon. Let's see. Yeah, here. <laughs> Abba and Pre. Yeah, remember I was trying to show it to fucking... What's his face yesterday? Uh, Mike? APAC picture with Chuck Schumer? Yeah, my fucking uh, Google searches are so stupid. But, regardless, porn? I don't, I don't watch porn on my work computer, and when I do on my fap top, it's still not. Uh, I watch Incognito. Y'all are dumb. Patrick Bet David is my porn. Okay, all jokes aside, let's get back to the very serious, not joking video. <clears throat> the pronunciation from like Netflix. Having a long and inappropriate conversation with her. Our babies would be cute. <laughs> I could allow you just went there. Yeah, just, you just jumped it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck a first date. How many bodies do you have? Another way you can get your ass fatter is um i heard squats on my face did you have snap or just ig yeah i also got snap you know i was actually born with like a superpower for real what's your superpower okay i can guess any girl's bra size i don't want to make it like sexual but like go like this wait so okay. you're, you're you're a virgin too dude you have to come to america i'm not gonna lie i live in miami so you would love it all right you're a virgin but like hypothetically if you weren't what do you think would be your favorite position that's got to be like top 10 things that i'm gonna text her bro this is international he's now internationally a criminal you're on delivered Actually, her tits are my phone, pal. Even adding her on Discord, and this is a rare case where he told her about his streams, and she became a regular appearance on his streams for a while, continuing to talk sexually. They talked all the time. What did you say? He's really attractive in guys, to, so I can make up for it? Here you go. Beeline. Is there, is there a trust? You'll see it on Snap tonight, I promise. I'm gonna fly you out, bro. On God, I'm flying you out. Because, um, I'm not gonna lie, the shit you were uh, saying last night was uh, very, very convincing. What are the odds... You would actually let me fly you out. When I'm 18. He knows I'm 17. Why do they know? Why do they know what? No, they say you saw my 17 year old tip, which is not true. 
Oh yeah, no. I'm trolling by the way. I'm just kidding. Deleted three chats? What did you delete? Oh the Oh those Wait chat, I'm not hopefully this is still in our saved it was something you said. Hold on. You don't care if I show like it's just words, it doesn't really matter. Don't stop it. Don't you right in the fing chat! I'm not gonna say what I sent, but uh yo, can I call yeah. you out? You know why you can't right now, but it's not legal to say your chest. Yo! She didn't mean it like that, chat. She's Why'd you just say that, bro? They're gonna be on my They're always on your dick. Can you be on my dick? And if anyone raised any concern about the age, here's his response. Chat, listen, bro. I don't give a f bro. Listen, I'm not promoting anything weird. I'm just saying this, okay? F you if you think it's weird. You're just a fucking American like hick. Like on God, you guys are retarded. <laughs> he just. Bro, bro, bro said, actually, you guys are American hicks for not understanding how sick it is to try to fuck a minor. That is insane. This is like international. This is an international crime. He is trying to fly a minor to fuck a minor. And he literally turned around and was like, y'all don't fuck with that. You must be a dumb hick. Does yeah. He must be a French philosopher. Doesn't care. Chat, bro, she's gone. I'm just gonna fucking... Dude, one day, bro, I'm gonna fly her out. And you're fucking... Oh my god. And there's even more examples. <gasps> Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Wow. Like, I, I like you uh, a lot. How old are you? Please be 18 or above. I'm praying. I hate to disappoint, but I'm 17. Wait, I'm 20. How old did you say you were? I'm 17. What? Your mic is lagging. How old are you? Oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm 18. Oh, it worked. You're 18? Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. minor, uh, I'm getting to your size for real. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I try and guess your size? Okay, go like this. So, can I give you my Snapchat? All right, listen. This is going to be good, okay? You know, high five. I grabbed your t Oh, my God. All right. All right. You know, I love you, okay? Doodles. Silva, was that crazy? She's 18. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't crazy at all. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what you guys are yapping about, to be honest. See, everything about Riot completely baffles me. Because he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's done. He manipulates these girls to unknowingly do whatever he wants on his streams. And my brain can't wrap around why he would do this. And then I reminded myself, all the evidence is in your VOD. You told me why you do this. You told everyone. In a stream you did with Zerka, who is the most controversial person to work with. But later, in that exact same stream, Zerka added Nick Fuentes. Yes. That Nick Fuentes. But I'm getting sidetracked. In that. Sh I'm sorry. What the fuck is going on? What is happening? What? Why? Why? My worlds are fucking colliding. These are like. Bro. Bro. This is the pedophile Nazi Avengers, dude. This is Avengers Endgame of like. The only one thing that fucking traces these four figures to work with these these figures is like questionable takes on age of consent laws and also hating me. Like, I don't know about this guy. Obviously, later, I have no fucking idea. But this is literally like my, my villains stream, like literally my my villains in the worst blunt rotation of all time. This is a gallery of people who fucking the one guy missing from this. Equation is like destiny. What the fuck? Bro is building the Suicide Squad. And Andrew Tate. Yeah, put Andrew Tate, Aiden Ross, and Destiny in there. But I don't even think Aiden Ross fucking has like... I don't even think Aiden Ross goes there with the Age of Consent shit. He might. I don't know. He does his own very fair share of psychopathic nonsense. Aiden defended Riot? I go lie. Listen, I'm gonna just be honest, bro. My boy right here did not do anything wrong. Bro, the other guy, no, no, no, listen. Let me speak. She was 24 years old. She's a grown woman. She knew what flash her right. titties online will get her. Like, and AR Loyal sent it to her parents like they're supposed to. She yo. deserved it because she was a whore. Yo. There. Yo. <laughs> Yeah, he gave me my protein bar. That other nigga, he actually did some. some, some what did the right guy do? No, that, that guy, yeah, he's, he's a weirdo. Yeah, he that, like he's before. he's supposed to be fucked. Oh really? Yeah, he's he's weird. Like usually, you know how a monkey when a girl be like fifteen, we skip automatically. He, he that, says, bro, he'll be like, say you're eighteen. I'm like, <laughs> Yo, oh. no and way. He'll just say, Pop, Yo, show your tits. Oh right, yeah, that's like, he. That nigga was wild from God. Like, oh, yeah, God yeah. He was. Like, okay, that's crazy. Now look, for real though, tee up all my ancestors, bro. All my life. 
Batgirl's 24. She flashed on the streamers before. Y'all clipped it and made him look crazy. I watched him and Jordan were sitting there like, yeah, what the fuck? Y'all made Citrus look like he was some type of predator. Nah, y'all, it was just that one. It's crazy because, like, even Aiden's community doesn't fucking uh, fuck with these dudes to a certain degree. You need to finish the video to understand what they're talking about. Aiden's friend makes an appearance. Zerka added Nick Fuentes. Yes, that Nick Fuentes. But I'm getting sidetracked. In that stream, Zerka asked Riot and his girlfriend. Yes, Riot does have a girlfriend. What, what? about like your IRL girlfriend? Actually, like, I'm that's... actually being 100. No, that's the go. The reason I don't like actually like, f around with girls or anything is because like they're actually autistic. Especially the girls that live in my city. Bro, they're all copy and paste. But Maxie, bro, I don't know how I don't know how to explain it. Like Maxie's like, bro, she's so funny on God. Maxie, you know how much I like you, right? I fucking like, I, you know, I like you a lot. Okay. Let me reassure that a lot, a lot, a lot. It's so weird. We're like, it's like, like it's just perfect. No, right? yeah, okay. we, we do connect really good. The only fucking girl I like on this whole entire Snapchat. But in that stream with Zerka, he asked them this. So, uh, what's your name? Maxim. You can call me Mats or Matsy. You're not a but you let him flirt with other girls yeah do you, do you let him do you let him take other girls i mean it's only for business though so there's your answer it's only for business bro what happened like i on a, yo this is like just levels of jeffrey epstein all the way down i feel like like it, it's just like lower level jeffrey epstein's like you got poor man jeffrey epstein and andrew tate and then you got an even broker version of Jeffrey Epstein that's like Gen Z with this fucking dude. What is happening here? Like, it's just all Jeffrey Epstein. And these are the anti-woke motherfuckers who hate the pedophile cabal. It's like, bitch, at a certain point, I'm going to start thinking you hate the pedophile cabal because you ain't in the cabal. It's the elite part of it that they hate. They envy it. What the fuck? These motherfuckers only hate Jeffrey Epstein because they're not Jeffrey Epstein. Like, that's it. Not because of what he did. They just don't like that he's like the LeBron James of doing this shit. What the fuck? To them, it's just content. Getting all these girls to do all this stuff for you is just for the business of it. For Riot's content. But does it make it right? Not even in the slightest. So you're telling me when Riot goes on Snapchat of all the girls that he's met on Omegle and shows every single photo to his stream and oops, he may accidentally show a nude? You're telling me that's a part of Riot's business? Riot's showing his friends on Discord photos of the girls he's gotten to do stuff with. So you wanna see, uh, oh, I got you. This girl's body is ridiculous, bro. Can you yeah. see my phone right now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Chad, I'm a yeah, right? demon. <laughs> Life's getting crazy. Yo, <laughs> these girls who some don't know were on your streams, but to you, their bodies is your content, and you and your girl know what you're doing. I, you guys just know what you're doing. And the only reason why I'm bringing Ryan's girl into this is because. Remember that clip of the 15 year old? Guess who was in a Discord call with him during all of that? I thought you were cool. All that right. Stuff? Chad, that's fucking, that's that's the shit I do for you guys, bro. And you say it like so, like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, how is there a nice way to say Gislaine Maxwell? That's he has a Gislaine Maxwell. Ain't this what your haters think you're actually like? No, man. I don't think even my haters don't think that I'm running a fucking. Even my most unhinged haters, I don't think, have ever made the the insane accusation that I'm running a fucking CP ring on Discord, okay? Honestly, I mean, the fuckboy side, no, honestly, you know what? They, they would think I'm awesome if I was. That's why they don't say that, because they don't see anything wrong with what he's doing. My haters are literally, as I showed you, the type of people that like that content and hate me as a consequence of liking this kind of content and being like anti-woke that is the hilarious part of this if they actually thought i was doing this shit they would love it they would love me they'd be like oh my god i love hassan it's not that they're like principled or anything it's literally because they their fan bases are looking for that sort of thing so they don't find that to be a bad thing my you're watching the communities that all of my fucking haters uh foster in say can i see your Please explain no, it to me, because if there is, no, I would love to know. Bro, what do you mean fumbled? The chat, did you want me yes or no? How did I fumble? Stop making something so serious about yourself is weird. First of all, I have uh, a direct experience 
with the website that this motherfucker is streaming on being created. Secondly, it was a chatter that I responded to. Lastly, I know some of those other people whose, again, communities directly fucking frame me as like an evil villain on a regular basis. This isn't like me inserting myself into this fucking story. I very deliberately did not want to even cover this for a very long time. I don't know if you know this chatter who came in here and said that, but I warned the people that made this website that I know personally to literally to literally get their shit together because I told them that exactly this was going to happen. The words I used, if I'm not mistaken, if I if I'm not uh, if my recall isn't fucked up, I specifically said if you let your terms of service get out of control, your platform will go the way of Gab. It will become a platform for pedophiles and Nazis and sometimes both pedophile and Nazis at the same time. Those are the exact same. Those are the exact words I fucking used. Hey, it's a really original uh, origin of issue question that I have, but it's more of, but is it more his fault for basically promoting this type of content and coming off as an enjoyer of these interactions? Or is it the underage girls that are also actively being on Omega to talk? What? Bro, please don't fucking type shit like that out, man. There's a reason why. What? Bro, they're fucking children. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Why is there literally an age of consent law with this logic that you have? You are victim blaming minors, brother. I really hope that you were going to fucking run a top of the hour ad break debate after this one. You know what I mean? Even then it would still be disgusting. Take a day off and fucking reconsider your worldview. He's not, he's not like the reason why I only give him a day off and not like a perma is because I don't want, I'm not saying that he's like immediately running into victim blame. Instead, he's asking the question, even though his, the way he's framing it is wrong. It seems at least relatively honest. He is honest in his stupidity. Okay. It's because he's a sub. Uh, yeah, talk to me about how you don't know anything about this fucking community. I ban 36 month subscribers more frequently than I ban n unsubscribed people, dumbass. The fuck are you talking about? I ban long-term community members way more frequently, and I'm way more punishing to long-term community members because I expect them to be better. You're on the guest list for Estelle Allen's show tonight. You should go. DUI song? What the fuck? The Estelle Allen show in LA tonight? My expectations are high if someone is uh, has been a member of this community for a long ass time. You respond to the most random shit I know. The thing I care about, the thing I care about the most is like how uh, someone asked the question. I'm of the mindset that you can be uh, genuinely, genuinely curious, even if you're wrong, even if you're dumb. You can still, if you're asking a question charitably, I'm going to try to describe it to you charitably. Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. Thank you wanted you. The thing is, bro, that was Loki fucked up. Just telling you. I know it's it. I, she's just maxi joke. Chat when she stood up. On God, I didn't even look. And when she was gonna flash, on my life, I wasn't even gonna look. That's he was like, doing it for you guys. That's weird. As shit. Like, I, was, oh my, I swear on everything I love, I'm doing this for you guys. Even though she's 18, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Right yeah uh -huh. so. but somehow it's just for the business of doing this kick content right hey so this part is being added in because everything that i'm about to tell you happened just a few days ago as of the time of this video going live now this next part needs a little bit of context so bear with me here so brian has another content creator friend named citrus he connected with this girl on omegle and got her to expose herself but she didn't know that she was on his live stream a clip of her ended up on twitter and citrus's audience found any information they could gather to spread this video to people close to this girl. And it affected her. All I'm going to say is that because of Citrus and Citrus's fans having that video get uploaded to Twitter of her exposing herself, it took a toll on her. She's already in a vulnerable state. So what I'm about to show you is Citrus and Riot fully manipulating that for content. So let's cut to a few months later. After the whole Citrus situation, Riot connected with this girl on Omegle and got her. Citrus is Aiden's mod? Great. Good stuff. Uh, that's illegal as well. Year old article regarding you warning kick about this. Hassan Abbey calls out Tramix TV for not banning Aiden Ross after streaming adult content on kick calls him a hypocrite. Again, hypocrite. It's not about the hypocrisy, man. 
Everyone only cares about hypocrisy. Who cares about hypocrisy? Readers should also know that Aiden Ross himself was accused of hypocrisy at the time. Oh my God, guys, guys, guys. Remember, readers should remember there's an accusation of hypocrisy going on, okay? Ironically, you started off talking about how much you hated titty streamers or fucking hot tub streamers and then the meta was awful. And now you have porn on your platform. Now you got one of your main fucking poster boys of kicks showing porn to minors. So maybe you now recognize the importance of moderation, especially as it pertains to an overall platform. That's the major point. Moderation is important. Not like the hypocrisy stuff. Okay. That goes you think deliberately showing porn to minors, uh, even if it's your first infraction on the platform, deserves longer than 24 hours? I think the argument that doing anything is in for minors uh, it, uh, is is in bad faith. I think. I, I think okay. Do you think I, deliberately I think, showing? Do you think deliberate? Sure. Fine. Okay. You think that's bad faith? I, I, think I don't think trash, that's bad faith. Bad they faith, openly faith. stated that they were minors after. But okay, showing deliberately showing pornographic material to your audience that you know may have actual minors involved in it. Do you think that that is worthy? Even if it's uh, plus eighteen, do you think that's worthy of uh, simply twenty four hours? Well, well, I think it can be to some extent almost illegal. I don't think it's illegal to do that. Okay. So then, so then. So, so, I, you, so you I, think it, it, it is worthy of longer than 24 hours? Because Train said he, he advised, which he has a lot more power over Kick, I think, than we do over Twitch. He advised for a 24 hour ban. Yeah. Um, um, I would assume that over there, not a lot of infraction. If you guys are wondering why so many motherfuckers hate me on the internet, it's because these are very popular content creators and their audiences never turned around and were like, Wait, maybe let me check in with this Hassan guy. Maybe he was fucking right. As a matter of fact, many of their fans who used to be fans of mine left because they were like, fuck this guy. Now you're correcting, bro. I mean, I'm not. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm definitely not like, you know, having a hard time with it at all. Man, it's weird only coming to Hassan and finding out he has actual base takes. If they can place yet, right? I'm playing devil's advocate, right? I, I, I, I don't know how they enforce the TOS. I know what even is the TOS. Yes, there should be a punishment for that. Hey, just want to let you know the Citrus isn't just his mod, is his actual real life assistant. I was a fan of Aiden before Aiden dismissed the allegations as unfounded. Aiden's whole fan base is turning against him right now. You were right. If you have the truth on your side, you will always be vindicated. It might take a year, it might take 10 years, it might take 100 years, doesn't fucking matter. Okay? History will absolve me. Obviously, we're talking about like, like minor things here, like low level shit. Okay? But in a in obviously for issues like Israel Palestine for example, yeah, yes the ar the arch of history is long but bends towards justice is I think real I think that that is real no matter what people have a real yearning for emancipation people have a real yearning for freedom anyway no we're gonna go back to the kick being predatory video now okay I heard a flash and then you're on Discord aren't you no. I, I swear to God, I'm not. And you keep looking that way. No, yeah, I have another monitor. I'm, I'm watching uh, YouTube. All right, bro. I can't, bro. I, it hurts lying, bro. I'm a streamer, but I swear to God, I hit it when you showed your tits. All my life, I swear to God. Do you know who yeah. Citrus is? Because he's in my chat right now saying he knows you. Yeah. Wait, Asshole. what's your... Freaking exposed me. Citrus! <laughs> well, he didn't tell me that oh. he was streaming. And apparently, he... Viewers were posting me on Twitter and my family oh sh they found your family <laughs> once again completely unaware that what he has done is i think this this part he is stupid he knows like if he's uh getting you know people who are drugged to show their tits or whatever that's like bad and illegal but i don't think he understands that like this is revenge porn okay procuring Revenge porn without the victim knowing is also illegal. This is what I was trying to explain to people. Like, Aiden Ross turning around and being like, on God, bro, she was 24, bro. She was being a whore, bro. Like, she deserved it. That does not... Ch First of all, you're a monster for saying that. Like, actually a monster. No, this person is an adult. She's 24 years old, okay? There are numerous... Legal boundaries that have been crossed in this situation. If you do not have the capacity to understand that this is immoral as fuck because you are a monstrous piece of shit who has just completely fucking destroyed their brain because of the clout maxed idiocy that you see on a daily fucking basis, then let me tell you some stuff, okay? It is illegal to procure revenge porn. It is illegal to also distribute revenge porn. It is illegal to 
film someone without their consent with the intent to distribute their sexual material. You can't do that. Just because they're not underage doesn't change that dynamic at all. It's not, uh, what's the term, exculpatory, okay? People think, I think, uh, in, in very, like, black and white terms on this, they're like, well, they're not a minor, so it's legal. Like, no, it's revenge porn, man. The fuck is still illegal? Mm -hmm. Is this a bad time to ask this here? Again? He then proceeded to get her in a group Discord call with Citrus so that he can apologize for the Twitter incident. But must we forget, they're kick streamers. So we know the real reason why they got her in that group chat. I just want to say, like, <laughs> when I first saw, like, your I didn't expect it and sh <laughs> like, <laughs> to be that amazing. And my chat was in love the same as I was. And I just kept hyping it up even though I shouldn't, you know? I should have told you I was live. That was f up with me. Not fun when all your viewers were just threatening me and they also brought in my dad. Yo, you guys are deep in not nah, AR loyals are f up. I think he's apologizing for his chat. Yeah, I, I am apologizing for my chat. And and me myself, I did a mistake too. You know? Holy shit. So do you accept my apology? It might just take me some time because it was really hard. But for them, this is just content. So they're gonna milk it for all it's worth. I, I'm sure nothing like that will ever happen again. Right, Citrus? Yeah, I know. But I have a question. You know, when we met, I wasn't going to the gym. But do you think like anything changed? I mean, look at me laughing. Like I won't stick my between those big ass oh! My fault, my fault, my fault. I will fly you out if you are down to do an IRL stream with me in person. I will fly you out to Miami. Accept the flight. Accept. Say yes, I am down to come to Miami. Ooh, I have a good idea. Would you want to play strip Fortnite? Every kill I get, you remove one's clothing. Why don't you make an no OF? Thanks. You would make so much money. Let me put you on. I will make you rich. All my life, I will. Let's you would make it bad. I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say beyond like, <sighs> why aren't these motherfuckers in jail? Like, actually. Because they're not just annoying, they're like criminal. What the fuck's happening? Just a bunch of little Andrew Tates, bro, running around. Just a bunch of little Andrew Tates running around doing lower level Andrew Tate shit. Okay? And when I say lower level, I'm not like belittling the impact that it has on the victims. Clearly, it is very impactful. I'm saying that it's like, like they're not as prolific with their criminal actions, with the exception of the one down there that fucking little freak that one is uh very prolific it seems at procuring csam child sexual abuse material i don't understand I, I don't i don't understand how this shit is still operating in broad daylight you would Let's make a talk bag. about it i will manage your os you know you would be making at least twenty thousand dollars a month off of me are you wearing like, what are you wearing right now? Wait, see the outfit? Can I see him again? Uh, sorry, I just have, like, short-term memory loss. I'll hide the screen right now if you show us. This is a lie. Citrus only fully covered two of the seven times they pushed her to do suggestive stuff on stream. And Riot only fully covered four of the seven times. And Citrus's audience were clipping and saving portions of the entire stream. I'll hide my too. Hold on one second. Black screen right now. Let them out. And after she does, Citrus adds his friends to the call. Hello? Yo! Yo, hey, I don't, hey, no questions asked. Show them. Show them to my boy. Hold on. Let, Let it rip. rip. Let it rip. She has a vibrator. Show us. Yeah, can we see her yeah, yeah, yeah, let's see. We just want to see it. How we learn is like visual instruction. Can I see her arch? And when this girl found out that these streamers were not covering the screen when she was exposing herself again, therefore causing Citrus's fans to be clipping portions from this stream to post online all over again, she talked about unaliving herself and this is how they react to that you never turned the camera off did you no i did on, on god i did oh ggs uh ggs who the f snitched god never weird did. kid I bro really... you just don't want to go see that again no i understand you just don't have to just don't give them Yo. the attention like that's all they want yeah it's just <sighs> yeah that she's gonna fucking kill herself okay can i see you smile please for me a smile just a quick smile should i tip her bro is that just be like, yo, wait, can I just send you money and you just forget about it? Wait, type a one if you guys think she'll actually do it. Put a two if she won't. I don't think we should test the limits, of course, but like... Look at me. You hear me? They're talking about the likelihood of her killing herself? They're talking about type one in the chat if you think... Dude, I've never... Dude, dude, dude. This is criminal. Across the board criminal. This is what happens when websites don't enforce any kind of terms of service. I think he said type one if you think the tipping is wrong, but I may have misheard it. What? I think what 
No, I thought she said type one. Uh, he said type one if you think she'll do it. Look, I just got, I got to say something, okay? What is actually kind of fucking sad, like really sad about this, isn't obviously just like these guys ha are demonstrating this behavior, okay? They're doing this because they think there's a market for it and there is a market for it. Like, that's crazy. Not only are these guys just, like, evil and, and shitty, like, monstrous pieces of shit, okay? Criminal, monstrous pieces of shit in display. This is literally a, a growth sector, okay? Like, these are dudes that are just, that aren't just doing this because they're bad people. They're, obviously, that plays a role, and they are certainly bad people. They're doing it because... There are other bad people who also are like, this is extremely my fucking shit, okay? Now, back in the day, this kind of behavior was in the darker corners of the internet. You know what I mean? The forums and whatnot. Nowadays, it's fucking mainstream. The same goes for, like, lol cows, right? People who used to just be on 4chan and maybe, like, uh, Kiwi Farms or whatever would like try to make people's lives living hell and like document every single thing that they've done for them, you know, doxing them, doxing their families, DDoSing them, uh, swatting their homes, and then documenting every single part of that experience and maybe even like, you know, sharing that information with one another to like celebrate their accomplishments. This is a process called like a lull cowing, okay? Nowadays, that shit is in the forefront. Like it's no longer hidden. It's not like a hidden thing. People are genuinely doing it very openly obviously destiny does this uh very openly or at least tries to do this sometimes he's successful at doing it when the content creator is smaller other times he's not but he still you know doesn't stop doing it and entire sectors of content online are now basically hyper focusing on this kind of shit some people understand it and willingly become lol cows uh, like the dark side fills with the fucking world and, and other people don't even understand what the fuck's going on and maybe even consume the content that comes afterwards without even recognizing that they're like, you know, playing a role in this shit. It's crazy. Yeah, Boogie is another one who like knows he's a lol cow and like leans into it. You know what I mean? And they are also not exactly great people either as far as I understand. But my point is like this stuff used to be like the kill stream. You know what I mean? Like that Nazi live streaming, uh, that Nazi live stream that I talked about couple days back they used to do that to like what 300 to maximum a thousand viewers nowadays you have entire fucking communities with like tens of thousands of viewers like doing that shit and then pointing and then other secondary markets basically propping up out of this like the commentary side yeah the one pewdiepie defended yes like there's a very dark side of commentary youtube nowadays that basically is just like keemstar orbiters that literally pump out this kind of content for a willing audience that wants it and the more this becomes monetizable the worse it will get okay the more incel shit becomes normalized the worse it will get yeah you no longer have to go out of your way to go to 4chan or 8chan to find this kind of fucking unhinged behavior it's on reddit okay fuck it is disgusting that you can press x to doubt doubt what that there isn't like mass harassment discords out there that operate within people's communities that are desperately looking for it under the guise of drama T come on, brother. There are, it, this is like serialized at this point. And that's only one aspect of it. I'm just talking about the overarching, the overarching energy of the internet. Okay. Like, the lol cowing stuff is one other aspect of this, like cyber stalking and mass harassment becoming normalized, serialized, and also monetized, right? So that's one thing. This is the other version of that. This is the other version of that. This is the, the Andrew Tate method becoming more and more mainstream because there are platforms that are not actually clamping down on it. Do you get it? Do you understand? My point is... And yes, this is my major thesis. Thank you, Anaphase, for repeating it. The 4chanification of the internet is upon us, okay? The 4chanification of the internet is upon us, where things that used to be relegated to the darker corners of the internet are now being pumped into the forefront and actually monetizable and actually cause people to make money, and that creates a, a, another impact. 
that not only normalizes this sort of behavior, okay, that only that normalizes this sort of behavior, it taints discourse, it you know, it it's it makes everything so much more toxic, it creates more victims, but also it, it's it's monetizable, which means more people are gonna do it. People now no longer think that this is like totally fucked up and only like someone who is just obsessive, like a like a hysterically obsessive person is doing this. It went it, it changed from it changed from like the creepiest, grossest weirdos fucking doing this kind of behavior to people seeing it and being like, oh, this is actually permissible. Not only is it permissible, I will make money doing this. It incentivizes people to do this. No, drop your phone now. Stop going through these messages because that's what's ruining your mood. That's not what's ruining her mood. She wouldn't be getting these messages. She wouldn't be getting these threats. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for Citrus and Riot and yes, other kick streamers who fully manipulated her without her knowing that she was on a live stream. Mentally, you need to jump over those obstacles and be the best. You are the best. You can't let no one stop you. You are the f***ing queen. Do you hear me? And people love you. People care about you. Yo. You have your own book. And there's going to be a happy ending at the end. The capping community has existed since Amanda Todd. This is an insane resurgence of it. And being on the clear net is insane. I don't even know what these words. You're the capper community. I don't know what that is. I don't know what capping is. And I don't know what uh, Amanda Todd is. But I, I can understand what... What is this? The suicide of Amanda Todd? Was a 15-year-old Canadian student a victim of cyberbullying who hanged herself in her uh, home in Port... Coquitla in British Columbia a month before death. Todd posted a video on YouTube in which she used a series of flashcards to tell her experience of being blackmailed and exposing her breasts via webcam and being bullied and physically assaulted. The video went viral after her death, resulting in international media attention. The original video has more than 15 million views as of May 2023, although mirrored copies of the video have received tens of millions of additional views shortly after her death. <laughs> a YouTube video by React as a video of teens reacting to Todd's video? What the fuck? Capping is when men make minors expose themselves and then spread that video around their communities. Okay, this is obviously a crime of epic proportions. What blows my fucking mind in this situation is that this literally is now, once again, as I was saying, and as that chatter was also saying, this is now basically what we're watching happen in front of our eyes to, like, thousands of people. Thousands of people are engaging in the consumption of this content. When those guys did it, they didn't have a live streaming platform to stream the process on. It's like a popular thing to do. It's a, it's a meta, okay? Chat, we have metas. In the live streaming space, we have what is known as metas, right? You know what a meta is. It's in video games as well. In live streaming, there are metas. React could be a meta. MasterChef was a meta at a certain point. People watching MasterChef. That was the worst possible thing you could do, okay? Uh, being in a hot tub, like an adult, uh, female influencer, being in a motherfucking hot tub was the meta for a little bit, right? Playing Rust was the meta. On Kick, this is the fucking meta. Yeah, 20 versus 1 in black YouTube is a meta, exactly. This is the meta now. Caping is the fucking meta. This girl was harassed by AR loyals after she got kick banned in Turkey. Her friend killed himself because of steak. Wait, what? What are these, like, testimonials of how people found steak? How do you not punch fucking holes in your walls all day watching and learning about this shit, man? First of all, I don't punch holes in my fucking walls all day because I knew that this was going to happen years ago and I kept fucking repeating that it's happening, it's happening, it's happening and everybody fucking yelled at me. It was more annoying back then when I could see the fucking writing on the wall and I kept telling people like, don't do this shit and everybody fucking kept saying I'm delusional and I'm wrong. Yeah, I know oh. it. Yeah, we're... Don't say that. Yo. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This was a crazy roller coaster, bro. No way you guys yeah, are- People yelling at me for those takes was actually a meta in and of itself, as a matter of fact. Putting bets on if she- Okay. <laughs> Yo, this is fucked. This is like side watch, not an e -day. Everyone has a reason to Remember. be alive. Everyone has a purpose on this earth, so you have a purpose on this earth. We are gonna make it out. Remember, his son, I'm a snake. His son. Yeah. Where do you think that fucking came from? Well, how do you think that fucking developed? It wasn't, let me tell you why. It wasn't because of any inconsistency in my fucking way of thinking. Not even the mere presence of it. And we're gonna be the best, all right? Say that, we're gonna be the best. Say the best. What's your dream? I actually wanna know, what's your dream? He might be cooking. What do you wanna do, like, in life? I just wanna be a mom. Hmm. You wanna be a mom already? You wanna be a mom. What if I make you a mom? My chat says, get her pregnant. 
the guy doing this video, is he doing a good thing or just content farming? No, he is doing a good thing. 100%. Bro, I people did not know. I didn't have fucking documented evidence of this kind of thing happening. I didn't know this. I suspected it. I suspected this is where it would go, but I didn't fucking know it got this bad. So no, that guy, the guy making this video is doing a great thing. I think they actually fucking forced this kid offline, basically, as a consequence of this video. They physically cannot turn off the content side of their brain. They always feel the need to entertain and feed into the chat. You want to be a mom? No, I got you. I got you right here. You want to be a mom, right? You have a lot to live for. You got a lot of good traits and everything, you know, don't don't make a rational decision. You, you know, you're definitely going to regret or irrational. Well, sorry. Then you shouldn't have made me show off my face. I fucked up. What you're thinking is definitely not the answer. You know, don't be scared to like reach out and... Here, I'll DM you my number right now. You should never be in that state of mind. Um, okay. Side risk. You're still very young. Long life ahead of you. You know, don't don't think like that. You know. Love. Sorry, you you just lagged. What'd you say? When she's talking about the problems that she's going through in her life, her story. Riot says this. Since that happened, this. Can you stop bro? Nice. When you drive someone to consider death as an option, I think it's time to reevaluate the content that you're making and i highly think kick should reevaluate the creators that they're platforming because if they don't something devastating could happen what they were doing is so awful that i couldn't just stand by and just let that happen so i reached out to her while this was all happening and then she added me to the call now i by no means am a skilled debater and i really don't think i did too well to be honest however it didn't stop these streamers from showing their true colors hey Hey, who's it? We're just mindsets. I haven't watched it yet. It's literally from the first episode. Shut the fuck up. I fell asleep on 2016 YouTube, woke up, and it had become the whole fucking earth. Yeah, 2016 YouTube is, I mean, it's worse than that now. I just have a question for you guys. What? Is this? I'm scared. Whatever's happening right now, I gotta pee. Is beyond messed up uh -huh. on so many levels. Did I not have a full on straight on serious combo with her? Did you did you not see that part? My chat was saying, "Oh, have her do it, have her do it." If I was egging it on by the chat, I would say, "Oh, do it, do it," just to get the laughs. But guess what? I talked to her. I spoke deep with her. Everyone has a reason to be alive. Everyone has a purpose on this earth. I want to be a mom. What if I make you a mom? My chat says get her pregnant. You talked about managing her fans. Okay, I'm a businessman and she was down. Let me manage her. What's wrong with that? Trust me, I'm not getting Bro. Me. Leave. Yeah. Everyone goes fam, leave. We were fixated on bringing her out to Miami. Guess what? I'm not actually bringing her out to Miami. She got, she gets happy. Then why did you say all that? Oh my God. So then why what? did you say all if that? If I was being serious, I'm weird. If I was lying, I'm weird. So what do you want, kid? What makes you happy? Look at you, Miles Morales. You are making a fool of yourself. Thanks for the roses. Thank you. Thanks for the roses. Oh, I can't use that right now. Thanks for the roses. <laughs> oh. Ice cream so good. Thanks for the roses. I get that you're a content creator and your job is to entertain. But in a situation right now, I really don't think you should be entertaining people. Bro. You're the one who I'm going to be the good person here. Him. You know what? Let me get the W's. I want to get the views, not him. I'm pointing out a problem here with kick content. Thanks for the roses. What's the problem? Thanks for Wait, the roses. Wait, what happened? Thanks for the roses. You, hey, you want a box, bro? You you want to make money off this? Let's let's talk money. Well, now we talking money now. You you know what? This is gonna go viral. Let's box. Let's make it more viral. Let's make. What do you do with a? Ch How old is this fucking child? Is he like fifteen? What's happening? What do you do with this? Like what what do you do with this fucking freak? Jesus Christ, dude! This kid one hundred percent grew up on XUC. No, I I just like I I don't really know. I don't know what the fuck. Like this dude needs medication, brother. Actually. And not the kind that is, like, causing him to behave like this. I'm talking, whatever he's taking right now, don't take it. Take the opposite. All the NPC talk he's doing is comparing him to another black creator on TikTok. Oh, yeah, the, the Spider-Man. The NPC Miles Morales uh, Spider-Man. He's saying, like, you're him, right? That's what he's saying. Money. So no, because that's a low. In my, in my opinion, that's a low in content. No, it's not. It's, it's 
Just to get money. Like, do you not like money, bro? You saw the part where I was serious talking about her. Wasn't looking at chat, wasn't saying anything, wasn't laughing. How you were talking about how you take her out on a date and fly her out to Miami multiple times, yeah. Bro, you were watching the sure. end of it. When she was smiling and stuff and saying she was down. <sighs> of course. Of course he left. <laughs> nice. He left. No, no why'd you remove him? him? Why'd, you, why'd you kick him? Yeah, what? Hey, dude, you're fried if you think saying that call was a good idea. I don't give a f Bro. Also, just minutes after this stream, he paid a Twitter account to post a very positive and totally not fucking called this shit too. Bro, bro, I didn't pre watch. I pre lived. I pre lived. These fucking accounts 100% work alongside kick streamers to promote them regularly. To promote them regularly on Twitter. One dude, dude, dude. Every single one of these fucking accounts, every single one of these fucking accounts, here's a conspiracy. Do you think someone pays them to shit on you? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think that they, the entire, the entire, all I'm going to say is this, the guys that fucking made kick, okay, stake owners despise me and have talked about me in their fucking literal, like CEO gatherings. Okay. It's not working, so I doubt it. Aiden literally said on stream he'd pay Fear Bucked 5K weekly to post good shit about him when he was constantly getting canceled. Board meetings, Lamau, yeah, they fucking used to do, like, fake board meetings. That's when I found out that they were even doing, like, fake board meetings. But, yeah, Scuba Ryan, Feared Buck. Remember, these are the motherfuckers who are always like, Hassan, you're such a fucking sellout. You're a grifter. You're fake commie. You're fucking dumb. You're the dumbest person. And it's odd that they're literally fucking over here pumping out really positive shit. I'm the worst streamer on the fucking planet when the guys who they consider to be the best streamers on the fucking planet are literally doing Epstein shit. Yeah, Travis Scott's manager was talking about how I fucking paint my nails and shit, which is ironic because, like, Travis Scott paints his fucking nails, but that's besides the point. Only one of these accounts I mess with is Brandon. He's cool. He calls out all these guys. How is chat calling you clairvoyant and broken Arabic? What? It's Dune, man. Dune made everybody fucking Arab, uh, Ar Arabophiles. To be fair, I don't even fault them for doing that shit. For 5K a week, dude, I mean, Jesus Christ. If you're fucking, if you're working at Best Buy and some dumb motherfucker online says, hey, man, like, you got enough clout, I'll give you $5,000 a week to post positive things about me, of course you're going to take that deal. They don't give a shit. My favorite thing about those accounts is, the, is if you keyword motherfuckers, that's the T. Yeah, MFers. If they say MFers, they're white. There's a white guy running the account. Brother, listen, how many accounts do you pay to say good things about you? Well, considering there's not that many accounts that, that fucking say good things about me, uh, the answer is zero. Oh, for the past couple of, like, past year or so, ever since Kick popped off, I feel like I've been losing my goddamn mind. Kick popped off. Twitter went to shit with a reactionary fucking psychopathic billionaire buying it and turning it extra bad. It's been like a year or so, like a year plus uh, of, of just me feeling like I'm, I'm losing my fucking mind. Like every single person is just like routinely being like, no, no, all of the bad people are actually good. And all of the good people that you like that do good things, yourself included, are bad. It's been like flipped entirely a fake story about him paying for four people's college debt even if this story is real charity is a good thing in general but not when it's used as good pr here's the click yeah here this is if you want to know like i'm not fucking crazy play devil's advocate what other platform are you going to get um finger painting lessons from hassan you know his, his, <laughs> his content that only twitch can offer the community you yeah know, i mean it's we can also it's offer crazy. classes in socialism. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I've never seen a socialist that is, uh, you know, that is probably matched up with America's top capitalists, you know, in their pockets. So I don't know any of these motherfuckers. This has been fucking popping off too, like nonstop. The difference is, dog, they just say the same shit and jerk each other off on Discord, but call you gay. I know. Listen, my point is, my point is this, okay? I don't want kick to fucking fail in the beginning i literally said listen i like that there's competition because competition is supposed to foster better experiences for the for the streamers themselves 
okay? And even better experiences for the consumers. But if you want this to be like a real project, what I tried to stress was that you have to legitimately, that you have to legitimately have some kind of terms of service. You can't make a fucking platform for waste men, okay? You can't make a platform for uh, uh, people that have been banned from every other platform. It's going to go to shit. I was publicly happy for XUC's deal and he turned around and shit on me. Yeah, whatever. My point is the resentment and animosity on my end, at least, comes from actions. The resentment and animosity from their end usually comes from the fact that I'm calling them out and they fucking hate that. You can see how XC had absolutely nothing to say after reacting to Charlie's video. Should have done the worm. Yeah, Bruce's pivot to shit on you was so weird considering you did nothing but defend him while he was on Twitch. I know. I don't really know what this fucking deal was, but it's fine. That's why I was like joking saying like there's a there's a contract clause that he that they remember every single fucking week there was a new uh kick stream popping off from kick streamers, including Amaranth, who shit on me and Pokey. Like I'm friends with Amaranth. I've streamed with her. It made me feel like I was going crazy. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Like, like these are not even people I have animosity with. Out of all out of the out of all the content creators that got like kick deals, the only one that didn't openly go like fuck us on was was your rage, I think. Anyway. Yeah, it's like an anti BDS type agreement. Bruce stopped associating with all these people. He was back to what he was once perceived as. Anyway. Let's finish this fucking video. Lar to distract from you making a girl want to unalive herself. But let's check out. He's too scared to directly call you out, so he just agrees with the Destiny on everything. Law. He was on Twitter agreeing with Destiny on how he did against Norm by claiming none of the clips being posted on Twitter show that Destiny was proven wrong. Who? Rage? Yeah, I don't care. Riot stream the next night after everything that took place. Riot celebrated that stream. Put a one in the chat if you were here for last night's stream. Let me know. Oh my god, last night's stream was crazy. I go a lot. I want Kick to succeed. Hasanabe opens up about recent criticism. After signing some of the world's most prominent st uh, streamers, Kick is making headlines with multi million dollar contracts. This is eventually led. These are all AI websites, but at least they like fucking have, have posterized my, my statements here. It all started when Asabe boldly claimed XC's intention behind joining Kick was to incorporate gambling into his streams. For those unaware, XC signed a two-year non-exclusive deal worth whopping $100 million of Kick. Also, this newly launched streaming platform is backed and funded by its co-owner, Stake, a gambling website. Unfortunately, Hasanabe's views on XC backfired when fans accused Asana of being jealous and criticizing Kick. Therefore, in one of his later streams, the Twitch streamer started stated things aren't as they appear to be, expressing his support for Kick. Let's check with what Hasan said about it. At the timestamp, he says, Hassan Piker stated that Kick is very much aware all the big streamers are valuable assets to them regardless of the platform. Hence, the Trainwrecks TV Black platform won't have any obligation to offer contracts to renowned streamers. He said, as big streamers, as our peers, they know that you know. If you're a fucking big streamer, you're a valuable asset regardless. Like, Kick would absolutely have no issue giving anyone and everyone a fucking contract like that. Further, he states that there's no such thing as Twitch streamers being jealous of Kick as, uh, as it's all people's assumptions and predictions. Oh my god, this AI article is dog shit. I think it's projection to say like, oh, it's because they're jealous and they want what they can't get one. And that's why they're fucking shitting on Kick. When I don't, I don't want Kick to fail. I want it to succeed. As a matter of fact, if Kick succeeds, we all succeed. <laughs> this is so terrible. This undoubtedly, it's a massive revelation by Hasan Avi, which will most likely make things a lot less complicated. What is this? You've said from the beginning that you support Kick as a competitor because anything that's a competitor to Amazon is a good thing. You criticize the gambling and the porn. Exactly. <laughs> a revelation. The article both show what you said and was hilarious. I could not, I couldn't not link it. Uh, but dude, that shit was crazy. Yeah, last night shit was f***ing crazy. Uh, shout out to the boy Citrus. Uh, we, we, we set up a f***ing content factory last night. That was, that was crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm about to get locked up. up. Nah, kidding, kidding, kidding. You see what I mean? He called the entire situation with that girl content factory. And then hours later, during that exact same stream, he gets a donation by one of the founders of Kick. Everyone keeps mentioning Riot Law. Yeah, you Riot Law. Yeah, what is this? He <laughs> trolls. So you can swear Eddie's here. Yo! Yo! Holy f Oh my god, Eddie, bro! Eddie, bro! Holy f No f 
fucking way! Alright, big shout out to the right one. Of... That's awesome. That's awesome. That's... <laughs> so funny. No, no, not sure if I quite love you, man, but I fucking love the enthusiasm. It's legend. I wonder how he would feel about donating to Riot if he knew the situation that happened just a day before. But if we've learned anything from the Ice Poseidon situation that happened a few months ago on Kick, something tells me he wouldn't care. And that's the problem with Kick. Do you understand how this dude is worth 10 plus billions and earning 7 billion each year? Yeah. Illegal this is. So I don't know how to process that kick is allowing this. He's a verified account. How is this content 18 plus when the people Riot are talking to aren't even 18 plus? So this is his content. I'm shirtless. Your shirt is on. This is a really tough situation, you know? I could have got that to do everything. Chat, like everything. XQC watched as he reacts to everything. Did he react to this video? Maybe he did. I don't know. I would love to hear this what is he his had to humor. say about like, it. Like, to make a joke about, like, someone beating women? Like, you know, like that's weird. Stop being soft, bro. It's a f joke. This is his personality. How many tattoos do you have? Four. What's your favorite one? My rib. Can I see it? Okay. Why'd you get it? It symbolizes the survivor of sexual assault. Yeah. It's okay. You can laugh. That's how I cope. You know, I usually just come with, like, masturbating, but, like... I mean, like, one's slightly above the other. Wait, you gotta... Alright. Wait, you, Jim? Bro, me and you should get some cardio in. How many bodies do you have? I'm just out of curiosity. I didn't mean to say that. Your teeth look really nice. I'm sorry, dude. Yo. Oh, my God. Hey, crazy. Bro, that girl just told you she was a sexual assault survivor, and your next question was, how many bodies do you have? Wait, was it? Oh, God. Wait, your mic was lagging. Repeat that. That's literally what you... And he's got all of his friends and even Kick backing him up. So Riot, this is my question to you. Do any of the girls that you've met on Omegle and ended up adding on Snapchat, do any of them know? Do any of them know about your streams? Do any of them from the NSFW channel know? I think I know the answer, and I know you do too. Shame on you. Shame on Kick. Shame on any one of his friends that knew about you and your content and still let it slide. But will anything happen? The content creator's uh, name is something about chicken. The sad part is probably not because to all these shameful kick creators, well. It's only for business though. Content. All the money this video makes from the mod station will go to Save From Online Sex Abuse Organization. If you or someone you know is struggling in crisis, help is available, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. So since this video came out, on February 11th, Kick actually did um, ban this person, I think, or at least like the person wiped himself off the internet, it seems. I don't even think he's a commentary channel. I'm pretty sure he just does Omegle skits and pranks, wholesome ones. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he like, the streamer disappeared himself and Kick gave him a retroactive ban. If he came back, Kick would definitely unban him. Ah, I doubt it. It's, there's too much smoke on it. I don't think these guys understand. Like... The victims being minors makes things worse, but if the victims are adults, that doesn't mean that like the situation is fine. It's not only still immoral, it's still illegal too. It, it blows my mind that people just don't understand it. Like I know a lot of dumb people only understand the law and they go, oh, well, if something is illegal, then it must be bad. And if something is legal, then it must be good. But like, you know. Is Citrus Bantu? No, Citrus is like Aiden's mod slash assistant, it seems. I just don't understand how, like, Kick thinks they can just consistently get away with this shit, too. I don't know how dumb you have to be to think that this shit, to think, yeah, Citrus got a three-day ban. This was Aiden. I know why, listen, year. I'm gonna be just be honest, bro. My boy right here did not do anything wrong. Bro, the other guy, no, no, no, listen. Let me speak. She was 24 years old. She's a grown woman. She knew what flash right. titties online will get her. Like, and AR Loyal sent it to her parents like they're supposed to. She yo. deserved it because she was a whore. Yo. There. Now that we have better assessment of the situation. Yeah, but he gave me my protein bar. The other, the other nigga, he actually did some. some what? Aiden Ross covering up an event where someone took his life in Aiden Ross's Discord after losing money gambling. Aiden Ross paid 25k to have it deleted. This is what people are saying in my chat. I don't have enough evidence for this. Um, I have no way of investigating this personally. So, I, I don't know. How do people like this get popular? Dude, they get popular because, like, a lot of young people 
think that this is like edgy and cool. That's how they get popular. I'm not gonna fucking. I sent you the video of his editor. It must mean something. No, no, I, no. Cuff him. The guy next to Aiden and Citrus like a week ago jumped another content creator. They get drunk and actually fight. It's true. His community is against him now. His 90k community on X got deleted. He had 90,000 people in an X community. Do you want to know why I'm not going to use Kick? Here, I'm going to give you one thing about Kick. If you go to Kick right now, I'm going to go to the first stream in the entire website. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to hit F12. And I want you to see this. You see how that says Amazon IVS? Amazon IVS is interactive video service put out by Amazon. That I, I said this as well in the beginning. Everyone fucking yells at me. the back end of that. Twitch. They're renting the same system that Twitch is. Now, why is this a problem? Because Kick, they have a category. That category, if you type in the word other, will show up as other watch party. This used to be other TV shows and movies. It has hundreds of people illegally streaming movies and TV shows in it right now, including Disney content, movies, NFL stuff, all kinds of shit. I went onto Trainwreck's stream on Kick, and I talked to him, and I said, hey, man, I would be comfortable streaming on your platform if you guys didn't have a category incentivizing piracy. This is absurd. What are you doing? And he called me an idiot for 30 minutes straight on his stream. Then 24 hours later, he deleted the VOD. Then they changed that category from other TV shows and movies to other watch party. And they forgot to change the URL. It's still other TV shows and movies. But I'm the dipshit, right? I'm the idiot. Do you want Your name is Pirate Software? He's, I, I think uh, Thor and I uh, disagree on piracy. I think Trainwreck is just, what? Okay. Can Twitch not block AWS the cake because of this shit that's happening on their website? Without a di without an incredible amount of pressure, fuck no. Why would they? They're just making money. Their competition looks like a bunch of, you know, pedophile CP gatherers because they are, and they have to pay Amazon to do that. They make Twitch look good every day that they fucking exist. All of the fucking weirdos that would normally stream on Twitch go over there to stream there instead, so it makes moderation easier on Twitch. Like, it's not just a black market. It's a black market that has to pay rent to the actual market, the actual monopoly. He's fine with piracy. He's just saying the platform is not stable because it incentivizes it. Yeah, he's not anti-piracy inherently, just not worth streaming on a platform that will get taken down for it. No, I agree with his, I agree with his assessment. Anyway, Kick might fuck it up to Twitch as well as Amazon, though Amazon will get burned for it. No, man. AWS hosts like 40% of the content online. What the fuck are you talking about? There's like way worse shit that AWS is probably hosting knowingly and unknowingly. He read your message, lol. What? This month seems to be where one of your haters are finally starting to admit that you're right. Why, streaming awesome. is the hardest profession on the planet. Uh -huh. So I ridiculous. I think streaming is so freaking easy. I think it's harder than being a mother. For those of you... <laughs> Rattle five, five jobs off the top of your head Austin. right now. Waiter, pilot, doctor. You. Uh, <laughs> there is no oh, way. I it, don't it, know it's him. a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay? It's Do it. Two more jobs right now, you. D nurse um, and Say accountant. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, you think Kick will fail if they keep doing this shit? I don't fucking know. Kick won't fail as long as. Kick won't fail. As In this long imperfect world? as the stake is backing them. Actually, y'all don't disagree too much on piracy. We made the game 65% off in Brazil. We made it 20 bureau. It's $3.58 US in Brazil. And do you know what happened? No one in Brazil pirated the game. Brazil is 20 to 25% of our- This is the Gaben method, by the way. ...studio's overall income now, even though it's 65% off in Brazil. Huh. Localize your game. He's right. He takes the position that piracy is a service problem to be competed with, like Gaben. Yes, it's absolutely correct. The major reason why I, as a pirate, my whole damn fucking life growing up in Turkey, and without piracy, I would have never been able to have access to a, a library of content, video games, everything. And that's the, also the reason why I'm a, I'm a ride or die uh, pro pirate guy. Okay? The reason why I don't steal pirate shit is because of convenience. It's much easier to just have all of the stuff that I want to watch in one fucking place. Don't lie. You never talk. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Yeah, I, okay. You were such a pirate. You interviewed one. Exactly. I used to even advocate for piracy at the top of the hour. As a chatter also correctly pointed out, that's a good ass segue. I'm going to use it. I'm going to give you your fucking props. Okay. At the good top afternoon. of the hour, I used to talk about, you know, Different methods of avoiding the ad break at the top of the hour until they came 
clamping down on my ass, which is why I, I had to take out one portion of my Segway debate. So you just give in to corporations? Hell yes, I do. When those fucking corporations are paying my fucking salary? Yes, I do. I do. Because if I don't give in to corporations in that situation, you know what happens? They take more of the revenue I generate for them. So, you know, I pick and choose. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, this is getting clipped out of context. I mean, I don't give a fuck. Gaben has also said piracy is a, is a service problem. If you make things accessible, then people will not pirate. And he's right. It's a skill issue. So you don't actually follow what you preach? Weird. What? Why are people doing this? Okay, come on. I already am running the top of the hour ad break. The changes you made to clips on this channel seem to have significantly cut down on the absurd hate. Yeah, it's odd. It really has, hasn't it? It's good stuff. Also, the other thing is, the other thing is like, obviously don't ever fucking pirate like from indie devs, small devs in general. Like, that's another, that's another part of the conversation. Like, obviously, when I fucking rip shit uh, like from a mega corporation or whatever. I don't give a shit all that much. You can try to like talk about the logic behind it all day, every day. What is this? Thanks for giving me my question. You use Riot and them girls for your content. Thank you for that, by the way. I was simply talking about it and not explaining why my dumbass can, how my dumbass can potentially jail them fools has got me frustrated. Bro, literally take multiple chill pills, okay? Like, you're, can I pirate you on YouTube? Yes, of course you can. Like, what do you mean, bro? How can we fucking send him to jail? Like, what? What? That's not a fucking question that I can answer, dumbass. Like, what do you mean? I don't know. Like, what? What? Do I look like a fucking FBI agent? I don't know. He's like mad at me for not giving him the step-by-step -step methods and then accusing me of using the girls that this person fucking victimized for content. Like, that's insane, dude. How do you jump to that? How do you fucking... What was the username's uh, uh, chat? Because I saw their chat earlier and I didn't address it because it was like crazy. But like, how do you go from like, like how, how does this happen? How, how do you go from, but good sir, may I ask, how can we jail them? Is it possible since you didn't mention anything about it? No, dude. No, anyways, this Hasanabi, how can we jail, jail, jail people for this? Dude, no, anyways, this probably going to get timed out for this. Man, am I the FBI? How did you fucking simultaneously accuse me of skipping over your question and then say, I, I used Riot and them girls for my content. Thank you for that, by the way. How does this level of animosity fester inside of you in literally 14 to 15 minutes? Like, or whenever you fucking started asking this question. And you got fucking cooked before as well. You got like timed out. How are you getting mad at this chatter? He's obviously tilted at the kick people. No, he's tilted at the kick people. And now he's putting me in the same fucking vein as the scumbags. Implying that I'm like using them for my content. When I knew the contents of that video. And I didn't even watch it for two whole fucking months almost. Don't you understand that that's a little fucking insane? I'm learning how to type. Yeah, that's my bad. Yo, I'm just having fun. Okay, well, <laughs> this is a weird way to have fun. Anyway. He said he's learning how to type. All right. Uh, we got TikTok time. Ready to go. We'll do it now. Let's do it. Last one ever? Wait, why is it the last one? Oh, because it's going to get banned. Yeah. Can you please look at the Trend Twins latest thumbnail? You don't have to watch the video, but I just want you to look at the thumbnail. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. We made our own pre-workout stim warning. Bro, he went to the hospital for taking... 700 milligrams of caffeine. He's mogging. Look at his face. He looks maxing. Excuse me. Oh, shit. Die. Die. How are you feeling, Chris? Sons of This shit right here is cooked up by Walter White and himself. Let's hang on. They Dude, they're these guys, by the way, contrary to what your eyes are telling you, how old do you think these guys are? Chat, give me some numbers. Throw some numbers in the chat right now. How old do you think they are? Okay, a lot of you know how old they are. That's why you're fucking saying it. This is no fun if you know exactly how old they are and say it correctly. Okay, I'll ask you. I'll ask you one more time. How old do you think they look? 
Because when I first encountered the Trend Twins, immediately I was hooked, okay? Immediately I was hooked. I was like, these guys are awesome. What's going on here? And I thought they were like around, I mean, actually, no. The big revelation for me was C-Bomb, Chris Baumgartner. Um, C-Bomb is a legend, okay? Or not Baumgartner, Bumstead. C-Bum, sorry. I was like, he's a legend. He is a legend in the bodybuilding uh, community, not a Baumgartner, uh, Bumstead, okay? He's a legend. I don't know where I got Baumgartner from. The fuck? Is that a different bodybuilder? Anyway, this is Mr. Olympia. And I was like, oh, this guy's like, you know, 35, been doing this for years and years, maybe 36, okay? Yeah, he's actually 29. He's 29 years old. Baumgartner is the guy that jumped from space. Oh, <laughs> Max Taylor, solid build. You ever thought about competing, son? Ooh. Man, I don't care. Just load up the TikToks. What do you mean? This is like, when I learned that Sam Silic was only 21, I cried a little. Yeah, cried at the fucking, cried because you live at, a, at the same time as a legend. Is that why you cried? Tear, tears of joy to see like what man can do when man and science converge, when willpower is met with peak medicine? Because that's what I thought. I right hear it's cooked up by Walter White and Let's, hang on, they don't even know what this is yet, okay? We've been cooking for months. This is a, a long process, and we're finally able to reveal our supplement brand, the Feral Supps. This is, uh, this is, this is it, man. This is, me and Mike have been working on this. Face this is our baby. Each bottle has been cradled and breastfed and kissed with love. They're These so awesome. These are quality ingredients, clean ingredients, and sh you know what I'm saying? So. I'm a trustworthy man. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm, I'm a real trustworthy dude. You sound like an old head. They're 22 years old, by the way. These these two that you are watching right now, 22 years old. 22 years old. I'm trying to sell you some steroids in the back of the locker room. This shit right here, I, I, I'll give it to you. I'll give you. I'll give it to you for the the 25 ball. You know, I, I'll give you half off just because I f with you for real. Give me the money first. <laughs> They used to put D ball in Anavar. It's all in the. F I wish we could do that I and sell it legally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Early <laughs> stages of our lifting career was like you had to take protein, you had to take pre workout. Like those were the two main things of every gym, bro. I've been having a scoop of protein since I was. This is a 22 year old man. This is a, and I need to remind chat that is a 22 year old man. Okay. 22 year old boy i am 10 years older than this man i hassan hasanabi piker am 10 years older than he is 10 years older than this man i was 13 years old the flavors that's the best part i mean the formula is amazing the protein four ingredients it's clean as ice iso you got stem you got pump more stem you got iso and then we got car, which is our pre motherfuckers are born after 9-11, dog. That's crazy. Motherfuckers are born after 9-11. That's wild. Think about that. Our meal most of the days, this is like rice and grinds. <clears throat> like a lot, the, the accent obviously is just New Jersey water. Okay. It fucks you up a little bit. I know I got a little bit of that dog in me too. Okay. That cinnamon one, bro. That just be like a churro. The <sighs> Twin Towers reborn on trend. <laughs> yes! Much shorter than the actual Twin Towers. Much, much, much shorter. But hey, still powerful. Much more powerful if you know what I'm fucking saying, dude. <laughs> Am I right? I take that fucking shirt right in the goddamn dome, son. Come at me. Boeing 737 coming right at me. I'll fucking headbutt that shit. I'll fucking bite into the plane, dog. Jet fuel can't touch these fucking biceps. My my chest, that show, my ass. I'm more excited. World Trade Center, World Trend Center. Then I'll chop all. Fruit Loop protein. Come on. And we got some chocolate. These guys are awesome because between them and the mutant, that's his name. There's another guy. His name is Mutant. They literally have scientifically turned themselves into those fucking bullies. You know what I mean? Like the bully breeds that they fucking, that they have those like hip hop style breeding, uh, 
<laughs> breeding ads on Instagram for <laughs> bro looks like an XL bully. The mutant is Nick Walker. Yes. The mutant is like the older version of these guys. Okay. I've watched uh, some of his videos in the past. Nick, the mutant Walker. I want to show you his legs because they're awesome. Oh, there he is with Sam, Sammy boy, right? That's Sam's leg, isn't it? Is it not? Yeah, this is the type of shit that makes you go, man, fucking science is so sick. We have 15 reps. And in the last five, I just pumped those out. Just to create, you know, a little more intensity there. Just fine. You know, I pride myself in that strict training. But toward the end. Bro, he's so sick. He's so fucking sick, dude. Yo! You don't get sloppy. So there was no sloppiness here, but it's okay to pump it out, quote unquote. But still keep his time under tension, though, bro. <laughs> his his form looks that short because of how big his arms are. Okay, there's not any more space because the bar immediately touches his pectorals. My man's rocking triple Z's over here in them titty in the titty category. Really strict form. I love form policing a guy who is like objectively one of the like <laughs> one of the strongest people that Chad has ever laid eyes on. <laughs> like form policing this guy is so funny. <laughs> yeah, dude, he doesn't know how to fucking lift. You're right, Chatter. <laughs> Sitting in your fucking <laughs> DX razor chair in your crusty ass underwear being like, yeah, that guy's form is bad. <laughs> it's the roids, bro. Okay. Let me just dispel some fucking idiotic assertions that people are making. That's not just steroids. You can't just take steroids and look like that. That actually is one, genetics, and two, a fuck ton of hard work, okay? If you think you can inject yourself with steroids and look like that, you're delusional, okay? That dude... Eats the strictest diet you've ever done seen, okay? He works out like a crazy man. Steroids help him with his recovery. Steroids help him with muscle growth. Certainly, you will never look like this without steroids, obviously. Duh. A shit ton of steroids. This man is taking a shit ton of steroids. Having said that, however, I think a lot of couch potatoes lazily just go, steroids, uh, whatever. And people think that, like, like, if you were to just, like, guzzle hgh and and whatever kind of fucking cycle he's on you're gonna look like that no at a certain point at a certain point na uh your your genetics also are a factor roids don't lift weight exactly in some ways i think it like in some ways it makes the situation worse when you think about it like he deliberately wants to look like that i've done four cycles and next to this guy i look like i've never worked out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Guys, he looks this way because he has dedicated his entire life to look this way. You might not agree with it, okay? I certainly wouldn't do that myself. I don't think I have the dedication, which I do admire, okay? But he literally doesn't look like a human. Like, <laughs> he does not look like we are the same category of organism, okay? He looks like a totally different thing. He looks like a rescue hero. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that means. You mean like a, like a pit bull? Have you heard of Big Rami? No. <sighs> Wait, let me see. What is a rescue hero? Rescue hero. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> nah, dude. That shit ain't natty, son. Look at them pegs. Chat doesn't even like to live because they think they'll wake up tomorrow not being able to fit through a door frame. Yeah. I looked up at your page and watched some of the clips. They're fucking hilarious. I was crying. What? What? This new guy's in the freak here. Neckzilla. Dude. Oh, also, speaking of fucking bodybuilders, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening globally in the bodybuilding community, I think. Bro, there's some fucking... There are new types of Asians out there, okay? I've never seen legs and and fucking uh, calves. Bro, I'm, I'm telling you, dude, dude. This is not like, this is not like a, like a, th this is not a human that you've ever seen. Okay. 
this is a new type of this is a new type of human <laughs> new new new asian unlocked <laughs> crazy look at his fucking quads and his his quads are insane and so are his calves bro his calves look like three different calves yeah iffb pro thanos is the is the ripped korean guy dude i think that's the guy i'm thinking of hold on i gotta show you this guy this guy is fucking insane this is kim minsu a south oh, korean famous judoka professional martial artist and a k1 kickboxer he is best known as ifpb thanos among his followers kim minsu was born on january 22nd competing internationally in a this, this isn't even who i was thinking of though i need you to fuck i i i remember watching like a youtube video it was it was the the fucking calves bro looks ai generated yeah no he this guy's not that big i mean he's massive but i'm saying like in comparison to like professional bodybuilders like there are bodybuilders that look like this i think this was the guy maybe look upper body is massive right but that's not where the craziness comes look at his fucking calves bro if, if everything i do it be this what's this guy's name <laughs> incredible asian aesthetics what the fuck no his head looks so tiny too this is the you're just showing these guys so nobody ever makes fun of your uh head ever again yeah i need to find this guy this is the guy i think his name is i think he calls himself goku maybe bro i don't know what happened but calves are calves are very fucking difficult to i think you know it's just genetics at a certain point and that guy, i've never seen a men's oh, physique competitor with calves this like guy, this this, this guy, is vegeta king yeah, and he's a men's physique oh he's not goku he's vegeta competitor i've never seen a build like this on a men's physique competitor don't ask me his height but i think he's around five eight so he's definitely not the tallest guy but look at his lower body men's physique competitors who do not come in with massive legs at all and the proportions that he brings to stage is absolutely insane I was looking at some of his videos on his page and it looks like when he bulks he bulks pretty hard too definitely loses his abs and his graininess I'm not sure where he is in his bodybuilding career but he has to be a, at least a pro in bodybuilding his shoulder to waist ratio is absolutely hello. insane like that's some hello you caught me in a weird time i'm looking at sexy korean men and their sexy ass calf legs calf oh. muscles hello cutie cinderella you're live on stream by the way i was just calling if you how many you got invited to his birthday. I don't know. I don't have a, a number, like probably six or seven. I keep getting texts from people being like, is Kaya's birthday tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, has Sean been home? Oh, yeah. I might have fucked up. I, I Fuck. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I invited some people. Is That's... Kaya going to have no one show up to her birthday party and then she's going to get made fun of? <gasps> no, no, no, no. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to DM everybody right now. I'm going to DM everybody right now. That even if he hasn't been invited. Okay, because what, like, Ludwig is, is a part of you, so I just thought that you would invite him yourself. Or not this day. Yeah, obviously. Don't say it like that. No, no, obviously as in, like, favoring you, duh, what the fuck? Why would you even... All I know, I don't even know if, I don't even know if Will and Farley are coming. What? Why wouldn't they? Because I was talking to Caroline, and I was like, are you coming to Kai's birthday? And she's like, I'm out of town. Well, that's Caroline's fault, isn't it? For... Yeah, but do you know if farley is coming to kaya's birthday uh i will said he was gonna come yeah that's will what about farley yeah, duh obviously it's a it's a dog birthday party you you don't have one rsvp do you i don't i didn't like send out rsvps i just told people to come and then forgot to tell them what time i just told them sunday caroline took farley with her what yeah Okay, that's not my fault. Because Will knew and that we were going to do it last week, and we invited him last week. Swift didn't come because he doesn't like parties. No, come on, come on, come on, come on. Swift doesn't like parties. No, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Yeah, it, it, Swift has to come. Kaya's going to be alone. Much, I know, you didn't invite any dogs. I, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even bring Marat and, and uh, Fiona because he's not here. Marat and Fiona are here? Yeah. No, no, no. There will be. There will be. Okay. Ethan's coming with his dog. Jarvis is coming with his dog. 
Um, my my two trainers are coming with their three dogs collectively. So that's like, I don't know. I can't do math. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Ray's coming with Mika, and okay, and and uh, Myung and Nobby. I mean, okay, you have to invite them. Myung and Nobby as well. Okay. And then Ted's coming without a dog, and Connor eats pants is coming without a dog. Going to a dog's birthday party without a dog is like going to an elementary school without a child there. I just gave you a bunch of I, I gave you a bunch of animals or the and and people. That's like. That's eight dogs total, is set. Fizz, Fizz, my mod is saying that's eight dogs total. That's eight. That's a lot of dogs. I didn't want to invite a lot of people personally because I was like, we don't have a lot of space. <laughs> that's fine. I'm just making sure there's actual dogs coming to the dog party. And yeah. I don't know how many cupcakes to make. Okay. Oh, dog okay. cakes? Dog cupcakes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a mansion. What do you mean? Yeah, chat. It totally. It's definitely a massive mansion. I almost, I almost hired a Snoop dog impersonator but he cost three thousand dollars that's insane that's way above budget i know i know it is so i didn't do it okay all right all right well thank you cutie for uh doing the most okay this is tomorrow by the way chat yeah 2 p.m <laughs> what was right. it doggy strippers they're children they're doggy puppies you freaks there's gonna be doggy children there i will cancel the strippers what <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Goodbye. All right, bye. Are we invited? Yes, I'm streaming it. Tom forgets to advertise it to chat and his friends. <sighs> Bro's going to start inviting cats? No. No cats invited. This is the whitest thing he's ever done? I, yeah, 100%. Anyway, what is this? Oh, thanks for watching my videos. There's something about chickens. I really appreciate it. I DM'd you on, on Twitter as well, if this is actually your account, something about chickens. Um, but it was it was fire. Uh, I mean, it was a really devastating situation, but I think you handled it uh, very well with the care uh, it required. Yeah. I apologize for the outburst the previous chatter had regarding the TikToks. They have been dealt with swiftly, and all of his future generations will be banned from Hoscord. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Take him out. I know the creator thanked you, but did that one chatter consent? Yeah, it's true. Invite Winnie? No, because I love Winnie, but if I invite Winnie, then ugh, Maya has to come. Anyway, uh, but yeah, getting back to getting, before we do TikTok time, I'm like, uh, I, I wanted to show this dude's cast to you guys. Ryan Terry stuff right there. His obliques are so diced out, his shoulders are so capped, and I just cannot get over this guy's calves. I know there was a new rule in men's physique. I believe that the shorts have to be a little higher this year, but I mean, if this guy stepped on a Mr. Olympia stage, come on. I mean, this is crazy. Not only is his physique insane, he has a crazy name, Vegeta Kang. We're going to have to keep an eye out for this guy and see if he steps on a pro stage again. Unrelated, but has to cook to you? Learn to sit back and observe. Not everything needs a reaction. <laughs> Mr. Botticelli. Is the reason why they put on that much bronzer to show definition? Yes. You know when you write stuff like this, people see it, right? Especially when I pin it. When you say, when we're watching Vegeta Kang's I've never body, seen a men's body. And you say stuff like, until the sun goes down and my mouth is numb. Not to call you out, but you know, it's public when you write stuff like this. Lil they D. This one right here, officer. Arrest them. <laughs> but yeah, those calves are fucking ginormous. On his page, and it looks like when... Yeah, they're doing... They're, they're doing... They're doing things out there that I didn't even know was happening, okay? This is like new... This is new medicine, okay? I didn't realize, bro, this is unimaginable, dude. This guy makes the other guy look fucking crazy, actually. He just butt mogs him pretty hard. Um, this is new muscle tech. Yeah, this is, like, not the old shit. He got two asses? How the fuck do they shop for clothing? Very carefully. This is the SARMS Sammy's diet. Dude, I can't get over, like, his neck is so massive, but, like, his quads are so ginormous that I can't even focus on the net. Like, I can't get over how big this man's quads are, okay? I, it's just, I don't think you understand. This motherfucker sits on the toilet and the porcelain cracks, okay? On a bad day, if he just, if he just fucking sat down too fast, he's breaking through the fucking floor. It makes no sense. New medicine, my ass. They give this shit since over 30 years to pigs to make their flesh grow on natural. Dude, this is Baki. 
coming alive. Like this is this is flesh Baki. IRL Baki. Bro shits on an anvil toilet. Remember the Korean billionaire Lindsay Lohan dated seven years ago? Korean weightlifter and billionaire G Young Ha with huge Caucasian of Chajka dog and alibi dog. Oh my god, bro. What the fuck is this thing? That ain't no dog, man. That's a dog right there. That's something different. That's not a dog. It's not even a bear. I don't know what kind of hybrid this shit is. <laughs> bro, what are they experimenting with? <laughs> That's a man. That's a man that needs to pay taxes. Bro, you got the XL bullies looking at him like, nah, I ain't fucking with that shit, dude. Get the fuck out of here. This little fucking goofy ass tail. Bro, that's a polar bear. That's a polar bear. They just put the chains on it. Like, that's crazy. Yo, people out here really putting chains on a polar bear to be like, look at this dog. It's like, bro, that's a polar bear. Okay. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a dog. Like you are not fooling us with this. Oh, <laughs> that's a dog. Lol. That's crazy. Still cute, but like, bro, this is a dog that absolutely skips legs day, leg day by the way. Nah, they eat bears. This dog is so dangerous that even tigers fear him. Introducing the alibi, also known as the Central Asian Shepherd Dog. It's so funny. You got these like five foot four, uh, you know, <laughs> five foot four dudes. It's the same energy as like the Turkish Kongal breeders, where they're like five foot four, five foot six mags. And they're just trying to hold back a dog that's like eight times their size. It's like you are not holding that thing back, okay? A breed that's as badass as it is loyal. Originating from Central Asia, the alibi has been bred for thousands of years to protect livestock against predators like wolves and even big cats. This is not just a dog. It's a fearless guardian. With their massive size, powerful build, and deep bark, they are a formidable presence. A full-grown alibi can weigh up to 176 pounds with a thick, dense coat that protects them from harsh... 176 pounds. Guys, Kaya currently is 100 pounds, okay? Kaya is currently 100 pounds. You're giving Kaya body this morning. Right here. Kaya, come here. As you guys know I am 6 foot 4. Kaya is a mix. Look. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Will she get any bigger? I don't know. She's, uh, she is only a year old, so probably she needs a treat. No labor without pay. She has her treat back there. I give her Icelandic ram's horn every day, and she goes through one of them a day. She loves that shit. A year, get out of here. Yeah, she's, uh, she is now one years old. Just wanted to show you how massive this dog is in comparison. Harsh weather and injuries, but it's not just their size that makes them excellent protectors. The alibi possesses a calm but confident demeanor. They're incredibly intelligent and independent, capable of making decisions on their own and protecting their pack. This breed is known for its strong territorial instincts and unwavering loyalty to its family. The alibi's ability to assess threats and protect against them makes them one of the most reliable bodyguard dogs. This dog is so dangerous that even tigers fear him. Introducing the alibi, also known as the Central Asian Shepherd Dog. There's no way any human can actually stop that dog, right? No. I mean, you can only stop that dog by training it. You know what I mean? There's no way that you can physically stop that dog. Like, I think I can physically stop Kaya, but there, I don't think I can physically stop that dog. 170 pounds, dude. That's like crazy. With Mastiff type breeds and some others, they will reach full height around two to three, but will continue to fill out until they're five years old. Have you ever seen Kaya growl? growl? Yes. Her bark is fucking insane. She doesn't bark a lot, but when she does, it is fucking terrifying. Like, it is a very, very deep bark. Like, sometimes I'll be running around in the backyard with her, right? And she gets, like, really excited and starts, and, and like, we'll try to get my attention and bark, and it scares the shit out of me. Like, what the fuck, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> You're so dumb. You fucking slipped. Hold on, I got you. You're so dumb. <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay, okay, okay. She slipped. The oh, baby. Does she uh, have smelly farts? She doesn't. She's a lady. She doesn't fart. She does have. She does have massive poops, though. I can't believe. Fucking 100 goddamn pounds. Does she sound like this?
She doesn't understand because they're speaking in Mandarin. They're barking in Mandarin. She's like, I don't get that. I only know American barks. What is that? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> oh god, okay. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> She's, just so goofy. She's so fucking goofy, brother. Jesus Christ. I am covered in fur right now. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, she looked at them and went, what kind of what kind of Chinese are you? There's a new puppy in our office. And when I heard that this tiny puppy is going to grow up to be one of the largest dogs in the world, I was like, there's no way. This is Willow, and she's a 10-week-old Irish wolfhound. Oh, Irish I read wolfhound. that she's going to get up to six feet tall standing on her hind legs. Wait, that's 10 weeks that's old? Just that's just unbelievable. Crazy. So I Googled it. I can't believe these aren't Photoshopped. I mean, look at that. That's a whole werewolf, ma'am. Yeah, Irish wolfhounds freak me out. We have a VIP in the chat. Hello, I am the manager of the Femboy Consulate. I have been following you for about a month and I'm very happy to meet you. If you want to live more confidently and stylishly, then let the turtles cry. What does that mean? What does letting the turtles cry mean? Because I do want to live more confidently and stylishly. Is he trying to say, like, you know, kill turtles with fast fashion? Is that what he's saying? Bro, stop sending me PFLP links, okay? is saturday that is insane that's barely a link that i would click on on a monday dog what do you mean morg pie is innovating and changing the meta again here there isn't a marketing team on this planet that would come up with this honestly giga brain move we're playing fortnite yes indeed and the same amount of luck you two can look like me ka chow what there was an invisible force field what is this i already have that that's fire. She's nice with it. Respect. Stavros was right. People will find a way. Yeah, the people yearn for boobs and ass, okay? The people yearn for booba. Also, now I want to know what a creamy treat is. Like, how do we get a creamy treat? Like, I guess you got to give her five gifted to find out what the creamy treat is. I'm just up in this biz. Are there people fighting outside? I'm going to fuck. Bro, I need to potion up. Sheesh. ka -chow. I am in no position to be f***ing up. I'm Honestly impressive because she plays on a sitting desk height while standing. A volcano basically started outside of my house. Look at this. Dude, I don't know why God keeps punishing Iceland. I, I actually don't understand it. What are you guys doing over there? Do you not think this shit is what ruins Twitch though? No. They elected a bunch of women. Oh my God. B. 30 plus month subscriber say something that I do not expect from a 30 plus month subscriber. I will of course immediately pay attention to that and be like, why is a long-term community member saying some unhinged shit like this? Immediately use it to segue an ad break debate at the top of the hour and cook my ass and farm me. He's still going, still going. Raging Hoppa, thank you for the 10 community to give the subs. The creamy treat you will get for five gifted subs is the creamiest treat of all, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour that did not have the money to avoid it themselves. Thank you, Hellbender, for the five community gifted subs. And thank you, Bill Vogue, for the five creamy treated gifted subs. What Welcome is this? Welcome to Back Wednesday. Did you see Cutie and Maya talking about fear and drama timestamp? No, you did not timestamp it. No, you have not successfully timestamped it. This is just the beginning of the video. I do not know why clicking on your timestamp. Do you agree with this jaded forum clip? Have you seen the clip going around of like Hillary Duff and Tia and Tamara talking about like 9-11? Like, oh, what? Thank you for reminding so me about what? this.
Can I speak on this? And Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, go Lizzie ahead. Lizzie McGuire. Because I know you remember that like okay. it was a Lizzie fucking, McGuire like, go- with a photographic memory. You have yes. to remember that. Okay. Like Lizzie McGuire going, uh, when you call 9-11 gay, you're actually... <laughs> <laughs> hey, 9-11 wasn't gay. It was one of the most impressive military operations yeah. of all time. You remember that video? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I first started my own sort of like reflection on like childhood TV programming and commercials and stuff when I... Next stream, please. Stop. I'm I'm fucking tweeting that. I was like, "Welcome to Woo Back Wednesday." What does that mean? Woo Back Wednesday. Okay, okay, we're gonna do TikTok time. I just yoinked that fucking meme. Do a collab stream in Morpi where you wear green screen gym clothes and overlay subway surfers. One of my talks that you reacted to needs to be seen again before it's gone long. In relation to the melon vid. What? Okay, we're skipping. Okay. Okay, it's TikTok time. It's TikTok time. It's TikTok time. It's TikTok time. It's TikTok time. Stop. Stop. Here's the Disney end of that other video. Kids like you express themselves every day on Disney Channel. It does help to talk about September 11th because, you know, you get it out of you and you get to be heard. It was such a traumatic event that, I mean, how could you forget? I think it does help to talk about it a lot because even though it was a year ago, it seems like it happened yesterday. I think communication is very important. I was just about to say that. If you had heard me last year, that's all I would have been talking about. I talk with... Yeah, Spencer was... Spencer could not shut the fuck up about how we must punish the Arab world for the crimes that they have taken against the supremacist Western nation of the United States. He was all he talked about. Spencer, it was kind of fucked up. Everyone was like, Spencer, why are you talking about this? Like, why are you using these kinds of terms? Hillary Duff was a loose changer, though. She actually was like, she actually was straight up like, yeah, you know, someone should look into like the owners of the the Twin Towers, like, taking insurance out. You know what I mean? Like, she was going crazy with it a little bit. Spencer, on the other hand, straight up, like, wild. Like, hey, listen, I really didn't like George W. Bush before 9-11, but, like, after 9-11, like, I'm invested. I'm going to be voting for him, even though I'm 13 years old. With my family about it a lot and my friends, Tamir and I, we talk about it all the time because it's still on the news. I think it's very, very important for you to just express your feelings about it. Tell your loved ones you love them, but don't be afraid of that, you know? It's a healing process. Yeah, it's definitely a healing process. Disney Channel. Express yourself. Dun, dun, dun, dun. I love the music playing in the background. Okay, okay, I'm done looking at big boys, even though it's hard not to look at big boys. TikTok time? TikTok time chat? TikTok time? TikTok time? Let's do it. Rules. As you guys know, must be an upload of a TikTok. No links. No TikToks longer than one minute. Use upvote and downvote to vote for best TikToks. Posting anything to is a one-month ban. Star means it was so bad, I'm keeping it. Yes, IG reels and YouTube shorts are allowed, but make sure they're funny. Let's get started. (laughs) You killed him. Why are they laughing? He's dead. He's literally dead and they're laughing. That's fucked up. Not a TikTok, but this makes me laugh. Oh, hold on, hold on, my man. I was wiping some balls. Wait, what? Hold on, my man. My man, I was wiping some shit off, boss. Exiting narrator. El narrador se ha cerrado inesperadamente. Si esto no se esperaba, visita el sitio web oficial de Microsoft. I don't know what the fuck just happened. See. This isn't real, right? Like, what this is from fuck? a Drake stream or something, I think. Isn't this from, like, the famous uh, Drake stream where he got, like, fucked up? Exiting narrator. Wait, it is real? It's real? It's real? How? That's crazy. Get blown up. Get a treat. Sorry. Damn, they can't believe they hired the Mr. B CGI people for that one. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> Bro rejected cookies from a website because it's around I love this song. I can't believe people were like, oh dude, Islam, you can't listen to music. Meanwhile, we got bangers out here. You're over the Uma, the Uma is dropping bombs, okay? MashaAllah. This is your weakness. Your faith in your friends is yours. Dear, it is pointless to resist, my son. God. Uh, 
<laughs> Can I get a 10 piece nugget? A 10 piece? Yeah. Okay, by itself or the sauce? <laughs> by itself or the meal? <laughs> it's gonna be the meal. Okay, with the meal, medium or large? Uh, it's gonna be a medium. Drink? Uh, medium. No, no, what drink, sir? Uh, just a uh, uh, Sprite. Okay, so number 15, what's Sprite and what's sauce? Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be that barbecue. And what else? Just a barbecue. I have it. What else, sir? Uh, that's it. All right, gonna put on a brief. Why you can't? Because the door's not open all the way. It's not open all the way. Open the door some more. Let's see. Door some more. He said the door wasn't open. You done made another bad decision. The door is not open wider. Okay. Guess where you staying tonight? You're damn right you are. What is happening? Look. What is happening? Why is this allowed, bro? What the fuck am I watching? They're putting children in fucking prison. What is happening in America? What what is going on with this country? Wait, I actually don't know what this is. Brother, that's scared straight. I can't believe you've never seen this. What the fuck? This is from a show called Beyond Scared Straight. It's on TLC. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that in the continental United States of America, they had a policy of putting children in cages called... I, I knew the scared straight stuff i thought it was like a convict would come and like scare the children in school i did not realize that they also literally took the kids to jail and put them around the inmates to show them like how much torture they do to the inmates and then and then they filmed it for television and americans watched it like they took children and put them in the prison to be like, look how badly we torture these motherfuckers. Don't you dare do a crime. And then they were like, this shit is fire. We should film it. We should post it on the learning channel. And Americans were like, yeah, this, this stuff is great, actually. I mean, where is this? I, I would like to watch it. I would like to watch this, actually. This seems like good content, even though it is so odd. I feel like this is where... We separate the boys from the men, the Americans from the rest of the world. Like I, because you show this to anyone not in America and they're going to be like, this is an insane process. Like they were doing this. This is crazy. An inmate told me one of the kids, an inmate told one of the kids that he was going to be his bitch. What? My dad used to tell me the cops would come home and take me away if I cried. Okay. Okay, guys. I think part of the reason why... I personally cannot comprehend why Americans are so draconian is because this kind of stuff seems absolutely alien to me. You know what I mean? Like when I see stuff like this and you just show me, cause there's obviously, you know, I look American, I sound American. I know a lot about American culture, but obviously there's like blind spots. There's like gaps in my knowledge because I didn't grow up here. So when I find stuff like this, when I learn about stuff like this, I realize like, oh, this is how these motherfuckers are so pro prisoner, like so pro prison is a great deterrence measure in spite of all of the evidence that suggests the exact opposite. Like, like parents are like, hey, be a good kid, wash the dishes or you're going to jail. He's trying to get out. Chill out, McGee. Oh my God, they have full episodes. Get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. That's crazy. Beyond scared straight full episode. Okay, we got to look at this now. Bro, that's wild. That's a wild thing that they're doing out there. <coughs> I can't. Why you can't? Because the door's not open all the way. It's not open all the way. Open the door some more. Let's open the door some more. He said the door was open. You done made a, another bad decision. The door is not open wider. Okay. Guess where you staying tonight? You're damn right you are. Look how big this guy is. Look. He's trying to get out. Bro, that's a real fucking inmate. Like, come on, come on, that's, come on. I'm losing it a little bit. That's crazy. I that's cold blood. That kid is cold blooded. He he turned he turned Gestapo officer so quick. He was successfully scared straight. When my Christian mom makes it through a story without mentioning someone's race or weight. Take a picture. Said okay, we found it. The officer points to, to my floorboard on the driver's side and said, that's crystal methamphetamines right there. I said, 
That's glaze from a Krispy Kreme glazed donut I ate two days ago, and I haven't vacuumed the car yet. You would think a police officer would recognize donut glaze as probably on the front of their uniform. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> it's Haram, brother. It's Ramadan. I have duetting this until this woman permanently destroys her lungs with toxic gas. So first we got ammonia-based toilet cleaner, okay? And that's bleach better. Okay, you've made mustard gas. You're still fucking doing this? I'm trans now. That's how much fucking time has passed since I last ratioed you. Shut the fuck up! Oh my god. No way. That's awesome. What the fuck? When you get to China when you get to heaven, but it's Chinese? No, it's Fine, I just, I just didn't think it would be Chinese. So. <laughs> Where the fuck did you get that shit? It looks like a fucking sword. I'm afraid of you right now. <laughs> What's the scariest plant in the forest? What? Bamboo. <laughs> Is that like racial? Because I'm Asian and. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's funny. I thought it was racial because he's Asian. <laughs> Dude, I swear that's Kaya. <laughs> we watched this already. <laughs> Yeah, jet fuel can't melt steel beams, they say, but they definitely cannot touch Najar Najarjuna cement. Wait, what is it? Najarjuna cement. No islands, no Constantinople, no South Cyprus, no North Cyprus. That's good. Same sex marriages. Yes or no? No. No? Why do you think that? Tell us. Same sex marriages. It's you marrying the same the same person six times. Gay? No, same sex. Like oh, same gays. Time. No, yeah. Th then yeah, I don't mind. People are free. They should do whatever they want. Like we thank you so much. Like, Where are you coming from? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Same sex marriages. How do you get up there? What the dog doing? What the dog doing? Oh, Jesus Christ. How are you going to grow your foreskin back? I can't. How are you going to grow your foreskin back? I can't. I don't even... What? Why are these clips so deep fried? Like, my older clips are not that old, man. I don't know how the fuck you guys make these so goddamn deep fried. It makes it seem like I, I was streaming in, like, 1937. I've seen this one already. I think you saw it on stream. Okay. Ay, qué bonitos dientitos. Saludos a los matracas. Ay, qué bonito. Gracias. Muchas gracias por atenderme, señor Pumba. Señor Pumba. Are you gonna pray or someone else is gonna pray? <laughs> Cats are canonically oh, Muslim. So <laughs> this is known. Mashallah, brother. Mashallah, brother. <laughs> What the fuck? Is that for real? I hope they got away. Mi mamá tiene un problema. Oh, mira. Me ayudas, por favor. Mm. Ma, yo no sé qué es eso. Venga, yo investigo allí porque eso está muy raro. Yo creo que eso... What the eso fuck? Muy... No, no, no, no, no. <laughs> Encriptado. Por Milo Hacker. Tal vez un tanto anónimos. Personalmente un tanto control V. Simplemente control C. Tal vez en su posición troyana. Junto a Victor Hugo, Victor Hugo al cubo, encriptando esta vez cuentas bancarias, simplemente minador de Bitcoin. Personalmente ya me hackearon. You gotta be watch out. You gotta watch out. I don't know if that's real. For some reason, all my funny videos keep getting deleted. I hope this one is okay enough. Yeah, I know what the reason is, big dog. Okay, They're, it's because they ain't funny. This one is. Everybody think, you think it's straight, bro? It's not cricket? 
No broiler. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my life. This is a hate crime. Like, y'all are laughing, but he's slapping the baby because the baby's Italian. All right. Oh, shit. Yo, Nick, we need some onions, man. Yeah, man. We just were really running low on the onions. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Just, just bring him whatever, man. Just bring him whatever. Yeah, just like as soon as you can, honestly, as soon as you can. It's kind of dumb. Yo, so I'm raw dogging this chick, right? She goes, yo, I'm on birth control. You can just bust a nun me whenever you want. And you know what I did? I busted. So now this is Dylan. Wait, wait, I forgot my key. <laughs> Do you like hardcore punk rock? The answer to that is no. I think she's gonna ruin our house. I don't like Republicans. What um, flag is this? Yep, uh, South Korea. It's true. Yo, whoever said that is going to be a Stroke that thing, bro. What the fuck? Stroke that thing, bro. Okay, this ca I've had enough. I've had enough of this, okay? I've had enough of this fucking guy with this fucking cow, okay? No. Ew. Oh, bro. Chat, does soda expire? What the fuck? I found these in my cabinet. Yeah. This tastes weird, dude. How long does it take for soda to expire? Because I'm pretty sure this was like from 2022, 2023 maybe, in room temp. It's not flat, though. It's got bubbles in it. This shit tastes like a LaCroix now. What the fuck? 2326 is what it says underneath it. On, But I don't know what that means. That shit's gone, bro. Get your stomach pump. Consume unopened diet sodas within three months after the date expires. Regular sodas within nine months. Oh, it's the range from 2023 to 2026. It should be fine, then. It just tastes weird. I don't know why. 26 is 2026. It's just that sun kissed his ass. Honestly, it could be because I just haven't had Sunkiss in a while, and it tastes kind of mid in comparison to the fucking delicious, joyous experience that is drinking an ice cold Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> Bro, this cow is such a piece of shit, dude. This is a piece of shit ass cow. I'll say it. No respect. Give me one little. Yeah, it's good. You ate all my breakfast. You cannot have breakfast. No. Making the cow drink this milk. For me, first. You ate the last. Bird. I'm not gonna have any breakfast. The milk is for cows. Does he drink the cow milk? Do cows drink hey, what cow you milk? Doing here, buddy? You own like I mean, as as adults, obviously they drink it as a uh, as a baby. I don't think that's that weird of a question. We drink titty milk, but you don't see my ass fucking being a full grown adult sucking on a titty, drinking titty milk. Fuck you, mean, bro. Zooted off weird soda. <laughs> yeah. Soda got me acting different, dude. Acting strange. Soda's probably looking for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hands, hands. Let me see your hands. Stop resisting. <laughs> uh. In all seriousness, have you heard of the anarcho-communist podcast Sea of Thieves? Could be an interesting casual Friday discussion. Sea of Thieves, nuts fit in your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely destroyed, dude. Left wing destroyed. This shit really confusing because this is like the national debt, right? Who the fuck we owe 34 trillion dollars to? The fucking Decepticons, nigga. Thanos, my nigga. <laughs> America need to lock in. <laughs> America needs to get its money up. He's that's a great question, actually. It's a great question. Super rare Mexican corn can make you feel a sense of euphoria. <laughs> oh, you ain't trying to play some Tekken, but look. Oh, I know this one. Controller right here, big dog. You ain't fly, you will, bro. I brought my own controller. <laughs> the other one that's really good is like, um, is also the other version of this that's really good is like <laughs> when the dude, <laughs> when the black dude with the busted ass hairline and like. <laughs> <laughs> walks in to the Tekken tournament. Everyone's like, oh, no. And he's like, oh, I've never played this before, actually. <laughs> it wasn't even Tekken. It might have been Smash. Uh, cargo Smash. In a cargo shorts and a Zelda shirt. POV, why people listening to a song about race inequalities like in America? My ass to fight, nigga. Oh, it's my 
my life. Ah. Oh, it's my <laughs> Perfect time to get into a five hour debate, which we're not going to watch all five hours of. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Yeah, I lied about that pretty hard, didn't I? FD did a why black people is so good at fighting games. It's true, though. And, and Pakistan as well. <laughs> this, this is Doom Part 1 and Part 2. What the fuck? Yep. Oh, he talks about Pakistan in it, too? Yeah. I knew you were lying, so I skipped the last couple of days. Dude, you missed out on so many fucking memes. In my opinion, that was five hours that I turned into 12 hours over the course of two different streams. And it was honestly great. Like, the memes are fucking awesome. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny overall. Everyone's cooking Mr. Bonicelli. Mr. Mortadella. His community is fucking floundering, trying to find, like, exit ramps to, to redirect the conversation away to, like, a dude who literally does not exist on the internet, okay? You can yell at him all day, every day on this fucking platform. It does not matter. It will never bother him. He, uh, he has the, the fucking Tyler the Creator buff. You know the old Tyler the Creator, the old Tyler the Creator uh, uh, tweet? Like, oh, what the fuck is cyber, cyberbullying? Just turn that shit off. Like, that's Norm. And the reality is, like, the reality is Norm has already been officially, like, unironically, officially canceled from academia by Alan Finkelstein, uh, Alan Finkelstein, sorry, Alan Dershowitz, the Dersh. But what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, oh, man, this guy sucks. You can fucking cry. What are you going to do? You're going to take his tenure away? Well, you know, he was denied it. So <laughs> you're going to be like, wow, this guy really, really cares about Palestinians. Yeah, but Reddit thinks D1. No, they don't. No, they do not. They do not. That's, that's just fucking straight brigading all day, every day. No one thinks Destiny won this debate. That's just pure, unfiltered, unadulterated copium. It's people being like, he actually crying the whole, he yelled the whole time. He did ad homs the whole time. And they're saying that because they don't want to actually address the many factual statements that were presented by Rabani and Finkelstein that had no rebuttals, no retorts whatsoever from Destiny's camp. Guy owns your idol during a debate, so I go on a smear campaign to discredit him immediately after one regular, please. Yeah, it's so funny. Anyway, let's get back to the Tic Tacs. These community made so many clips out of context. As he was going through them last night, and it was so out of context. It looks like he did a good job. Yeah, who okay. cares? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Guys, <laughs> XQC's community thinks Norm Finkelstein did a bad job. Oh, no. How much air you got? <laughs> Dude, XQC, I'm, I'm shocked he was able to react to that. <laughs> he was able to take Destiny's dick out of his fucking brain for a second to be able to, like, adequately see everything in front of his eyes that's why you got a fool no fill that bitch up man get a fool i know get a fool cool no no no right. You're like right here right here right here right here all right, this is all, so gonna be that's heavy. all you gonna hold yeah it's gonna be heavy it's gonna be heavy yeah i'll be careful fill that bitch up I'll oh, be... hell no. you all right all right shit, i had you i had thanks for watching boss Twitch chat, if you'd like to submit your TikTok after the stream ends, type Discord, Hotscord PR year, brought to you by the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund. Hashtag Riyadh season. New React content, Hotscord up, locked in. X went into saying he doesn't care about the topic being debated over, and then goes ahead saying Finkelstein insulting D discredited him. <laughs> his insults, by the way, were that, uh, <laughs> his insults were also, ironically, in very Norm Finkelstein fashion, objectively true. Norm Finkelstein has written many books on the subject matter. Destiny has read a couple Wikipedia pages. That's not an insult. It's just facts. The only reason why you don't have a retort to that and you claim that it's a fucking insult is because you recognize that that kind of looks bad, don't it? Dog glitter? Oh, yeah, I'm cooked. <sighs> Today, Destiny and Turkey Tom interviewed Katie, the victim supposed to friend for two hours about the George Not Found case. Only for the guy to reveal it was a troll. He changed his stream title from the interview to getting trolled. They keep eating fat L's over there. Don't worry, they won't post it, so it'll be fine. I think personally, I think personally, stop derailing, by the way. We're supposed to be doing fun day. Um, personally, the real reason why Destiny lost the debate is because he didn't do the worm. If he had busted that shit right there real quick, it would have been over. Next week, shall we? Oh, Grand Designs. I have it. I have it ready to go here, but I haven't watched it.
I have a lot of uh, content locked in that I haven't gotten to. We will have more bangers for next week for context. There were 300 Tic Tacs submitted, but only 57 were funny. That's crazy. 300 TikToks submitted, only 57 made the cut. God damn, why is my community so not funny? It makes me so sad, bro. I really got to keep racist in here. I'm sorry, guys. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, boys. I'm beginning to recognize that, like, yeah, racism isn't funny. But, like, sometimes the races are accidentally funnier than, than goddamn leftists and liberals. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're changing. <laughs> We're changing we're changing the, the, the way that the stream is going. Beyonce hair straight. No, I don't even want to fucking make a joke about this, dude. Fuck this guy. I'll take that message and internalize it. I'll change my ways. Prepare for racism. We'll do one episode of this and then we'll watch the Patrick CC. Beyond Scared Straight. Oh, Beyond Scared Straight failed to prevent kids from becoming criminals. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's literally because like every chat is a reflection of you, yes. However, while chat is a reflection of the streamer. I do yell at chat a lot for not understanding jokes. As a matter of fact, it's a big part of my commentary is like carefully and meticulously explaining to this community what jokes are and why they should laugh. I do that a lot. I do that almost as much as I do anti-racism in here. And I think it's like, <laughs> it's a little bit of, a little bit of something else going on. Better links. This one is a reference that Tom Segura did about scared straight bikes. Okay. I didn't see one head straight down the line. I see anybody here, I'm beating you. Officer Cleek, PSL. Some of you all might remember me from the last time, from the last episode. Uh, you know, we have the jail tour today. We got some of you Is this a satire or is this real? This is not real. Bro, this is literally fake. Y'all just sent me an entire fucking... You sent me... An entire parody, like a whole ass parody. That's crazy to me that you did that to me. I'm gonna take you somewhere, I'm gonna sell you. You're gonna have your sister with you. Great, more money for me. Yeah, two for one. Every single fight I've been to, my sister has been there. If anyone wants to talk about my sister, I'm gonna kick your ass. Either you're gonna eat it or you go home and your sister's There is face. no I'm way they are doing the prisoner's dilemma on the children but will one betray the other bro i'm telling you this is straight up the most insane concept conceptually speaking this is so psychotic they're pitting sisters against one another what the fuck parents consented to this the parents should be locked up Either you're gonna eat it or you go home and your sister stays. I love putting this meal on. I'm not eating you this. You stay here until it's gone. I get to keep you here until you. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Right off the bat, this is just like, look at how torturous our prisons are. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't believe they televised this. This is literally like human rights abuse being televised. People talk about how, no, man, I'm not gonna watch Latino Eyes tonight. Is your chat autistic or just humorless commies? And then he's the guy who's been trying to get me to read a press release from the from the uh, PFLP. Brother, what do you mean is your chat uh, autistic or just humorless commies? You are the humorless autistic commie. The fuck? But you, you, yes, chat is that. But you are part of chat, like very much so. The Mustafa Brigades also released a statement the other day commemorating the first launch 20 years ago. Announced that they are still manufacturing rockets during the invasion. In, in addition to another press release. Clip from Arab language television on the Mustafa Brigades showing capabilities. Bro, has not stopped. West Bank heating up. Hezbollah intensifies attacks. This is all today, chat. Like, we're over here making dick jokes, fart jokes, watching fucking TikToks. And this man is like, dude, watch this al Madayin. Or uh, Al Mayadeen uh, uh, article. Read this Al Mayadeen article, please. This is all from today. It's a call to action. It's the line we should all be following. PFLP having big rallies in Gaza. Look, by the way, the lot Chinoese that he's talking about, literally, Maoist film watch party, maybe. <sighs> this is crazy. Fun day. Locked in. Oh, shit, dude. Are we doing goofs? Are we looking at gaps and shit? Let me tell you something, okay? 
it's time for a Maoist film watch party. He's a neutral Milk Hotel fan and a Maoist. He already suffers enough. Leave him alone. Oh, anyway, let's watch this insane shit. Asking you to do? What I'm telling you. Oh, this is our money. I can buy one of you for this. I can buy one of you for this. Hello. It's been 51 seconds. I've already seen like eight different ethics violations. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, you will be staying the night. I want to go home. I don't want to be here. This freaking hellhole. Oscar Street. Neutral Milk Hotel wrote a whole concept album about falling in love with Anne Frank. Wait, what the fuck? You need to learn about Neutral Milk Hotel right now to understand this chatter. Magnum is characterized for his complex, lyrically dense songwriting, exemplified in the critically lauded album In Aeroplane Over the Sea as well as his public image as a recluse associated with his extended periods of musical inactivity and minimal press interaction. An article published in Slate described Magnum as the Salent, Salinger of indie rock. In 2023, Jeff Magnum received the Grammy Award nomination for Bax, Best Box, or Special Limited Edition Package. It's from Louisiana. What is Neutral Milk Hotel? Is there like a K Karina Pang? His recent interest in Buddhism and Eastern thought traveling across Europe and working on new field recordings and sound collage pieces. Click airplane over the sea and you, oh, I've seen this before. This is like a meme album, right? Not a meme album, but like this is what every annoying person says is their favorite album. I associate this with hipster people. It's a good album. It's just Stoke art shit. Dude read the Diary of Anne Frank and got obsessed with the story. One of my fondest memories is getting high off K-pins and listening to airplane over the sea while naked with my besties. What the fuck? Contemporary reviews were moderately positive over time. However, the album developed a cult following. This negatively affected Magnum, whose mental health began to deteriorate. As a result, he withdrew from touring. And Neutral Milk Hotel went on hiatus shortly after. Bro, this guy is the OG hipster. He literally fucking was like, oh no, I'm popular now. I hate this. And stopped performing? In the years since his release, An Airplane Over the Sea has been described by music journals as both a landmark album for indie rock and is one of the best albums of the 1990s, and its critical standing has risen considerably. Is genuinely a beautiful album and very relevant right now. That's why I picked the name. Brother, you being the person that is promoting this album after I, you know, critically looked through your entire chat footprint is the absolute worst way to present this album. I said no recording. Holy God. So other men marry with their post and he would allow cameras. He would not allow cameras, even for the ones of the pavilion, so you can see from the back. I'm pretty sure he thinks they take your soul. <laughs> what is I'm sorry, my ADHD is taking over a little bit. This is fascinating. Hi everyone. Anthony Fantano. Look at this baby, bro. Look at this little fucking baby. Look at this nerd. Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano over here looking as nerd. Look at this guy. Literally a fucking baby. That's so funny. Hey, look at me. <laughs> I'm going to review music now. <laughs> here, Internet's busiest music nerd. <laughs> uh, they should have put this band on Rap Caviar so you can listen. <laughs> That's such a lock. I feel, I feel so... That's fucked up because my trainers hate that I only listen to rap caviar because it's ass. And I know it's ass. I just don't know any better. I don't have time to make a fucking nice little playlist for myself. It's so bad. I know it's so bad. Even in this video, he's older than you are right now. I don't think so. And this video is the last review of classics review. Listen to that new Yeet 2093. I'm putting you on. Pff, wow, dude. Thanks for putting me on Yeet. Yeah, no shit, dude. Let me put you on this guy. His name is Travis Scott. <laughs> Let me put you on this lesser known dude. <laughs> like, fuck. Yo, this hidden gem. You listen to Breathe? You probably never heard of it. It's a deep cut. <laughs> Have you heard of Little Uzi Vert Super Underground? <laughs> Weak. Neutral Milk Hotel in the aeroplane over the sea. Originally, I was not planning to review this album. I even kind of made a video about how I wasn't planning to review this album and why. I was talking.
Wow. Won't rev- giving giving aeroplane over the sea the vultures treatment. You see that? Talking about the virally infectious and sometimes ridiculous cult status that this album has. I asked you guys what you thought about it and you let me know. And some of you made some really convincing arguments t- t- t- talking about how the people who are making a mockery of this LP are in the minority. And if that's all I address, I sort of Okay, okay, we're not going to for today, tomorrow, tomorrow, it's Kai's birthday. Stunning so we're going to be doing Kai a birthday things at 2 p.m. Pacific. The chatters, in, That's right. So get excited. There's going to be puppies. There's going to be events. There's going to be fun. Sunday fun day. And you guys are all invited to watch. The starlight to the starlight to the dark pictures begun. Hello, little lady. Hello. She has no idea the fun she's about to have tomorrow. Anyway, love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Peace. Big.